Family, starring Ezra Stone, written by Clifford Goldsmith. Brought to you by the makers of those delicious new desserts all America's talking about. Jell-O Pudding. In the month of February, you know, fall the birthdays of two great American presidents. We don't know, of course, whether Henry Aldrich will ever become president, but as the scene opens tonight in the Aldrich family living room, Henry has a birthday and other things on his mind. Mother, if you could choose anything in the world for your birthday, what would you take? A million dollars. No, Mother, be reasonable. I can't give you as much as that. What would you like? Right at the moment, Henry, your mother would like a mink coat. A mink coat, Father? A mink coat? Mm Mm-hmm. How much would a thing like that cost? How much do you have? Two dollars and thirty-five (laughs) cents. Oh, but uh, that's not important, Father. No, not at all. But it isn't. I've got a scheme all worked out. I'll be able to get anything Mother wants. Really, dear? It isn't anything more than you deserve, Mother. Could you loan me? Could you loan me two dollars? To which one of us are you speaking? Oh, not to you, Father. I realize I've stretched you to the breaking point as it is. I'm glad you're aware of that. How about it, Mother? How about what, dear? In case you don't know it, Alice, you're about to be stretched to the breaking point. What is it you want the two dollars for? To put with the money I have. I'm making an investment. I read a pamphlet, see? It's got the easiest way I ever heard of to make money. What is it? Rabbits. I beg your pardon? Raising rabbits. They'll double your money overnight. You don't say so. But they will, Father. You can't lose. Where would we keep rabbits? In the basement. Well, we're not keeping rabbits in our basement. Read the pamphlet, Mother. One fellow started with just four rabbits, and in two years, he had 700. And do you think we're going to have 700 rabbits running all over our basement? Well, I'd make pens for them. And how would I get into the basement? Do you remember, Henry, that stray dog that stayed here last week? I had to ask you to feed her every day she was with us. But that was just one, Mother. I certainly wouldn't forget to feed 700. (laughs) Incidentally, who's going to pay for the feed for 700? Oh, they pay for it themselves. Oh, I see. Out of their own pockets? Father, everything I suggest you take lightly. Well, if you think I'm taking this lightly, you're quite mistaken. You're not going to spend any money on rabbits. But that's not what I want it for. Oh, I thought that was what you did want it for. No, Mother, it's to buy some galvanized feeding pans. What was that? Feeding pans for the rabbits. For what rabbits? For my rabbits, the ones I've got down in the cellar. <laughs> you have 700 down there? No, Father, just four. I'm only beginning. They're beauties, too. Where did you get them, dear? Happy Taylor gave them to me. How did the Taylor boy happen to do that? I don't know. His folks just seem to think we'd like them better than they would. Yes. How would you like to be generous, dear, and give them back to Happy Taylor? Mother, don't you want a birthday present? Not as much as I want a home. Well, if I give those back, I won't have anything at all. How about your dog? He left. Because of the rabbits? But, Father, don't you want me to develop responsibility so I'll take care of things and feed them? Henry, we are not opposed to your developing all the responsibility you want to, but you'll have to find someone to take those rabbits. Who is there? Well, how about Tommy Walsh? He has a much larger house than we have. Well, uh, could I give him the rabbits but let him keep them here? (laughs) And your mother and I could live with the Walshes, eh? Uh, Father, you have no idea how I've planned on this. Supposing you go to the phone, dear, and see whether Tommy wouldn't like to have them. Now? Henry, if you want a rabbit for a pet, that's one thing. 
But you're not going to raise rabbits in our basement for the purpose of making money. Now, please call the Walshers. I'll phone them, but I hope they aren't in. Well, Alice, in one year we would have had rabbits in every room in the house. Sam, don't you think we might at least get Henry a dog? Alice, by tomorrow you'll have forgotten the whole thing. Well, perhaps. He never has kept it anything for more than 24 hours. Well, just the same, he might have kept it this. You mean you want him to raise rabbits? Well, as he says, it would develop character. Alice, let's have an understanding right now. Which do you want Henry to have, character or a father? A father, dear. Who do you suppose that can be at the door? Well, probably Mr. Hubbard. I'll let him in. Well, hello there, Hubbard. Evening. What is it you want repaired? Oh, the trouble's out in the kitchen. Pipe under the sink. Hi there, Mr. Hubbard. Evening. Oh, Henry, will you take Mr. Hubbard out and show him where that leak is? Sure thing. Henry, what did Tommy Walsh say about the rabbit? His folks weren't in. But he'd be very glad to take them, Mother. This way, Mr. Hubbard. Yes, sir. You, uh, raise rabbits? I was going to. Here you are. There's the pipe that's dripping. Oh. I don't know whether I have a wrench that'll fit that or not. Want me to look in your bag for you? Yeah. No, thank you. It's a good thing you're getting out of this rabbit business. Don't you recommend it? I'd be a rich man now if it weren't for rabbits. What happened? By the time it was over, even my wife left me. <laughs> yeah? Uh, do you want me to hold the screwdriver for you? Uh, will you just put it down, please? Sure. I uh, raised beavers once, too. Make a lot of money on them? That was the second time my wife left me. Well, uh, uh, did she ever come back? She did, and she got even with me. How? She went in for raising turkeys. She make a lot of money? That was when I left her. I see. Well, tell me, d did you ever raise silver foxes? Just for one winter. Now, there was an experience. Yeah? If you want to make money real quick, though, the thing to do is raise pigeons. Pigeons? Yeah. That's what I'm going to put every cent I've got into. Is that right? Yes, sir. Once I get it going, I'm giving up plumbing. Want me to hold that nut? Uh, just leave your hands off it. <laughs> yes, sir. I figured out there's 300 cent profit in every pigeon you raise. As much as that? What do you sell them for? Eating purposes? Don't raise that kind. I tried them once. Had to eat them all myself. <laughs> well, what kind, what kind do you raise? Carriers. Carriers? Is that right? Mm -hmm. The kind that get back home no matter where you take them, huh? Yep. Where's my hammer? Well, let's see. Oh, oh, here it is. Uh, leave it there. I'll pick it up. <laughs> I knew a fellow once that raised carrier pigeons and sold them to the army. Is that what you're going to do? Yeah, and put them in races. That's where you make the real money. Sometimes you win as much as five or ten dollars. Gee whiz, I didn't know anything like that was going on. Oh, what is it you're looking for, Mr. Hubbard? A pair of pliers. Just let me look for them myself. Do you mind if I point to them? Where are they? <laughs> oh, yeah, I yeah. am. Gee, there's a business I'd like to go in. What's stopping you? Well, uh, do pigeons take up very much room in a cellar? What are you going to keep them in the cellar for? Why don't you keep them in your attic? Gee, how do they get along in an attic? No, all you got to do is fix up some hoops and be sure the windows are left open. I wonder why I didn't think of that myself. Uh, want your two-oil bag, Mr. C uh, Hubbard? I... Uh, put it right back where it was. Yes. How much would it cost to go into the pigeon business, Mr. Hubbard? Uh, get your head out of the way. <laughs> is that better? Yeah, uh, just, just keep it out. I guess you don't need any expensive equipment like you do for rabbits, huh? All you need is some second-hand coops. Where could I get those? Any reason you couldn't advertise in the morning paper? You mean advertise? I just say I want some second-hand pigeon coops and that's all? What else would you suggest? Sure, and I'd save money. Unless, of course, nobody answered. <clears throat> but then the way I look at it, you've got to take a gamble at anything if you want to make money. Isn't that the way you look at it, Mr. Hubbard? Well, I... What are you uh, doing out here? Uh, well, uh, I'm helping Mr. Hubbard find his tools, Mother. 
Could you please stand back so you don't cast a shadow on him? Oh, my goodness. The way you've been talking out here, I thought you'd have all the problems of the world settled. Have you heard us? Well, I haven't heard what it was about. Hmm. What time does the Centerville Gazette close? Oh, I have no idea. They're uh, open till pretty late. They are? Why do you ask, dear? Oh, no reason. I was just wondering how long they stay open. Is Father around in the living room any place? Your father went out. Is that right? He went out? Mr. Hubbard, will I be in your way here? No, ma'am. Well, uh, goodbye. Where are you going, Henry? Uh, just in the living room. Look around. <laughs> Operator. Operator, could you get me the Centerville Gazette, please? Yes, ma'am. Henry, are you in the living room? Uh, uh, I think I am, Mother. <laughs> Mr. Hubbard wants to know whether you picked up his screwdriver. Uh, tell him he'll find it in his left hip pocket. Mm, thank you. Hello? Well, how do I put in an advertisement? Coops. Just ordinary pigeon coops. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. Sign at Henry W. Aldridge. Yeah. About how much will that be? As much as that? Well, would it be cheaper if I left the W out? <laughs> well, supposing I leave the Henry out? Okay. Just say, um, reasonable prices paid for old pigeon coops. Sign at Aldridge. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Goodbye. Henry, will you see us at the door, please? Yes, Mother. I'd be very glad to help you, Mother. Gee whiz, Tommy. You over here already? I came over to get my rabbits. Yeah, come on in. Did, uh, did you ask your folks whether it'd be all right? I don't know why it wouldn't be all right. Why should I worry them about a little thing like that? Yeah, well, come on down the cellar stairs. Why don't you want them, Henry? My folks would rather I raise pigeons. Pigeons? Sure. I've become a pigeon fancier. Yeah? Sure. I may even raise pigeons for the Army. Big money in it, Tommy. Yeah? Mm-hmm. For the Department of Interior Communications. Yeah? Uh, your rabbits are around here on the other side of the preserve closet. Oh, hey, show them to me. Now, listen. Before I let you see them, uh, when do I get that who's it you promised me on the telephone? Oh, uh, tomorrow, Henry. I couldn't bring it over tonight. Okay. Oh, here they are in this box. Look at them. That's what I say. Can you beat that? Well, what's the matter? There are eight here. <laughs> Can you imagine that, huh? But all I want is four. You gotta take eight. I haven't got room for eight. I'm gonna have trouble keeping just four in my closet. Well, you should have gotten here sooner, Tommy. Well, then certainly isn't my fault. Henry, is that Tommy down there? Yes, Mother, that's Tommy. Is he taking all four of the rabbits? Yes, Mother. I'm glad to hear that, dear. Tommy. Tommy, when we go up, don't say anything about the four I'm keeping. Why not? Maybe I can surprise my mother after all. Boy, am I going to make money. Rabbits in our basement and pigeons in our attic. <laughs> Our scene shifts for the next moment, ladies and gentlemen, to a department store where we clear up the mystery of the lady... Good evening. ...and the gong. Behind the counter on the fifth floor, lamps, china, curtains, drapes, rugs, house furnishings, and so forth, there stands a clerk. Approaching him is the lady who says... Last week, I bought a piece of merchandise in this department. I have it here with me. It's a dinner gong. Yes, madam? You see, I used to have a lot of trouble every night getting my husband and the children to the dinner table. They'd keep right on reading the paper or listening to the radio or whatever else they were doing when I called them. So I bought this gong. An excellent idea, madam. But, but now I want to return it, if I may. Well, is anything wrong with it, madam? Let's have a look at it. Sounds all right to me. Oh, the gong's all right. But recently I've been serving jello chocolate pudding for dinner. Now when I start to ring the gong, my husband and the children are sitting at the table before I get a chance to hit it. And the very delicious moral to that story is, ladies and gentlemen, folks certainly do get to the table and get there in a hurry when they know there's jello chocolate pudding for dessert. Because, friends, it's a grand treat that everybody loves, young and old alike. Nothing can compare with its rich, creamy smoothness and its thrilling chocolate flavor. 
And you'll be simply delighted to find how quickly and easily you can prepare Jell-O chocolate pudding. How inexpensive it is. And how many different and delicious desserts you can make with it. So try it tomorrow, why don't you? Start right away to treat the folks at your house to this new family favorite. Swell, luscious, easy to eat, Jell-O chocolate pudding. Now, getting back to the problems of Henry Aldrich. Without telling his parents, Henry has inserted an advertisement in the town paper and signed it with the name Aldrich. The scene opens the following day in his father's office. Miss Thompson, I don't have a great deal of time. Will you take a letter in a hurry, please? Yes, Mr. Aldrich. To the Brown Realty Company. Dear Mr. Brown, this is to advise you that unless steps are taken at once... Mr. Aldrich's office? Yes? Yes? <laughs> no, sir, you must have the wrong number, I'm afraid. Wrong number? Yes, sir. Now then, you just started a letter to the Brown Realty Company. Dear Mr. Brown, this is to advise you that unless steps are taken at once... Oh, yes, this is to advise you that unless steps are taken at once... Mr. Aldrich's office? What was that? I don't understand you. Say that slowly, please. One moment. Mr. Aldrich, somebody wants to talk to you about something. Let me have it. Samuel Orr is speaking. What number are you calling? Pigeon Coops? <laughs> Did you say Pigeon Coops? Well, my name is Aldrich. I'm the only Aldrich in town, but I don't buy pigeon coops. <laughs> Who is this talking? Charlie? <laughs> oh, you can't fool me, Charlie. Now, listen, Charlie, I'm busy as a deuce right now. I'll give you a call later. Don't bother me. Goodbye. <laughs> Charlie Gosling would try to be funny just when I'm trying to get my work done. Try to make me think his name was Tony Vecito. To be quite honest, Mr. Ulrich, I never did like Mr. Goslin. Well, we get a lot of business from him. Uh, now then, where were we? This is to advise you that unless steps are taken at once... Is that all the father we got? It is. Unless steps are taken at once... Uh, what was it I was going to say? I have no idea. Oh, I remember. Uh, toward improving the property, occupied by my... Let me answer that. Sam Orr speaking. Who? <laughs> yes, Charlie. Still selling pigeon coops? <laughs> we'll take all 15. <laughs> yes, deliver them right to our house. I don't care where you put them. Put them in the living room. Yes, and don't bother me anymore. Just because Charlie Gosling happens to be a client. How far are we? Right where we were. Yes. You know, it would be just like Charlie to go and find 15 pigeon coops and deliver them to our house. I remember one other practical joke he tried to play off. Miss Thompson, please answer that. If it's Charlie again, tell him I've gone for the day. Hello? Yes, sir. One moment, please. Mr. Aldrich. It's the Centerville Feed Company. They want to know whether they may supply you with cracked corn. For what? One moment. Hello? Mr. Aldrich wants to know what he would use cracked corn for. No, Mr. Aldrich has not changed his business. He's still practicing law. Goodbye. Cracked corn? Crack. Did that sound like... Charlie Goslin. My suspicion is that was Mr. Goslin. Mm. Oh, no, no. He probably phoned the Centerville Feed Company and told them to call here. Now, unless steps are taken at once to him... <laughs> Who's at the door? You Mr. Aldridge? I am. Well, how many pigeon coops did you want? I beg your pardon? How many did you want? Did you say pigeon coops? Pigeon coops. A pork can let you have all you need up to 60. May I ask who sent you here? I don't know. My paw just told me to come up here. Where is your paw? Down in front. Had a park double. We got all 60 down there. You have 60 pigeon coops down in front for me? Sure. You want them brought up here? To the office? No. You can also fix you up with 60 feeding trays. <laughs> no, I'll answer the phone. Now then, young man, may I ask how your father happened to come here? I don't know. Do you know a gentleman by the name of Charles Goslin? 
Never heard of. Well, here's what you're to do. You're to deliver your confounded goops to Mr. Goslin's residence at 12 Church Street. All 60? All 60, and all 60 feeding trays. Who pays for them? Send the bill to Mr. Goslin. Sure. Take them over right away. That's fine. Miss Aldrich. Mrs. Aldrich is on the phone. What does she want? There's a gentleman by the name of Achito at your house and loading pigeon coop. Insists upon leaving them in the living room. Now I know it was Charlie. Mrs. Aldrich says he had nothing to do with it. Well, then the fellow must be insane. That's why she says you're to come over. Yes, yes. Where's my hat and coat? Right in the middle of the busiest day I ever had. If anyone else calls Miss Thompson, I've left. Hello, Father. Hello. Uh, Can I speak to you just a minute? You may not. Goodbye. Well, what do you know about that? <laughs> Miss Thompson, is he in a hurry over something? He is. And if I were you, I wouldn't follow him. Well, Miss, Miss Thompson could... I could answer so. Where's Sam Aldridge? He just went out. I've got exactly what he wants outside on my truck. What is it? Eight of the darlingest pigeon coops you ever put your two eyes on. Well, gee whiz, could you haul them over to my house? And why not? Well, I don't think anyone's home. Oh, now you take the hoops, and I'll give you a dozen fine birds to go with them. You will? I will not. Gee whiz, I'll be getting an even better start than I thought I would. Let's go. time, please put the rest of your coops on your wagon and get away from the front of my house. You know how to advertise. I did not advertise. <laughs> the lady, she know how to advertise. I did not advertise. No one in this house advertised. We couldn't have. That's a funny thing. And my wife, she's a reader to me after long. What you probably did was to misunderstand the name. What's your name? Aldrich. Aldrich, that's all right. I'm a telephone to him. He's a say, show, so bring me 15 of coops. <laughs> All right, I'll admit that I'm the one who answered the phone, but uh, I thought you were somebody else. I'll meet the his price. <laughs> no, I, I thought you were a friend by the name of Charlie. I'll sell the chi- What's the Charlie got to do with it? <laughs> now listen, my friend. For the last time, put that final crate on your wagon and get away from here. All right, all right. I'm going to go home and read the ad. You sure you know one of these coops are cheap? Get out. All right, all right. Give me up, please. <laughs> Bye, maybe I see you tomorrow. No. <laughs> well, thank goodness he's gone. Oh, you know, Alice, I honestly believe the fellow's crazy. Did you hear it? He practically insisted that we advertised. Father, take a look. What is it, Henry? And what I've got right here in this truck. Pigeon coops. <laughs> Where did you get those? They're for my pigeons. How are you, Sam Aldridge? Well, could you give me a hand, Henry, boy? Sure. Here, one minute. Henry, are you unloading those here? Sure. Oh, down with them, me son. Hey, wait before you unload that. Oh, it's not too heavy, Father. Uh, there you are. What's that I hear? Now, for three years, I've been wanting to show you me gratitude, Sam. Now, again, I'm sorry, but we have no place here for those pigeons. But, Father, they aren't costing us a cent. We're getting them absolutely free. What do you mean? Mr. Mulligan has very kindly consented to credit the coops toward a bill he owes Father. What was that? Don't you think that's fair, Father? Henry, will you and Mr. Mulligan please put that crate back on the truck? You, you mean you don't want them? I do not. Oh, but, but, but it's three years I've been owing you that bill, Sam. Don't you think it's about time it was paid? Sam? If you'll take those crates away, I'll call the whole thing paid. Oh, now, now, that's very decent of you, Sam. Give me a hand, me boy. But, Father, I need them. Henry, do you want me to put that on for you? I'll help him. Uh, you're a gentleman, Sam Aldridge. And the next time I come into town, I'll bring your son a present. But not pigeons or pigeon cook. Oh, no, no, sir, not pigeons. I'll bring him a fine white nanny goat I have. You will? You will not? Well, good day to you all. She was... Now I've even lost what I paid for the ad. For the ad? For what ad? For coops, didn't I tell you? Let's go into the house, Henry. I want to have a talk with you. I know what you're going to say. Oh, I wouldn't cry right out here on the sidewalk, Henry. I'm not crying. Who's crying? Well, you're disappointed, dear, but the next time you do anything like this, you must tell us. Of course. We may not have room for pigeons any more than we had for rabbits, but 
We'll find something you can have. The only thing is I need pigeon coops. I need them bad. Oh, today you need them, but by tomorrow you'll have forgotten all about them. Sam, what, what's that? What was what? Something just flew out of our attic window. Out of which window? That was one of my pigeons. One of what pigeons? That Mr. Hubbard gave me. That he gave you? How many did he give you? Just six. Two of them are up there setting. In our attic? It would be all right if they had a coop, Father. Henry Aldrich. Henry, could I see you a minute? What about, Tommy? What have you got in the box there? Your rabbits. My mother and father won't let me keep them. What are you doing, returning all four of them? All four of them? There are ten of them. Can you imagine? Henry, we can't possibly take those. But, Mother, the ones I have don't bother you any, do they? The ones you have? Yeah, the ones in the preserve closet. Henry! <laughs> Look! Look who's coming. It's Towser. Oh, my old dog, Towser. Well, gee whiz. And where are you going to keep him, Oh, Henry? he can sleep at the foot of my bed. Listen, Henry, I want my who's it back that I gave you for the rabbits. Oh, no, that was a bargain, Tommy. You've got to give it back. Give what back? My snake. What's that? No, he gave me that snake. Well, Henry, why should you want an old dead snake? But, Mother, it isn't dead. It's alive. <laughs> Where is it? Where is it? Yes. It's in my top bureau drawer. Henry Aldrich! Henry Aldrich will be back again in just a moment. Folks, tomorrow night, why not treat yourself to one of those popular new Jell-O puddings you've been hearing so much about? Let's say a grand, tempting dish of Jell-O vanilla pudding, dressed up perhaps with a handful of rich nuts or raisins. Now there is a truly fine dessert, one that has no rival when it comes to smooth, creamy goodness. Every time you enjoy it, which is sure to be often, you'll find yourself more excited than ever about the delectable flavor of Jell-O vanilla pudding, because there's nothing to equal its delightful taste. So delicate and yet marvelously mellow. It's a quick, easy, inexpensive dessert. A captivating climax to any meal. So make tomorrow night's dinner end on a truly festive note by serving the family this luscious treat. You'll add a new name on your list of favorite desserts the very first time you enjoy the rare, distinctive goodness of Jell-O Vanilla Pudding. <laughs> Tommy, I just had a big idea. What about, Henry? We can make some money on these pigeons. We can clean up. How? All we have to do is put another ad in the paper. The only trouble is, though, we'll have to put it in in your father's name. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, ladies and gentlemen, in the event you would like to see Henry's latest advertisement, you will find it only in next week's issue of Centerville's leading paper. The Aldrich Family, starring Ezra Stone, is written by Clifford Goldsmith. Original music for the program is composed and conducted by Jack Miller. By the way, Ezra Stone will appear as Henry Aldrich at the State Theater in Hartford, Connecticut for four days beginning February 22nd. Now, this is Harry Von Zell speaking and wishing you good night for those delicious new desserts all America's talking about. Jell-O Pudding. <laughs> This is the National Broadcasting Company.
Rich Family, starring Ezra Stone, written by Clifford Goldsmith. Brought to you by the makers of those delicious new desserts all America's talking about. Jell-O Pudding. In the town of Centerville, most of the residents are ready for March to come in like a lion and go out like a lamb. But in the Aldrich family home on Elm Street, these traditional animals have been relegated to the background. For Henry Aldrich has real rabbits hopping around the basement and live pigeons flapping about the attic. Our scene tonight opens in Henry's room with Mrs. Aldrich speaking to herself. Do you want this broken fountain pen, dear? Yes, Mother. Do you want this piece of lead pipe? Yes, Mother. Will you tell me what on earth for? Mother, please. I want everything in my desk. But, Henry, your desk is a sight. Let me explain something. Right this minute, I'm very busy. But the first time I'm not busy, I'll clean it out. You've been saying that for six months. But, gee whiz, when you get through, I won't know where anything is. What are you saving this ticket to the World's Fair for? I might use it. But it's to the Chicago <laughs> World's Fair. It was over several years ago. Yeah, I know it's to the Chicago World's Fair. Even if I don't use it, I'd like to have it for a souvenir. What about these three pieces of rock? Mother, I brought all those back from Vermont last summer. I carried them back purposely. Where did you put them? In this lower drawer. Well, there's a very good example of what I'm trying to tell you. Supposing I should suddenly need those rocks in a hurry. I'd have to go through everything I own. Henry, you're exactly like your grandmother. Alice, are you in Henry's room? Yes, Sam. Did you want me, Father? Oh, uh, no, Henry. Alice, I realize you've wanted a maid for some time and that we now finally have one. But I do wish you'd ask her not to go in that spare room I used to work in. What's happened now? She's just gone through the place like a tornado. She's taken half the things off my desk. <laughs> the fact is, dear, I cleaned out your desk. You cleaned it out? Of course. Well, what did you do with my pen? I put it in the pen holder. What did you put it there for? Well, my goodness, Sam, don't you want Martha to have any respect for us? Respect for us? After all, are we hiring her or is she hiring us? But, dear, she's the only maid I've ever had, and this is her first day here. And your room looked almost as bad as the room Henry keeps his rabbits in, down in the cellar. Mother, do we have to tell her about my rabbits? Whether we do or not, Henry, I think you'd better be prepared for the day when she finds them. Well, couldn't you put it up to her? Just tell her that if the rabbits will stay in their room and Father will stay in his, wouldn't she be happy? <laughs> Incidentally, who changed the blotter on my desk? I did. Well, I didn't want to see it thrown out. I like that old blotter. All right, dear. Go it down and get it out of the trash barrel. If you want to, you may sleep with it under your pillow. But I certainly hope you won't let Martha see it. Unfortunately, it had all my telephone numbers written on it. What do you want done with this Canadian penny, Henry? I might go to Canada sometime. <laughs> Miss Arnett. Yes, Martha? Miss Arnett's in here. I'm right here, Martha. Miss Aldrich, somebody wants you downstairs at the front door. A uh, gentleman? He's sort of a gentleman. Well, did you ask him to step inside? Yeah. Miss Aldrich, could I take up some of your time for something? What is it, Martha? I don't like to complain, but frankly, when I come to you this morning, you said there was only four in the family. Oh, that's all there are. But how about all those rabbits down in the cellar? Rabbits, Martha? Yeah, but didn't anybody know they were down there? Of course we knew they were down there, but I... Martha, uh, don't you like rabbits? My brother kept rabbits once, and frankly, I got awful tired of them. But they don't ever come upstairs and get in your way, do they? Not yet, but two of them's working their way toward the cellar stairs. Martha, we're not keeping those rabbits always. Henry's simply going to raise them and then sell them very soon. Do they stay here at night? Oh, yes, they like it here very much. Alice? Yes, Sam? Could you come down here, please? Right away. I ain't going to stay here with them rabbits. Martha, Martha, why don't you look at it this way? You know how lucky a rabbit's foot is? The rabbits my brother had, it was always just a lot of work. How long did you live with your brother? Frankly, just a little while. I tried, but I couldn't get myself adjusted to them. But very few people get to like a rabbit right away, Martha. But once you get to know those I have, you'll say, <laughs> gee whiz, thanks, Henry, for letting me get to know them. Well, I'll finish out today, but I can't stay any longer than that. Look, Martha, is there anything I could give you to make it worth your while? Like what? Well, I could give you part of my allowance each week. How much would that be? Well, I, I could give you 20 cents of it. 20 cents? And I'll do all the work that's in connection with the rabbits. Gee whiz, Martha, isn't that a bargain? Frankly, I wouldn't be interested. Would uh, would you be interested in 20 cents a week in your choice of anything in my desk here? 
what you got? Well, gee, I got a million things. How about a Canadian penny? How many you got? Well, just one. But don't let that mislead you. It's only a penny in Canada. But here, Martha... How much is it here? Well, I wouldn't want to say. In this country, a thing like that is very rare. Yeah. In fact, that's only the fourth one I've ever seen in my life. And you know how long I've been kicking around. What else you got? What else about... Well, uh, would you like a piece of genuine Vermont granite, Martha? That's just a piece of stone, ain't it? Not in Vermont, it isn't. In Vermont, that's granite. And you can't get better granite unless you want to import it. You certainly wouldn't want to go to all that trouble. You got anything else? Well, there's a compass here. Only I wouldn't want to give you that. It's broken. <laughs> Gee whiz, if you got lost with that, where would you be? I don't want to do that. Oh, here's something for you. Gee whiz. What is it? How would you like a ticket to the World's Fair? To the World's Fair? Sure. You going to give me this? Of course, if you'll only stay with the rabbits. Martha, may I speak with you? Yes, a minute, Miss Aldrich. Martha, that visitor downstairs did not want to see Mr. Aldrich. She wanted to see Henry. Henry? Somebody's here to see me, Mother? Come right on up, Tommy. Henry up here? I'm up in my room, Tom. Martha, is it all set? Well, I see it to the fair. Oh, Henry, take a look at this. What is it? It's the morning paper. It's not so loud, Tommy. But it's got the ad we put in. Yeah, let's see it. I'm telling you, Henry, we're going to make money hand over fist. Has anyone phoned your house yet? Well, it's too early. But I'm asking you, Henry, who else in town would have thought of using carrier pigeons this way? Not so loud, I tell you. What's the matter? I mean, what's the matter? We've got a new maid, and she ought to get used to one thing at a time. <laughs> Doesn't she like pigeons? We don't know yet. She doesn't know you've got some up in the attic? She'll find it out, Tommy. She'll find it out. They're in the room right next to hers. Oh, Henry, is your mother in there? Uh, no, she isn't, Father. Tommy, I'll fold the paper up quick and stick it to my desk. Where'd she go? Who, Mother? What is it, Sam? I, uh, dug my old blotter out of the trash barrel. I also found one of my good trout flies in there. I almost hook myself on that thing every time I go into your desk drawer. You've no right to go in there, dear. That's my drawer, and everything in there is mine. It's all right. Uh, yes, Martha? A party wants to speak to you on the telephone. I'll be right there. Henry, isn't that the morning paper sticking out of your desk? Oh, that isn't ours, Mother. That's Tommy's. Now, I'll take it, Mrs. Aldridge. There's no use bothering you with that. May I see it, please? Oh, uh, Mother, have, have, have you ever noticed how this piece of granite sparkles? Henry, I'm looking at the advertisements before I do my shopping. Well, wouldn't you like to have me look at them for you? Oh, I certainly would not. Have you noticed the ads on this other page, Mrs. Aldridge? Over here? Yeah. Why should I buy a piano? I don't know. They say they're good pianos. Alice, will you please tell Martha not to call me every time the phone rings? Who was that call for? Tommy Walsh's mother wants to talk with him. She wants to talk to me, Mr. Aldridge? She wants me? Yes, Tommy. Henry, the first one's come. The first one's come. What has come? Uh, a message he was expecting. <laughs> Sam, did you see this advertisement? What advertisement? I think it might interest Henry, too. <clears throat> What's it for, Mother? A clearance of men's and young men's shoes. Shoes? <sighs> Let me say it. Here. Henry, are you too warm? Warm, Mother? What's the matter with you? I just thought I'd get down and see Tommy. Father, could I have the paper, please? Uh, one moment here. Alice, did you see this? What? This notice. It says, carry a pigeon service. Messages delivered to any point in Centerville. <laughs> Low rates. Our birds can make 60 miles per hour under favorable conditions. <laughs> Signed, Ulrich and Walsh, Incorporated. Sam, read that again. I'd rather not. Henry, do you still have those pigeons up in the attic? Well, less than a dozen, Mother. What do you suppose Martha's going to do when she finds them? But, Mother, Tommy and I can make some money. Henry... You don't imagine anyone is actually going to use any such messenger service, do you? Why not? We only charge ten cents a message and the whole thing's clear profit. Do you mean to say, dear, your pigeons can go any place you send them? Well, I couldn't go so far as to say that, Mother, but they're trained almost that well. Mm, when Martha leaves, can your pigeons be trained to do the housework? Could I keep the pigeons in my room, Mother? No, dear. Henry, may I come in? Yes, Tommy. 
Listen, Henry, Mrs. Persons wants us to deliver a very important message for It's her. all off, Tommy. Tommy, what is the message Mrs. Persons wants delivered? Well, she didn't say. She just said we should come over right away. Then may I ask how a pigeon could possibly deliver a message for her? Oh, it'd be simple, Mother. We've got Dizzy Stevens working for us on a commission, see? He takes one of our pigeons over to Mrs. Persons and fastens the message on her foot, see? On to Mrs. Persons' foot? No, onto the pigeons. How does it know where to go? It comes here. Hmm. Whether the message is for us or not. Well, this is a relay junction. One of us then detaches the bird from the message, jumps on a bicycle, and delivers it. <laughs> sure, sure, that's all there is to it, Mr. Aldrich. You don't say so. Could anything be more simple? And where is Mrs. Persons all this time? That's the beautiful part of it. Once the message leaves her hands, she can forget the whole thing. <laughs> Supposing there's an answer. What's that? Supposing there's an answer. Well, Mr. Aldrich, don't you think that would be an exceptional case? I mean, after all, most people just send a message and that's all there is to it. Sure, that's what I should think. Well, Martha will never stand for our keeping those pigeons. Oh, Alice, what does Martha have to do with it? The, the boys have an idea here. Don't you want me to keep a maid? Well, I don't think she should be spoiled. That's what I think. Well, can't you explain to Martha what Henry wants to do? Well, if I can't understand it, certainly Martha can. Mother, look at it this way. Henry, there's no use arguing. Martha is not going to like pigeons. But, Mother... Sir Henry, let me talk to your mother. Alice, I don't think what Henry wants to do is going to laugh. But I do think he should be allowed to try it. And I don't see why Martha should be afraid of pigeons. Would you like it if a pigeon should get in your room in the middle of the night? Well, what harm could it do? Well, I'm sure I wouldn't like it. Where does the trouble seem to be, Henry? No place, Tommy. We just have a temperamental maid. Henry, if you must go through with this, supposing you wait while I have a talk with Martha. If you want my advice, don't mention the pigeons to her, and she won't even notice they're there. <coughs> what on earth is that? It's coming from the attic. I think it's Martha. She's found the pigeons. <coughs> A week or so ago, ladies and gentlemen, one of our listeners gave a party. And a few days afterwards, she received a note of thanks from one of the guests. Now, you've all heard people refer to such a note as a bread and butter letter. But this one was a pudding letter. Because here's the way it read. Dear Helen, just a line or two to tell you how much Bob and I enjoyed the party. It certainly was a big success and we all had a grand time. Incidentally, the real head of the evening was that wonderful pudding you served for dessert. Bob keeps asking me to find out how you made it. So why don't you be a good girl and send me the recipe? Love, Julia. Well, the next day, Helen answered her friend's letter. And if you could have peeked over her shoulder, you'd have read this. Dear Julia, the pudding was called Jello Orange Vanilla Whip. And I heard about it on the radio, on the program called The Aldrich Family. Here's the way Harry Von Zell said to make it. Well, first, you take one package each of orange jello and jello vanilla pudding and make them up as you usually do. Then chill the orange jello and whip it as directed on the box. Next, you chill the jello vanilla pudding and add it to the whipped jello, beating constantly until blended. Then mold. And there you have a truly swell dessert. A glorious combination of golden orange jello and smooth, creamy jello vanilla pudding. Easy to make and downright inexpensive. P.S. Now, why not try some yourself, friends, and see how soon it becomes one of your special favorites? For rich, tangy flavor, for rare, distinctive goodness, Jell-O Orange Vanilla Whip is absolutely top. Now, getting back to the problems of Henry. The Aldriches have a new maid who apparently does not like pigeons. The scene opens on the second floor of the Aldrich home. Sam, I've about decided you were right. Regarding what, Alice? Well, I don't think we should make Henry get rid of those pigeons just because Martha doesn't like them. You certainly aren't going to let her go, are you? Well, I thought you said I should. Well, that was before she made that beef stew we had for lunch. That was the best beef stew, Alice, I ever ate in my life. But if we let her have her way on the pigeons, she'll want her way on everything. It might interest you to know, Alice, that Martha no longer objects to the pigeons. How do you know? I had a little talk with her. What did you tell her? Well, I... Told her we'd give her a dollar a week more. Sam Aldrich, you should never have told her that. But I like her stew. I still don't believe she's going to stay in a house with something she's scared to death of for only one dollar a week extra. Uh, well, if you must know, I gave her something else. What? My trout fly. She wanted it for a hat ornament. 
Well, at least I won't be hooked on it anymore. I also gave her a timetable. Oh, I thought she was staying. Oh, she is, until the Chicago Wells Fair reopens. And what year will that be? I have no idea, but she's staying until then. Mother! Where are you, Henry? I'm coming down the attic stairs. Have any pigeons flown in any windows down here yet? None that I've seen. Isn't that strange? How's your messenger service working? Fine. I wonder how you can account for a thing like that. We've got to give our bird time, Henry. But baby's the fastest bird we have. Nothing seems to have gone wrong, Henry? Oh, nothing, Father. Nothing. Just seems to be a minor delay. The only thing that's wrong is we don't know where our pigeon went. Of course, maybe Dizzy Stevens hasn't even got her over to Mrs. Persons yet. That's what happened. Sure. Dizzy probably took the nickel we paid him and is out blowing it in. Come on up back up into the attic. Boys, you haven't forgotten your promise to stay out of Martha's room while you're up there. Oh, we haven't been near her door, Father. Henry, what do you suppose has become of Babe? Gee whiz, there's probably a strong headwind holding her back. But Mrs. Persons only goes a mile from here. Maybe she arrived when we weren't looking and couldn't see that this attic window here was open. She can find this house. She certainly ought to be able to tell whether a window was open. Tommy! Tommy, take a look outside. And what? Look, she's coming 90 miles an hour. That isn't the direction Mrs. Persons lives in. What difference does it make? She's coming, isn't she? She probably went around so she could come in on the wind. <laughs> well, where, where is she now? She's straight up there. Henry, Henry, I think I can see the message. Father, mother, come up for the landing. Stand back from the window, Tommy, so we don't frighten her. Where is she? She's overhead. She... She was. She went right by. <laughs> to where? I don't know. She didn't stop. Just when we need her. As a matter of fact, that might have been some other bird. You know, what we need is a pair of binoculars. Yeah. Has she landed, Henry? Not yet, Father. It was just an aeroplane or something. Well, Martha's on her way up there. Oh, well, come right up, Martha. All alone? Well, Martha wants you to come down and meet her. Sure, I'll escort you up, Martha. Ain't none of them chickens loose up there, is it? Gee whiz, no, Martha. Every bird up here is in her own cage. And look, Martha, they won't hurt you. I put my fingers right through the bars and they don't even touch me. Just let me in my room here. There you are, Martha. Close that door. Sure. Henry, take a look out the window. Where? She's right over there on the roof of the next house. Tommy. Tommy, there she is. Hiya, baby. Father. Mother. Hey, everybody, look outside. Come on, baby, come on. Martha. Martha. Leave your window open in case Baby wants to come in that way. I'm going back to close it right now. Tommy, is Baby coming? Here, Baby. Here, Baby. She just sits on the roof of Mrs. Kilmer's house. Maybe she wants to rest for a minute. <laughs> After flying just one mile? Can you see the message? Sure. Look, Henry, she's coming. She's coming. Yeah, only to the end of the roof, though. Well, that's in our direction, isn't it? Her instincts are right. Boys, did you have your bird yet? Well, where are you, Father? Down here on the back wall. She just flew onto the windowsill. And maybe she likes that house. Maybe she thinks we live there. Mr. Aldrich, could you get a stick and poker? There's no stick down here that long. Gee, if everybody would keep quiet a second, maybe she'd come over here naturally. Henry, she coming? She looked this way. <laughs> that means she's getting ready. See that? What'd she do? She sat down. <laughs> Mr. Aldrich, could you ring the bell next door and ask the people to push her off the windowsill? I happen to know the Kilmers are out. At a time like this? Father, could you go inside and push her off? I could not. Well, gee whiz, do you suppose she's going to nest on that windowsill? Maybe she's going to lay an egg. <laughs> Father, do you see that ladder right there by the side of our house? I do, but I'm not going to climb up it. But she may be gone by the time we get down there. Sam, put that ladder against the house and help the boys. Where are you, Mother? I'm down here with your father. I'm not going to climb up the side of Kilmer's house. Well, wasn't it your idea that the boys go ahead with this? Well, I certainly didn't know it was going to lead to breaking in the houses. Sam. All right, I'll help them. Oh, Henry, step into Martha's room and tell her it's time to start dinner. Yes, Mother. Martha. Martha. What you want? My mother says it's time to start dinner. You got that flying devil coat yet? Martha, if you'll come out, we'll give you protection to the foot of the stairs. Martha! Isn't she timid, though? Father, if you can get baby down, I think we can get Martha out. You don't say so. Don't talk to him, Henry. You want him to fall off that ladder? Must you mention my falling? Just talk to her, Father, and she'll come. 
What shall I say to her? Just say, here, baby. Come, baby. Here, baby. I'm not going to say anything of the kind. <laughs> Mr. Aldrich, if you'll stand on the top rung and reach, I think you can get her. Sam, don't fall. Grab her quickly, but carefully, Father. Yes. Is there anyone else who would like to give me advice? Oh, gee, look who's opening that window. Was there something you wanted, Sam Aldrich? Uh... How do you do, Mrs. Kilmer? Uh, where did the pigeon go? What pigeon? She didn't fly in your window, did she? What are you talking about? My father, he's trying to get a message. To me? No, from a pigeon. <laughs> Henry, you're not helping matters any. Mr. Rawlins, she's down there on the whim of that tree. Father, all you have to do is move your ladder. <laughs> I'm not going to climb anything more. Sam, if we don't get that bird, we won't have any dinner. I can't help it. What are you having for dinner, Mrs. Aldrich? Pigeon pie? Alice, if I don't stop now, I'll end by climbing everything in town. Mother, could you climb up the tree? No, dear. Could you throw a stick? There aren't any sticks. Could you just toss a stone in her direction? All right, dear. Uh, not toward me, Alice. Be sure not to hit baby, either. Here it goes. You're too high, Mother! <laughs> Who'd do that? <laughs> Gee whiz, Mother, duck around the corner. It went through Martha's window. Didn't I tell you you couldn't trust them, that pigeon? And now baby's flown away. If you ask me, Alice, no maid on earth is worth it. Well, she's just gone up to the attic and she's perfectly happy. Well, she had better be. It cost me three dollars to get Henry to go out of business. Mother, mother, are you down in the living room? Yes, dear, where are you? Uh, could you come up to the second floor just a minute? Now, what is it? Martha doesn't want to go up to her room. Tell Martha there isn't a pigeon left in the house. No? No, my father made me give them all away, Martha. Yes, Martha. Henry even gave his rabbits away, just so you'd stay. I appreciate that. Only i never been up there before in the dark. Well, there's a light in your room. Not till I get to it. Martha, what if it is dark? As soon as you get to your door, you snap the switch on and there's light. Yeah, and if Henry isn't afraid, certainly you shouldn't be. Henry, will you go up there with me? Who, I? Of course he will. In fact, Martha, if it'll make you any happier, Henry will even sit in the chair just outside your door until you get to sleep. In the dark, Mother? Of course. I thought you weren't afraid. I'm not. I'm not. I'll open the door to the stairs for you. There you are. Henry, you go in first. Oh, uh, you can go first, Martha. <laughs> then if anything happens, you'll know I'm right in back of you. Henry? <laughs> Henry? Mother, I'll lead the way. Are you coming, Martha? Y yes, sir. Good night. Gee, I, I didn't realize it was so dark up here. What's that? It, it's the chair outside your door. There's the light, Martha. Go right in. You going to sit out here? Sure. I don't mind the dark. Good night. Good night. Martha ain't afraid either. Martha? What, what you want? Do I have to sit out here like this that very long? You'll get used to it after a couple of nights. Where did I put my night gown? Come over here, you little rascal, to say good night. Mother, you sure it's all alone? <laughs> I like to talk to myself. <laughs> now, Martha, turn out the night. Is in the bed. My goodness, but it's quiet in this room. Henry! Mr. Henry! Well? I'll let you know when I'm asleep. <laughs> I guess this place ain't so bad after all. <laughs> Who that? <laughs> Who that? <laughs> There ain't nothing, Martha. Just lie right still. If Miss Orr didn't give you her word, I swear there's birds in here. There is birds in here. Are you all right, Martha? There's eagles in here. Get away from me. Henry, where are you? I thought I'd go downstairs for something, Martha. But come back. Just turn on the light. The pigeons, they all come back. What in the world is going on up there? Look, only one came back. 
was enough. And it's Baby. It's Baby. Where is she? Sitting right over there on Martha's dresser. She's right on my ticket to the Woods Fair. <laughs> Mother, Mother, you hold Martha while I save Baby. Hey, what's the trouble here? Martha, what is that rabbit doing beside your bed? I hope you don't mind my keeping just one, Miss Alder. Frankly, I just took the like the little fellow that I kind of took the one to keep one of all of them. Martha. I just got the message, Father. Mrs. Persons wants a man to hurry over and fix her oil burner this afternoon. You don't say so. Martha, what are you getting your suitcase out for? If you don't mind, Miss Alder, frankly, I think I'll go. Well, frankly, Martha, we don't mind. <laughs> Henry Aldrich will be back again in just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, here is a full-length description of perfect dessert enjoyment, summed up in only three little words. Yes, just three words, Jell-O butterscotch pudding. All you have to do is mention these three magic words to your grocer, and you'll be all set to enjoy a rich, mellow dessert that tastes just right and offers you a world of hearty, zestful satisfaction. Jell-O butterscotch pudding has a rare, tantalizing flavor, brimful of swell, buttery, brown sugar goodness. And you'll be simply delighted with its creamy smoothness and tempting golden color. So, friends, try this easy, inexpensive recipe for a delicious treat. You can guarantee yourself a real pleasure, a grand adventure in good things to eat. The very first time you meet up with this popular new dessert, Jell-O Butterscotch Pudding. Tommy, Tommy, look at the advertisement I just answered. What is it? I'm going to take a course. I'm going to be a railway clerk. Do your folks mind you're leaving home? Shh. I'm not telling them until I'm all ready. Well, maybe Henry will be sorting your mail. The Aldrich Family, starring Ezra Stone, is written by Clifford Goldsmith and will be heard next week at the same time. Original music is composed and conducted by Jack Miller. This is Harry Von Zell speaking and wishing you good night for those delicious new desserts all America's talking about. Jell-O Pudding. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Henry! Henry Aldrich! Coming, Mother. The Aldrich Family, written by Clifford Goldsmith and starring Ezra Stone. Entertainment for all the family, brought to you by Postum, a tempting, wholesome drink for all the family. Postum. Yes, folks, it's time again to drop in on the Aldrich family. Time to enjoy the relaxation that comes from a visit with this typical American family. Relaxation, of course, is something we all need. And sometimes, if a tense, nervous condition prevents you from getting it, it's well to ask this question. Is coffee making you nervous? Would you be better off drinking Postum instead of coffee? Well, now, far be it for me to imply that there aren't many folks on whom coffee has no ill effects whatever... That's obvious when you consider how popular coffee is. But I do know that coffee does make many people nervous. So if you think it sets your nerves on edge, switch to Postum. Postum contains no stimulants, nothing that could possibly affect your nerves. Drink Postum with all its flavor and fragrance instead of coffee and see if that nervous feeling doesn't go away. See if you don't feel really relaxed again once you give Postum a fair trial. Tom Sawyer, Penrod Schofield, and Huck Finn are real boys to all of us, 
because their adventures and their ways of thinking are those of every real boy. And now Henry Aldrich joins the ranks of America's favorite youngsters, a boy from your own block or even perhaps from your own home. We join Henry Aldrich and his friend Homer in the Aldrich living room. The time is just before dinner. Gee, Homer, if that isn't a nice thing to do to my best coat. Now, listen, Henry, you talk just as though I'd thrown it into the lake on purpose. I didn't know my girl was going to jump. When? When the bee attacked her, out in the canoe. Oh, gee whiz, Homer, look at my coat, soaking wet. And I'm supposed to wear it to the lecture next week. All right, Henry, if that's the way you feel about it, watch and see if I ever borrow your coat again. And look at the things in the pockets. Look at my girl's picture. She's all warped. Part of that's natural. It is not. Eleanor Wentworth is one of the best... Oh, boy. What's the matter? Oh, boy. What have I done now? Look at this letter. It's ringing wet. Who's it from? I don't know who it's from. Only somebody in my family gave it to me to mail last week. They did? Yes, Homer, and I never thought you'd do a thing like this to it. Who's it addressed to? Well, that's the trouble. Can't you see the water's washed all the ink off the envelope? Whose name is on the back? Not so loud, Homer. Do you want my mother to hear you? Henry, are you almost ready for dinner? Why, uh... Yes, I am, Mary. Here, Homer, take this coat and this letter up to my room. Now? Sure, and put them on the radiator and turn on the heat. Okay. Homer, your mother phoned for you to come home a long time ago. Oh, she did? Well, thank you. Mary, I've been intending to ask you, is Joe Graham still out of town? Yes. That's what I thought. If I remember correctly, you gave me a letter to mail to him, didn't you? Yes. That's what I... Did you ever get an answer? Yes. Oh. Well, that's fine. Why do you ask? Well, I was just wondering. Mary! Yes, Father? Your mother wants you to help her in the kitchen. Oh, my goodness, I'll go right out. Hello, Henry. Oh, hello, Father. Homer gone home? No, sir, he's upstairs drying... He's upstairs, sort of... He's upstairs. You say he's upstairs? Yes, sir, just temporarily. How did everything go with you today? Fine. How's... business... Fine. How are the mails coming through? The mails? What mails? Well, just the mails. Well, they're coming through fine. Why do you ask that? Well, I was just... Henry! Yes, Mother? Dinner's all on the table. We'll be right there. Sam, come in and start talking. Yes, Alice? Look, Mother, is there anything just offhand that you can think of that I haven't done that you told me to in the last few weeks? What do you mean by that? Well, I don't know. I was just asking. Now, this how are the tickets going for the lecture at the women's club. Sam, I'm worried sick. What's the trouble? Well, dear, I hadn't had any word from the man that's coming to give the lecture, and here it is less than a week off. Mother, aren't you chairman of the lecture committee? Yes, dear. Why, uh, why don't you hear from him? Well, Henry, I wish I knew why. Oh. When did you write to him? Last week. I gave you the letter to mail. You gave it to me? Sam, I'm almost positive I did. Didn't you mail it? If... If you gave it to me, I mailed it. Henry, did Mother, could I have the bread, please? Here you are. And, Father, shall I pass this who's it to Mother? Yes, please. Goodbye, Henry. I think everything's going to be all right. What's that, Homer? What's going to be all right? Well, I don't think he meant anything special, Father. Sam, how much time do you think I'd need to get an answer to my letter? Well, three or four days should be more than enough. Actually, it only takes two. Mother, what city does the lecturer live in? He doesn't live any place. He travels all over. Oh, that's too bad. Maybe that's why he didn't get your letter, Mother. He's spending all of this month in Chicago, Mary. In Chicago? Yes, Henry. On what street? What difference does it make? Alice, are you sure you addressed the envelope correctly? I'm almost positive I sent it to 721 St. Eaglestone Drive. 721? Yes, dear. What's his name? Henry. Well, Mary, can't you take an interest in this lecture, too? I'm not going to it. Oh, yes, you are, dear. We're all going. Am I going? Now, Sam, you've got to go. And ruin an entire evening? Dear, I don't care for John William Steber any more than you do. But after all, I'm chairman, and the least you can do is go in here, Steber. Steber? Steber? How would you spell a name like that? Henry, what difference does it make? Well, after all, suppose somebody came up to me and said, Did you ever hear of John William Steber, 721 St. Eagleston Drive, Chicago? I wouldn't even know how to spell it. Sam, have you been able to get them? No, Alice. The long-distance operator will call us the minute she does. Well, I'm afraid we're making a mistake. 
People who bought tickets to hear John William Steber lecture on Guatemala the Beautiful are not going to care for a lecturer on child behavior. How about getting old Uncle Jim Mercy over here on the edge of town? What for? Well, he used to put on a magic act for the children at the hospital every Christmas. Dear, let's not be ridiculous. It's better than nothing. You've got to have something when the crowd gets there Tuesday night. Let me see that letter once more. What letter? The one that came this morning from John William Steber. Here. And for as long as I live, I'll never understand how a mistake like this happened. He says, dear Mrs. Aldrich, I regret very much that I must change my plans and decline your offer to address the Centerville Women's Club Winter Forum. I enclose a letter which was apparently sent to me by mistake. Yours truly, J.W. Steber. Sam, how did I ever do a thing like that? This letter he returned was to Aunt Sue. It looks as though he dragged it out of some lake. Dear Sue, don't for heaven's sake come all the way to Centerville just to hear John William Steber next Tuesday night. Why the club ever voted to have him, I'll never know. He's a terrible bore. Yes, very well put. Sam, I don't think he had any right to turn down an important engagement just because of the petty opinion of one individual. You mean this opinion? But he had no right to read it. After all, he could see it wasn't for him. Alice, you're lucky the man isn't suing you. Father, could I have my allowance for this week, please? Your allowance, Henry? Oh, gee whiz, did Mother get a letter from... from... Did Mother get a letter? Yes, dear, from Mr. Steber. Oh, then that's not on our minds anymore. What do you mean, our minds? Well, isn't it an answer to, to... Can he come? No, dear. He's very much upset over something. In fact, I did a very absent-minded thing. What? Well, I wrote a letter to your Aunt Sue, dear, and addressed it to Mr. Steber. And he was just a little hurt. Oh. Oh. Is that the letter that you... You mean that letter? That's too bad. Yes, Henry, it is. Oh. Oh, yes. Well... Look, is there anything I can do? No, dear. What could you possibly do? Well, I feel I ought to do something. And I wish you could. Oh, here's your allowance, son. Well, on second thought, Father, I don't think I need any this week. Where are you going that you don't want any? Well, just over to see Eleanor Wentworth. Well, don't come home too late. No, Mother. Goodbye, Henry. Goodbye, and I'm certainly sorry this happened. <laughs> Don't you want to sit here on the sofa and look at these pictures with me? Pictures? These pictures. Henry, tell me. What? Are you worried about something? Oh, me? You've been sort of so preoccupied ever since you got here. I'm not preoccupied. Have you any writing paper? Any what? Writing paper. I've decided to write a letter to Chicago. Now? Yeah, I think it's something I've got to attend to. Well, I have a little, but it's pink. Well, that's all right. Gee, in a case like this, I don't think I ought to take the time to worry about the color. Oh, all right. What are you crying for? I'm not crying. Well, what have I done? I'll tell you what you've done, Henry Aldrich. I'll tell you. You asked me to save this Saturday evening for you, and ever since you've gotten here, you've hardly said ten words. I have? Yes, you have. It. And now you want to write to somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, to whom are you speaking? It's only me, Mrs. Wentworth. Oh, you wait, Henry Aldrich, and see whether I ever save you another Saturday night. But I can't help it if the women's club is expecting Guatemala, and I... And I... And then he won't come. Henry. Mother, has Henry gone crazy? No, I haven't. Aren't you going to the lecture Tuesday night? Yes. Well, that shows how much you know about it. He isn't even coming. Who isn't? Nobody. That's why my mother's got to get someone, and, and it's all on account of... On account of... My... Gee whiz, Mrs. Wentworth, I feel I ought to do something about it. Well, my gracious, why didn't you say what was on your mind, Henry? Mother, you ought to know someone. You know lots of musical people in Chicago. Well, I don't know anyone, dear, we could get on this short notice. Do you know some musical people, Mrs. Wentworth? Well, you see, Henry, I studied music right up until I was married. In fact, Henry, Mother was going to have a career in music. Only Father asked you not to. What did she play? I sang. Well, gee whiz, are you the one I always hear in church? Sort of louder than everybody else? <laughs> well, my... My voice always was noted for its body. Oh, yes. Mother, why couldn't you help the women's club out and sing? Instead of Guatemala? Oh, I don't think I should, Henry. Sure, why not? Gee whiz, my mother's desperate. Oh, now, please, Mother, I'd love to hear you sing. Eleanor, your father'd never speak to me again. All right, he doesn't have to go. I know my father won't. Uh, well, <laughs> thank you just the same, Henry, but you know how people turn up their noses in this town at home talent. Has to come from Chicago or it isn't any good. But after all, Mother, you studied in Chicago for years right on Michigan Avenue. Oh, 
Of course, the hall at the women's club is just ideally suited for my voice. It is? Oh, of course it is. And, and Mother, Mr. Dyson, who plays the organ at the church, can accompany you. Yes, dear. If I can just keep him from playing too loud. He always thinks he's the soloist. Oh, gee, I'll have my mother have a talk with him. She's chairman. She can tell him how loud to play. No, dear. No, I'll take care of that. You just ask your mother whether there's anything in particular she'd like to have me sing. Okay. Um, here, uh, let me see now. Uh, what is it you're uh, writing, Mrs. Wentworth? Here are two suggestions for her. One's French, dear, and one's Italian. That's fine. And is there any song you could sing from Guatemala? Well, as usual, the tune Henry's playing seems to be just slightly off-key. And it remains to be seen whether he'll strike any more sour notes. In the meantime, if I may, I'd like to suggest a sweet note. <clears throat> something that should strike a chord of harmony with all of you who enjoy having a good hot drink with your meals. Folks, try a steaming, fragrant cup of delicious Postum. Sugar and cream it to suit your taste. And see if you don't agree that it's tops for goodness. I'm sure you will because Golden Brown Postum gives you just what you want in a mealtime drink. Cheering warmth to give you that glowing feeling... Tempting fragrance that says, drink hearty, and best of all, Postum's really grand flavor. Just don't expect Postum to taste like coffee any more than you'd expect coffee to taste like tea. For Postum naturally is different. Its flavor is distinctive. And believe me, when you taste it, you'll say, this shouldn't be called Postum. It should be called post mm. <laughs> So tomorrow, make Postum for everyone in your family. Serve it to youngsters as well as grown-ups. And see if you don't agree that there's no hot mealtime drink quite so good as Postum for all the family. Now, getting back to the troubles of Henry Aldrich. Henry, feeling just a bit guilty because his mother is unable to get a lecturer for the women's club for next Tuesday night, has found that his girl's mother once studied music and that she is more than eager to arise to the occasion. Well, as he starts for home, he carries with him a list of songs she would be willing to sing. The scene opens late that night in the Aldrich front hall. But, Sam, I couldn't have concentrated on a game of bridge tonight if I'd had to. Well, worrying about Tuesday night's lecture isn't going to help any. Let's go up to bed. Did you lock the door, dear? Yes, dear. Henry in? Yes, dear. His coat's right here in the closet. After all, things could be worse. Why don't you simply announce that there won't be any program? Because I was asked to get someone. If we cancel it, I've utterly failed. Hey, wait a minute. What's this? What's what? This note by the telephone. A note? It's from Henry. Mother, you will be relieved to hear that Mrs. Wentworth, I think, has the solution to your program. She would like, when you can, to talk to her about it. About what? I don't know, Alice. I haven't finished. She sent along the letter that is with this, which she says you will understand. Glad you won't have to worry any more, Henry. Is this the letter she sent? Yes. Dear Mrs. Aldrich, no doubt by the time you read this, Henry will have explained everything. Here are a few suggestions for you to choose from. Don Fatale, Batty Batty, Casta Diva. Sam, what on earth? Yeah, let me see that. Don Fatale. Who's Don Fatale? And Batty Batty. Sam, did you ever hear that name before? Sounds like some opera star. Sam, I know. Those are some of Kitty's friends. She's always boasting about the people she knows. What about it? She's suggesting one of them for our program. She says right here at the top we can have our choice. Yeah? Sam, Sam, where's the phone book? Who are you going to call? Kitty, of course. At this time of night? Sam, you don't think I could sleep when I'm this excited, do you? Here. Here it is. Hello, operator? Alice, the Wentworths are probably in bed and asleep. Number, please. L-2621. I thought you didn't like Kitty Wentworth. Sam, I never said that. There are a great many things about her I haven't really cared for, but, dear, I think she has a lot more to her than people give her credit for. Joe Wentworth always said it took time to get to know her. I'm ringing your number. Just keep right on. They're probably in bed. Sam, you know I think I'll give a dinner party for Kitty and Batty Batty Tuesday night. That's the least I can do. Good idea. It'd be quite an honor to have a concert star here for dinner. Hello? Uh, is this Kitty? Oh? Kitty, this is Alice. Oh? Alice Aldrich, I just found your note along with Henry. Oh, yes. And I just want to say I'm so thrilled to think that you can help us. Oh, really, Alice? I don't know what we would have done if you hadn't come to the rescue, because we did want to have something nice. Oh, don't mention it, dear. I thought afterwards perhaps I'd taken Henry too seriously. Oh, no, you just can't realize how grateful I oh, am. Oh, no, Alice. Uh, there's just one thing, of course, Kitty, and I hope you won't be offended, but naturally, it's the fee, of course. The fee? Oh, Alice, dear, that's 
there won't be any. You mean to say there won't be any charge at all? Well, after all, I've always wanted to do something like this for the women's club. Why don't you do this if you insist, Alice? Why not give the fee you were going to pay to the church? Of course, Kitty. We could divide it among all the churches in town. Yes, dear. Well, I won't keep you up any longer, dear. Goodbye. Goodbye? Here's hoping I don't have a cold that night. What? I certainly hate to wait ten years to get a chance to sing at the women's club and then catch cold. What? But don't worry, dear. I won't let you down. Goodbye. What? Sam! Mother. Oh, thank you, Mary. You want another pillow under your head? No, thank you. Now, Mary, if I were you, I'd tiptoe back downstairs. Sam, aren't you going to eat any breakfast? I've eaten. Mother, do you mind if I ask you just one question before I go? What is it? Why aren't either of you speaking to Henry? That's just a little matter concerning us, Mary. But, Father, I'd like to know because maybe I shouldn't be speaking to him either. You shouldn't. Really? Now, just go downstairs. Yes, Father, I'll go. Aren't you going to drink your orange juice, Alice? Sam, you can look at this objectively. You can look at it as a man would. What shall I do? I have no idea. Of course, there's a lot of influenza around. I might get the Board of Health to forbid our holding the concert. Well, you can't get the Board of Health to do that. In the first place, the health commissioner is Kitty Wentworth's cousin. Well, I know what I'm going to do. What? Sam, I've been thinking things over. I have entirely too much work to do around this house. My family needs me, Sam. I'm going to resign. From what? From the women's club. Alice, you can't do that. But I've heard her sing. Alice, (laughs) Joe Wentworth has been one of my best friends for 20 years. Father. Henry, your mother would rather you did not come in. I don't want to come in, Father. I just want to ask if I may go to church. To church? Yes, sir. I think it's a very good idea. You may go with me. The only trouble is my coat. I mean... Well, that's all right. Henry, open the door a minute. Are you sure it won't bother you, Mother? Henry, what tie are you going to wear? My black one. Dear, I want you to wear your brown one. Wouldn't black be more appropriate? Now, Sam... You don't mind if when church is over, I stay for Sunday school, do you? Not at all. Now, please leave the room. Yes, sir. And then I'll come home and help Mary get dinner and rest a little this afternoon until I go back to evening service. Step along, Henry, or we'll be late. Gee, there are quite a few going to church this morning, aren't there? Yes, sir. Father, have you heard whether there's much influenza around? Oh, I understand there's some. Nothing serious, however. Oh. Father, how big is the fire escape at the woman's club? I have no idea. Gee whiz, which house is all that singing coming from? I believe that's coming from the Wentworths. From the Wentworths? You mean she's warming up already? Yes. Let's cross the street. Remember, on Wednesday night, our regular Wednesday meeting will be held at this church as usual. Miss Eleanor Wentworth handed me this next announcement just before the service began. On Tuesday evening, the Centerville Women's Club Winter Forum will contribute a part of its receipts to the town's churches. The program, instead of being Guatemala the Beautiful, will be a vocal concert sung by our own Mrs. Joseph Wentworth. Let us pray. When was that telegram sent, Alice? This morning, dear, the 20th. What does it say? Only speaker we can send you for your program tomorrow evening is Dr. Calvin Anderson Butler on subject of child behavior. Has had 11 years' experience in boys' reform schools and guarantee he will solve your problems. Please wire. Is that all? Sam, I've made up my mind. I'm going to phone Kitty Wentworth and tell her just as nicely as I know how that we do not want her to sing. But, Alice, you can't tell her that. I don't care. We're going to have Dr. Calvin Anderson Butler. Now, please. It's Elm 2621. Very well. Maybe it is for the best. No, I don't know why I didn't have enough courage to do it in the first place. I'll have a talk with Joe Wentworth. He'll understand. Hello? Hello, Eleanor. May I speak with your mother, please? Oh, she isn't here right now, Mrs. Aldrich. Well, Eleanor, when do you expect her back? I'm afraid not until sometime tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yes. She's gone to Chicago. Where? To Chicago. She wanted to get some new clothes for the concert tomorrow night. 
Really? Well, isn't that lovely, dear? Yes, and while she's there, she's going to work for a while with her old singing teacher. Oh, I see. Goodbye, Mrs. Orange. Goodbye, Eleanor. Sam. Alice, Alice, take a look at this. What is it? The morning paper. Here it is, the whole thing. Sam, it's a picture of Kitty. And look at the heading. Local thrush to replace Guatemala. <laughs> now, Alice, this is no time in which to have hysterics again. <laughs> Homer, my mother wants to know whether you'd like a little job for tonight. Doing what? Ushering. Well, I'll usher, Henry, but I won't listen. Well, that's all right. When it begins, we can sit out on the front steps. That's what my father says he's going to do. Gee, you ought to see how sore my mother is about tonight. How did your mother happen to ask Mrs. Wentworth to sing? Well, we're very fond of the whole family. Come on, let's go in the station, Homer. What for? I want to weigh myself on these scales. Here, hold my Latin. Boy, have you lost weight. Well, gee, Homer, I've had a bad week. Henry! Do you want me, Mr. Taylor? Uh, you want to earn ten cents, Henry? I've got a telegram here for Mr. Wentworth, and I haven't been able to get in touch with him. You want me to take it up to him? Sure. Here's the message, and here's your dime. Well, thank you very much. And, Henry, don't you fool around any. I think that telegram's important. Oh, you can depend on me, Mr. Taylor. I'll hold it in my hand so I can't possibly forget. Thank you very much. Hello? Centerville Station. This is Joe Wentworth speaking. Is that 320 from Chicago about on time? Say, I've been trying to get you. I just sent a telegram up to you by Henry Aldrich. A telegram? I didn't take it when it came in, but I understand it. It said your wife is stuck in Chicago without any money. Who, Kitty? It's too bad she didn't get a round-trip ticket when she bought it. What did she do, lose her purse? No, I understand she said she spent more money on clothes than she figured she would. And the telegram Henry's taking up to you has the address where you're supposed to wire the money. I see. Well, thank you very much. Sorry I can't get to your wife's concert tonight, Mr. Wentworth. Seems my wife uh, forgot we had a previous engagement. Mm, too bad. Oh, uh, by the way, do you see those two boys coming up Main Street? Yes, sir. One of them isn't Henry Aldrich, is it? I believe it is. Oh, yes, 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 so it is. Well, I guess I'll be stepping down Walnut for something. Look, Homer, look, there he is in front of the filling station. Where? Right there, getting his tank filled. And Homer, he sees us. Wave to him. Oh, Mr. Wentworth, oh, Mr. Wentworth! What's the matter with him, Henry? He's driving right off. Well, gee whiz, I could have sworn he looked straight at us. Boy, am I getting sick of this, Henry. We haven't been looking for him for so long, Homer. Only about two hours. Sure. At the rate of five cents an hour. From now on, we work for nothing. Well, I don't understand why we didn't catch up with him this time. He looked right at us again and then beat it into this drugstore. Maybe he's getting blind, Henry. Well, look... Just so he doesn't miss us again, I'll go in this door, and you slip around the corner and go in the side door. Okay. We've got him cornered, Homer, and we haven't anything more to worry about. Tickets, please. Tickets, please. The program started yet, Henry? Yes, Mrs. Thompson. It's been going on for some time. Very many in there? Oh, gee, practically every seat's taken. In fact, I'm afraid you'll have to stand. Is that so? Just a second. If you don't mind going in real quietly, I'll open the door for you. All right, Henry. And so far, ladies and gentlemen, I have given you only the basic fundamentals of our subject for this evening, child behavior. During my first three years at the head of a reform school... He's pretty good, isn't he, Henry? Not bad. I think everybody's having a good time, don't you, Homer? My father even came when he heard what the subject was. Program started, boys. Well, gee whiz, Mr. Wentworth, where did you come from? Mm, Nowhere in particular. Did your father meet the speaker? Yes, sir, and I've got a telegram here I've been trying to give you ever since 3 o'clock this afternoon. A telegram? Yes, sir, and they said it was very urgent. Yes? Uh, All right to go in this door here? But aren't you going to read it? I'll read it later. I want to hear the lecture. And I want to thank you for delivering it, Henry. I thank you very much. Oh, I don't know whether you can get a seat in there or not. I think I can. Your father said he'd save one for me. Oh, have you seen him? Had a little talk with him this afternoon. And you parents who hesitate in giving your children responsibility should realize that although there is a certain amount of risk involved, in the end, our youngsters do somehow manage to get things done. It may not be in a straight line, but I have yet to see it fail when they didn't eventually get there. 
You know, Henry, that fellow ought to do a lot of good in this town. Let's step out and get some fresh air. That's what I say. They say they took in enough money so that every church in town can get a new window. Stained? Sure. Gee, that makes me feel pretty good. You talk as though you'd done the whole thing, Henry. Well, of course, I'm not entirely responsible, Homer, but I've sort of contributed my share. Henry Aldrich will be back in just a moment. In the meantime, friends, remember your two best reasons for drinking Postum are these. Because if coffee makes you nervous, Postum can't possibly affect your nerves. And because Postum really does taste swell, it's a grand, flavorful drink for all the family. So get Postum from your grocer tomorrow. Our program tonight has come to you from the Philadelphia Forum. Listen again next week to the Aldrich family, same time, same station, for another sparkling half hour with your favorite youngster, his family, and his pals. The Aldrich family, starring Ezra Stone, is written by Clifford Goldsmith. Original music is composed and conducted by Jack Miller. This is Harry Von Zell saying you will enjoy fragrant, flavorful Postum. And remember, Postum contains no stimulants. It cannot make you nervous. Good night. by Clifford Goldsmith. Entertainment for all the family, brought to you by Postum, a tempting, wholesome drink for all the family. Postum. Have you noticed, friends, how a mother can sing as simple a melody as that to a baby? And very often, even before she's finished the song, that baby is sunk in sweet, sound slumber. But as we grow older, many of us lose the ability to slip off to sleep quickly. And isn't that particularly true about some of you who drink coffee? For coffee does keep many people awake, even though others can drink it without ill effect. If you happen to be one of the wakeful ones, it might be sensible to switch to Postum, which contains no caffeine or other stimulant. Nothing at all that can possibly rob you of sleep. Postum has a grand flavor, you know. Rich, full-bodied. The kind of drink that makes you fairly expand with satisfaction. So if you think coffee disturbs your sleep, start now to make Postum your regular mealtime drink instead of coffee. Give it a fair trial. And then see if you're not pleased as punch that you switched. First, because you're sleeping so much better. And second, because Postum is such a really swell drink. A boy is a boy, and that's all there is to it. He gets into difficulties somehow, and he gets out of them somehow, like Henry Aldrich. But what happens in between is usually unforgettable. The scene opens at the Aldrich dinner table. Will you have another piece of cherry pie, Sam? No, thank you, Alice. Sam, are you upset about something? Who, I, Alice? No, what makes you think I'm upset? Well, dear, you've hardly spoken during this entire dinner. Well, frankly, I don't for the life of me see why you had to invite Homer over here for dinner and to spend the night. Sam, I had to. His mother and father have gone over to Abbott City. And besides, one more person certainly isn't going to make any great difference. But, Alice, do you realize it's 20 minutes after 8 and we're finishing dinner and Henry and Homer haven't even shown up yet? Yes, dear, and I'm going to speak to both of them. Although the only thing I feel bad about is these potato pancakes. And that's another thing, Alice. 
how did we happen to have potato pancakes? Well, I was going to have cream cauliflower, but Homer says he doesn't eat it. That's still no excuse for, for potato pancakes. Sam, they're one of Homer's favorite dishes. That's also why I went to the trouble of making a cherry pie. Homer loves cherries. Then I say the least he could have done was to have been here in time to eat them. Just where are the boys? Can't we phone them someplace? Well, I don't know where they are. They left here right after school and went out to sell war bonds. They're selling war bonds? Yes, dear. They've both been made Minutemen? Minutemen? Well, they're an hour and a quarter late. <laughs> Alice, how do you know something hasn't happened to them? Now, Sam, just be sensible. They certainly aren't very far away. Oh, that may be Henry right now. He wants you to come and get him someplace. You tell Henry that wherever he is, he's to start for home at once. Yes, dear. Hello? Yes, Mrs. Kendall, this is Mrs. Aldrich. Oh, really? Really, this afternoon? You don't say so. Well, Mrs. Kendall, I'll tell him. Thank you for calling. Goodbye. Alice, did you tell him his dinner's getting cold? Uh, Sam, that was Mrs. Kendall, and she's terribly upset. Yes? What's the trouble? Well, she just discovered Henry made out a war bond pledge for her to sign, and she thought it was for a hundred dollars, and it was for a thousand. Yes? And he also left one of his fur-lined gloves there. At the Kendall's? Alice, the Kendall's live at least a mile and a half out of town. Yes, dear, on the north road. But a mile and a half isn't so far. I know, but it started to snow. It's snowing hard, and I say they ought to be here. Did you get your folks, Henry? No, Homer. Gee, was the line still busy? Boy. Every time I call them, it seems to be busy. Boys, we just had a phone call for you. You did, Mrs. Cooper, from my father? From your father? No, for Mrs. Snyder. She lives about a mile on up the road. Mrs. Snyder? Yes, yeah, she called to ask whether you know you left one of your overshoes at her house. We did. Oh, boy, look, it's mine. Now, listen, homie, you're getting more darn careless. Well, I can't remember everything, Henry. I have to carry all our pencils and all our bond information, don't I? Say, aren't you boys sort of hungry? Hungry? I've got some nice corned beef and cabbage out in the kitchen. I could warm up for you. Oh, no, Henry's mother has a swell dinner waiting for us. She fixed some potato pancakes and a cherry pie, just because I like them. Potato pancakes and cherry pie? Sure. As a matter of fact, I like any kind of cherries, just so long as they're canned. Well, you're easy to please, aren't you? Good, Jane. Yes, well, I'll be right there. Henry, don't you think you ought to try phoning your folks again? Well, I'll try, Homer. But my folks know we're out selling bonds, and if they aren't worried, why should we get upset? <laughs> Alice, if that's the boys, I want to speak to them. Hello? Yes, this is Samuel Aldrich. Who is it, Sam? It's long distance. Oh, my goodness. Hello? Sam, who is it? Hello? Alice, it's Homer's mother. Oh, my goodness, from way over in Abbott City? Yes, Elizabeth, Homer's fine. No, he's no trouble at all. Mrs. Aldrich made some potato pancakes for him tonight, and... And you want to speak to them? Well, Elizabeth, right this minute, he's... Uh, uh, he and Henry stepped out for a few minutes, but there's nothing to worry about. I don't think. Yes, Elizabeth. We'll see that he wears his overshoes. Yes, goodbye. Sam, do you realize it's going on nine o'clock? Well, what if it is? But don't you realize it's snowing out and Henry has only one glove? I know it, Alice, but you told me not to worry. Dear, if Elizabeth Brown was worried enough to call all the way from Abbott City, it seems to me the least you can do is worry a little. Sam, let me answer it. I'll see who it is. Hello? Yes, this is Mrs. Aldrich. Yes, Mr. Edmonds. My goodness, two hours ago? His earmuffs? Well, thank you so much. Goodbye. Where is he? Henry left his earmuffs at the Edmonds out on the North Road nearly two hours ago. At the Edmonds? That means they're getting farther and farther away from home. And Sam, just listen to that wind howl out there. Well, I know what I'm going to do. Sam, where are you going? Get my hat and coat. You mean you're going to look for them? But, Sam, do you think you can drive the car through this snowstorm? Now, don't worry about me, Alice. It's the boys you've got to think about. Those boys comfortable in the other room, Jane? Yes, Will. And, Will, don't say anything, but I'm going to surprise them. Yes? Yeah. I'm going to fix them some potato pancakes and open a can of cherries. Yeah. Was that all? Well, one of them says it's all he ever eats. Yes? Yeah. Mr. Cooper? Yes, sir, I'll be right there. Uh, Mr. Cooper, are you sure your phone works all right? I don't know why it shouldn't. 
Uh, you boys wouldn't like to stay overnight, would you? Oh, no. No, thanks. If we don't get home before long, my, my folks might begin to wonder where we are. Sorry we couldn't buy a bond from you boys. If we only had some way to get our cow into town and sell her, I'd be able to buy one. You would, Mr. Cooper? Yeah, but my truck's broken down. Well, Henry, why couldn't we help him get his cow into town? Sure. We could walk her in for you. Well, if you want to come out and get her someday, she's right out there in the barn. And you'll buy a war bond? We'll turn every cent we can get for her into bonds. Will, where's the can opener? Uh, just a minute, Jane. I'll be right there. Boy, Henry, I'll bet if we could sell that cow, we'd get $50 for her. 50 Homer. 50 Are you crazy? Is that too much for a good cow? Too much, Homer. Gee whiz, I heard of a cow once selling for $1,000. 1000 Or maybe it was two or 3000 just an ordinary cow? What do you mean, ordinary? She gave something like five tons of butter a year. Does that sound very ordinary? Five tons of butter? Sure. Are you sure it was butter? Homer, the point is we can sell Mr. Cooper a bond. Oh. Well, listen, Henry, is that the wind I hear outside? Boy, we ought to be getting started for home. What do you say we take a look out the front door? Put your things on first, Homer. I'm putting them on. I'm putting them on. Come on, let's take a look out here. Oh, boy. Henry, do you think we ought to go home tonight? We've got to. Don't you realize we're going to sell more bonds tomorrow, and we've got to get an early start? Well, that's true. Well, let's get started. Oh, Mrs. Cooper. Mrs. Cooper! Mr. Cooper! I wonder where they are. Henry, don't leave that door open like that. Close it and come on. Okay. Now, don't push me, Homer. I'm not pushing you. I'm just hanging on to you. Listen, Homer, I've got an idea. Boy, if we can do it. Good evening, Mrs. Edmonds. Oh, good evening, Mr. Aldrich. What are you doing way out here? Come on in out of the snow. Thank you. Thank you. I understand Henry and a friend of his were out here, and I... Thought you might give me some information as to which way they went. Well, as I recall it, they were here about six o'clock. Mr. Edmonds bought a bond from them. Oh, and incidentally, here are Henry's earmuffs. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you. But I have no idea as to which direction they went from here, Mr. Aldrich. No. Do you mind if I use your phone, Mrs. Edmonds? No, help yourself. It's right here. Thanks. Hello? Number, please. Elm 303. Elm 303? Please. You mean your boy's lost? Oh, uh, no. No, Henry isn't lost, but it's getting on toward ten o'clock, and naturally we will feel more comfortable. Hello? If... Hello, is this you, Alice? Yes, dear. Where are you? I'm out at the Edmonds. Well, my goodness, Sam, they announced on the radio that the storm was getting worse and the cars were getting stuck. And I phoned for a tow truck to go out and find you. Alice, why did you do that? Because I hadn't heard from you, Sam. Did you find the boy? Uh, no, Alice, I thought that maybe by this time you'd have some word from them. Well, I've had one phone call, Sam, from the Joneses. The Joneses? They live out on the North Road. And Mr. Jones says Henry and Homer had been there and that after they left, he found an automatic pencil with your name on it. My pencil? Yes, dear. Well, that's a fine thing. Now, listen, I'm going to have a talk with Henry. Now, dear, let's not worry about a pencil at a time like this. Let's find the boys. All right. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. Mrs. Edmonds. Yes, Mr. Aldrich. Which direction do the Joneses live from here? Well, you want to go on out this road about two more miles. Two miles? Yes. Are the boys out there? No, but they've been out that way. Mr. Aldrich, I've just been talking with Mr. Edmonds, and he's going to take his car and work in the other direction. You sure it won't be too much trouble? No, not at all. He went to bed a little early tonight, but just as soon as he gets his clothes on, he'll be starting. Oh, thanks. <sighs> Some night out. Mr. Aldrich, don't you want me to get you a paper bag to put those earmuffs in? No, thank you. I'll put them right on. <laughs> Is this some night, Homer? Keep your head down, Henry, and sort of walk backwards. What do you think I'm doing? Boy! Henry, look ahead. There's a truck or something. Where? Right down the road. It's just standing there. Oh, boy! Come on! I'm coming. There's only so fast I can go, though, Henry. Gee whiz, I'm not Hercules. Look, Homer, it's a tow truck. Hey, mister! Mister! Who's that? It's us! Can you give us a lift, please? Okay, if I can get out of this drift here. Well, gee whiz, are you going all the way into Centerville? Yep, just as soon as I find a car I'm out looking for. Hop on the back. Well, look, uh, do you have room for a cow on your truck? What's that? We've got this cow, see? We're taking her into town for a guy, and we're going to surprise him. You what? Oh! 
Brown? Sure. He wants to buy a barn. Say, ain't she cold? Oh, gee, no. We got two blankets tied around her. Jane, how are you coming? Shall I tell the boys to come into their supper? Not for another minute, Will. I want to get these potato pancakes a little bit browner. I knew all the time we'd find a can of cherries down the cellar. Just a case of our keeping on, we located them. Mm -hmm. Didn't I hear Bess mooing when we came up from the cellar? What if you did? She's all right. She's good and warm out there in the barn. Of course she is. She likes the cold. All right, Will. You better call them. Uh, Boys, Mrs. Cooper has a little surprise for you. Boys. Tell them to hurry right up, Will. Uh, Boys. Oh, boys. Come on. Come with Henry. You know, Henry, she isn't a bad cow, is she? No, she isn't. And I think she likes walking better than she did riding on that truck. Boy, that wasn't a lot of work. Just nicely got her on the darn thing, and he runs right into another drift. That driver was a nice guy, though. It was very decent of him to promise to buy a bond from us. Wait a second, Henry. Wait a second. What's the matter? Have... Have we gotten off the road a little? Oh, boy, where'd this snowdrift come from? Now, wait, Homer. Get around on the other side of her and we'll try to back her out. Oh, wait a second, Henry, wait a second. I think she's getting cold around the ears. Well, what are you going to do? Tie my muffler around her head, what do you think? Well, gee whiz, that's a good idea. Then she'll be really comfortable. This is Mrs. Aldrich's residence. Why, no, Mr. Kilmer, I haven't heard a word from Sam. Yes, Mr. Kilmer, they went right out on the north road. Well, if you don't mind taking your car out on a night like this, I'd certainly appreciate it. Gee, Homer, it's nice and warm in here. Yeah, boy. Imagine finding a roadside stand open this time of night. Boy, I wish we had a little money with us. I'll say. Something smells good, doesn't it? Homer, are you sure you tied Bess real tight? Sure, I tied her with a special slip knot I learned from a guy. She ought to be very comfortable where we left her. There isn't any wind there or anything. Something I can do for you, boy? Oh, why, no, ma'am. We just... uh, We couldn't have a sort of a drink of water, could we? A drink of water? Yeah, we've been out in that darn storm, and, and are we thirsty? Which way are you driving? We're not driving, we're walking. Walking? Yeah, we've been selling war bonds, and, and I guess we got a little further out than we thought we had. You've been selling bonds? Yeah. Had any dinner? Uh, no, ma'am. That's why we'd sort of appreciate a glass of water, if it wouldn't be too much trouble. Well, you certainly ought to have something to eat. I'll be glad to fix you up. Free of charge, free of charge. You want a hamburger and some soup? A hamburger? The only thing is... You don't have any potato pancakes, do you? Potato pancakes? And canned cherries. I sort of had my mind made up for those all day. Potato pancakes? And do you have any hay? Any hay? Sure, for best. She's outside. Henry, she wouldn't want some corn, too, would she? No, Homer. It might upset her. Well, I can get you the potato cakes and the cherries, but I can't get you the rest. Well, that's all right. I think Bess had a little supper before we left anyhow. Say, hey, boys, have either of you got a shotgun? What's that? A shotgun? Yeah, yeah, there's a moose outside here. Gee whiz, a moose! Yeah, it's daylight, son. First it made a noise like a cow, and then as it swung around the building here and headed out toward the road, I saw it was a big, shaggy moose. Homer, come on! Listen, Henry, I'm not going to chase any moose. Where'd it go, mister? Where'd it go? He headed right up the road there. Homer, aren't you coming? That's best! Come on! <laughs> I don't know. It begins to look as if Homer Brown would never get those potato pancakes, doesn't it? On the other hand, by the time he and Henry plow through another mile or two of cold and snow, they may be lots more interested in something good and hot to drink. And that could very well be Postum. For Postum is certainly a good drink, 
and served piping hot in the cup with cream or top milk added to taste, Postum has a look that says, Drink Me, in capital letters. And as for taste, it's my opinion there isn't a mealtime drink made that can beat that tantalizing goodness, that lusty, robust Postum flavor, a flavor that's really distinctive, really unusual. Now, that means you mustn't expect when you try it that Postum is going to taste like coffee any more than you'd expect coffee to taste like tea. Remember, Postum has its own special goodness. And like as not, when you've once discovered how very good that is, you and Postum will be mealtime partners the rest of your days. So tomorrow, get Postum at your grocer's. And tomorrow night, get set to enjoy one of America's great mealtime drinks, Postum. Now, getting back to the troubles of Henry Aldrich. Henry and his friend Homer, outselling war bonds, have been unable to get back home in time for dinner because of a heavy blizzard. The scene opens on a road some distance outside Centerville. The time is very late at night. Aren't you Mr. Aldrich from Centerville? I am. Well, guess you're the fellow I was sent out to tow in. Oh, yeah? How'd you get your car sideways across the road like this? Well, I've been out looking for my son and a friend of his, and I was driving along, and I know you won't believe me, but coming right up the road toward me, I saw a bear. What's that? A big black bear. He was walking on all fours, and I jammed on the brakes and swerved around like this. Well, Mr. Aldridge, there aren't any bears in this part of the country. That's what I thought, but I saw it with my own eyes. What's that, another car trying to get by? Hey, what's the trouble there? There's a fella here says he was just attacked by a bear. What's that? Look, while you're hooking on, I'll go into this roadside stand here and phone my wife. Hey. Something I can do for you? Uh, good evening. Uh, you have a telephone here? Sure, right over there by that jukebox. Well, by the way, you couldn't be fixing something up for me that's hot, could you? Well, I've got a special on tonight. Potato pancakes. Potato pancake. No, thanks. I'll just telephone. <laughs> Boy, am I cold. Mother will fix us up with something right away. Mother! Mrs. Aldrich! Mother! Father! She was... Do you suppose they've gone out? Come on, Henry. Let's see what's out in the kitchen. You know, I think Bess is going to be very comfortable where we left her. I don't know why she shouldn't be. Look, Homer, look in the icebox. Your favorite food. What is it, Henry? What is it? Potato pancakes. And boy, do I like them cold. And look, Homer, there's half a cherry pie there. Oh, boy, we'll split it, Henry. Here, put it on here over on the kitchen table. Okay. Oh, boy, what a dinner. Oh, boy. Now, listen, Homer, when you cut that pie, at least use a knife. It breaks all right, Henry. It breaks very nicely. <laughs> Hand me a potato pancake. Don't bother me, Homer. I, I just found something. What? A note here. It's for my father. It says, Sam, Harriet called and thinks they might have gone to the movies. Have gone down to the movies to look. Who wrote it? My mother. Who do you think? Boy, I wonder if it's a good picture she's seen. Aren't you going to eat anything, Henry? Here, Homer, use a fork. Remember, you're a guest. I don't need a fork. I'll just roll them up and slip them in. Answer the phone, will you, while I catch up with you. Okay. Homer, won't you please hurry? I'm going to answer it, Henry. I've got to get my mouth emptied first, though. Hello? Who? Well, this is Homer Brown. Oh, gee whiz, is that you, Mother? Sure, this is Homer. Well, I haven't been any place. Oh, we got a cow, see? <laughs> a cow! We're going to turn it into war bonds. <laughs> No, Mr. and Mrs. Aldrich aren't here. They've gone to the movies. Sure. And in a few minutes, I'm going to bed. Sam, is that you? Yes, Alice. My goodness, dear, where have you been? Where have I been? Where have I been? Where are the boys? Haven't you found them? No, Alice. All I found were these earmuffs, this overshoe, and my pencil. Where were you when I was trying to phone you? Sam, didn't you get my note? What note? Oh, of course you didn't, dear. How could you? I've been down to the movies. 
You went to the movies? Yes, dear, and I just called Harriet and gave her a piece of my mind. What about? She gets the silliest ideas, Sam. First she called me and said she thought she'd seen the boys going to the movies earlier in the evening. And now what do you think she says? What? She says there's a story going around that somebody saw a bear out on the edge of town. What's wrong with that? What? I saw a bear myself. Now, Sam. I did, Alice. That's how I got stuck. Has something gone wrong with the car? No, it's all right now. I've got it out in front. And what I want to know is where I'm going to look for the boys next. Alice. Do you hear what I just heard? No, dear. What was it? Well, I'm not sure, but it sounded like a cow. Now, Sam, first you see a bear, and then you come home and hear cows. I don't know what it is I hear, but it's certainly something, and I'm going out to see what it is. But, Sam! Hello? What's that, Mrs. Edmonds? Mr. Edmonds is back home? He had to leave his car on a hill. Oh, isn't that a shame? Mr. Aldrich left what at your place? His scarf? Well, thank you so much for calling. Mother! Goodbye. Mother, is that you down there? Henry Aldrich, where are you? She was. I've been in bed. Did you see a good picture? Henry, what's happened to Homer? Oh, me, Mrs. Aldrich. I'm all right. I just have a little stomach ache. For some reason, Mother, we weren't able to get to sleep. May I ask where you've been? Selling bonds, Mother. And it looks as though we're going to break all the records. Boy, I'll say. We sold a bond to darn near every place we went to. But, dear... Oh, but... gee, look at my earmuffs. Did I leave these here before I start off today? Henry, your father found those. Father? Where is he? He's outside, dear. And when he comes in, I wouldn't bother him very much. Is something wrong with him, Mrs. Aldrich? He's tired, Homer. Very tired. And so much on edge, he even thinks he hears a cow. A cow, Mother? Yes, dear. He just stepped out to look for one. Gee whiz, Henry. Do you suppose Bess is calling us? Who? Bess, Mother. Bess. Our war bond cow. Sure, Mrs. Aldrich. We're going to surprise a farmer. Surprise a what? A farmer, Mother. We're going to sell his cow for him. Where? Where? Henry, where is the cow? Out in the garage. In the garage? Sure, we brought her all the way into town. Through this door? Yes, Mother, but we kept her good and warm. And we now have a cow out in our garage? Sure, we even gave her some oatmeal. Boy, did she lap it up. (laughs) Now, dear, oatmeal. Sure, Mother, we even put some milk on it. Milk? You gave her some of our milk? Oh, no, Mrs. Aldrich. We drew some off of her and poured it on the oatmeal. Well, boys, if I were you, I'd go back upstairs before your father comes in. Right now? Right now. Will you promise to call us, Mrs. Aldrich, if he feels best wants us? Yes, dear. Come on, Homer. As a matter of fact, I'm beginning to feel the strain a little myself. Same here. At least I want to lie down. Alice! Uh, Yes, Sam? I know you'll say I'm seeing things, but there is a cow in our garage. Well, yes, dear, of course there is. What's that? The boys put her there. What boys? Henry and Homer, they're upstairs in bed. Why didn't you tell me? What did they bring a cow home for? Well, Sam... Of all... Now, Sam, where are you going? I'm going up and have a talk with them. Now, Sam, come back here. What for? Don't you realize those boys have been selling bonds all day? That's no excuse, Alice. Think of what I've been through tonight. But do you think of what they've been through, too? They sold a bond at every house they went to. Yes? And that cow, Sam, that upset you so. Do you realize what that cow is? What? A war bond pledge. What's that? Yes, dear. And they led her all the way back to town through this storm and everything. They hadn't even had supper. My goodness, Sam, don't you realize what that means? But, Alice, they might have given us a little consideration. Sam, they hadn't even given themselves consideration. There's only one thing that was important, and that was to sell just as many bonds as they possibly could. That's the only spirit with which we're going to win this whole war. Well... Mother! Yes, dear? Could you come take a look at Homer? At Homer? Yes, please. He's beginning to think the cherries in that pie weren't pitted. Friends, you can get Postum in two forms, Postum and Instant Postum. Instant Postum is the quick and easy way to make one cup or six. Because Instant Postum dissolves instantly in your cup by just adding boiling water. No matter which form of Postum you choose, however, you can count on enjoying a delightful and distinctive treat. For Postum is one of America's great mealtime drinks. Here you are, 
are, Mrs. Cooper. Yes, Mr. Holdridge. Here's the money the boys got when they sold your cow. Well, thank you. And now you can sign a pledge for a bond. Well, it certainly was nice of you to drive all the way out here. Won't you stay and have a little bite of lunch with us? Can we, Father? Why, fine, fine. All right, I'll go out to the kitchen and put the potato pancakes on. Potato pancakes? Now, wait. Listen again next week, same time, same station, for another sparkling half hour with your favorite youngster, his family, and his pals. The Aldridge Family is written by Clifford Goldsmith. The original musical score is conducted by Jack Miller. And this is Dan Seymour saying, Your host tonight is Postum, and Postum is one of America's great mealtime drinks. It's good drinking. Good night. <laughs> Puddings present... Henry! Henry Aldrich! Coming, Mother. The Aldrich Family, based on characters originated by Trisha Goldsmith, and starring Ezra Stone as Henry with Jackie Kelk as Homer. Brought to you by Jell-O Puddings. Just a taste of Jell-O Puddings, and believe me, you will know, they are made by famous J-E-L-L-O. Yes, Jell-O puddings, those old-time, all-time favorites you've always known and loved. All three so rich and distinctive, so creamy smooth, with an old-fashioned homemade goodness. There's Jell-O chocolate pudding, rich, dark, and luscious. There's buttery brown sugar butterscotch, and creamy rich vanilla, a trio of treats. They're made with milk and nourishing. They cook to perfection in just about five minutes. And all three Jell-O puddings are so gloriously good, you'll say you never tasted anything better. And now for the Aldrich family. There's something about a teenage boy that makes all of us laugh, and remember, and live again the days of our youth. And if he's a typical teenager like Henry Aldrich, it's always a pleasure to join him in the joys and misadventures that were ours when we were young. It's evening. The scene is the Aldrich living room. Father, may I just point out one thing? What? It's only seven fifty. And do you realize how much a new suit of clothes would cost? You want a new suit of clothes? No, sir. I'd rather have a school ring. Henry, for the last time, I'm not buying you a school ring. Now, I'd like to read my paper. But, Father, everybody in school is getting one. All the kids I know just went home and asked for money, and their father said, Sure, gee whiz, you're welcome to it, and just forked over. I see. But I appreciate your being economical, Father. Gee, if you didn't pinch pennies around here, you wouldn't have any bank account at all. Well, I'm glad you realize that. You've filled up quite a nice bank account that way, haven't you, Father? I have. So you really wouldn't miss seven fifty, would you? <laughs> Henry, if you think I'm going to hand over seven fifty for a ring that you wind up giving to some girl... Father, whatever gave you an idea like that? Gee, the rings are solid gold with our school crest on them, in two colors. Why would I give a thing like that to a girl? I don't know, son, but we all do. You mean you once gave a ring to a girl? <laughs> Henry, I'm trying to read my paper. Oh. But, Father, I haven't told you why I really need it. You haven't? You see, the teachers all feel that we need something to keep up our morale. Just imagine you're sitting in history class, see, and you're bored stiff. And you just happen to glance down and, at your ring. And it's got your good old school crest on it. And, boy, you want to stand up and cheer. That's very interesting. Go on. And then you think of how much Central High means to you. And it all comes back that you're there to get an education. Yes, so you pile into your history like a ton of bricks, and you wind up first in your class. Everybody winds up first? Oh, no, sir, just me. Oh. So can I please have a school ring? No. Father, have you thought of this? Henry, have you thought of this? If I bought you that ring, you wouldn't have it a week before it would be lost. Lost, Father? Lost? How could I lose it when it's on my finger? What about that fountain pen I bought you last month? You wanted to know how you could lose that when it was clipped to your jacket. Well, I didn't lose that pen, Father. No? I just lost the jacket. <laughs> I see. And I couldn't very well lose my finger. 
Henry, I'm not going to argue. The point is, until your memory improves, I'm not buying you another thing. Oh, my memory, Father. Is that all that's worrying you? Is that all? Henry, do you realize how important memory is? Sure, Father. And from now on, you're going to see a big change in me. Good. Boy, I'm going to remember every single thing I can lay my mind on. For instance, do you know what year the Battle of Waterloo was fought? What year? I'll go and look it up. <laughs> you wait there, Father, and I'll... Henry, look out. Gee, I'm sorry, Mother. Did I knock you over? Not quite. My goodness, Sam, what's he so excited about? Alice, I'm supposed to be a good lawyer, but I'd hate to come up against Henry in court. He does have a way with him, doesn't he? He does indeed. It's about that school ring. Sam, why don't you get it for him? I am going to get it for him for a Christmas present. Oh, but I'm not sure I'll be able to hold out that long. May I have the toast, please, Mother? Yes, dear. Some more coffee, Sam? Just half a cup, please. Why isn't Henry down for breakfast? Me, he'll be right down. My, isn't this a lovely morning? Mother, is there anything we can do about Henry this evening? How do you mean, dear? Well, with Joe Graham coming and everything... I don't want Henry coaxing for that ring all through dinner. Joe will think we haven't got a cent. Well, if Joe's interested only in your money, you might as well find it out right now. Oh, Father. Anyway, Mary, about that ring, your father's decided... Uh, Alice. What, dear? Now, Mary, will you uh, please run out to the kitchen and fry me another egg? All right, Father. Sam, what's the matter? I don't want Mary to know I'm getting Henry that ring. She's sure to let the cat out of the bag. Oh, yes, dear, perhaps you're right. My, I can't wait to see Henry's face on Christmas morning. The only thing is, have you any idea how we can get his finger size? Sam, I thought you were going to measure his finger last night when he was asleep. I did, but something went wrong. What happened, dear? Well, I got the string nicely knotted around his finger, and just as I went to cut it, he rolled over. On the scissors? No, Alice, on the string. His hand disappeared under his chest someplace, and every time I tried to get it, he just giggled. Sam. What? Here he comes. Oh. Alice, this is a grand breakfast. Good morning, Mother. Good morning, dear. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Henry. Well, goodbye. Henry, what do you mean, goodbye? What about your breakfast? I don't feel like any breakfast, Mother. Henry, don't be silly. I couldn't eat a bit, Father. Honest, I'm too... I'm not hungry. Hey, Henry. I'm coming, Homer. Henry, you can't go to school without eating. I'll eat an apple on the way. You are, Henry. And eat an apple right in front of me? Come on, honey. <laughs> Boy, you might worry. Well, don't worry about it. If you haven't got two apples, she all understand. Homer, do you remember me saying anything about something my father asked me to do? What? You see the string tied on my finger? Well, I woke up this morning and there it was, and I can't remember what I tied it on there for. <laughs> well, that's easy, Henry. It was to remind you to do something. Sure it was. But I can't remember what. I can't even remember tying it on. Henry, you're in bad shape. I'll say. Right on top of my father lecturing me about my memory. Was it something you had to do for somebody else? Yeah. It must have been something for my father. He's the only one I was talking to last night. Concentrate, Henry. Concentrate. I'll say. Gee whiz, if I can't remember what it is, my father will never buy me that ring. <laughs> Didn't your father say anything at dinner about you not doing it? No, Homer. That's the awful part of it. He just looked at me. He did? Well, that's terrible. All through dinner tonight, when he wasn't talking to Joe Graham, he just kept staring at me. At my hands. Your hands? Sure. He's so mad he can't look me straight in the eye. <laughs> I wish I could help you out, Henry. Say, maybe you could. My father's in the living room with Josie. Suppose you go in and ask him if there's anything he'd like you to do. Henry, are you crazy? What if there is? Well, he might ask you to do the thing I'm supposed to remember to do. Then I'll do it. Well, okay, you stay here. Don't act suspicious, though, Homer. I won't. Oh, my work's going just fine, thank you, Mr. Aldrich. Well, I'm glad to hear it, Joe. Oh, Homer. Oh, by the way, Mr. Aldrich, is there any little thing you'd like me to do? No, thank you. You can't think of a thing? <laughs> Not a single thing. That's funny. And now, Homer, I have something I'd like to discuss with Joe here. Sure, Mr. Aldrich. And if you think of anything, I wish you'd let me know. Nice boy. Yes. Now, Joe, here's what I want to ask you. I'm getting Henry a school ring for a Christmas present. I want to make sure I get it before they're all gone. 
Yes, but here's the catch. It has to be picked up in person at the school, and I don't want Henry or any of his friends to see me down there. They might suspect something. Oh, I understand, Mr. Alder. And I wonder, Joe, if you'd mind running over to Central High tomorrow and getting one of those rings for me. Oh, no, sir. I wouldn't mind a bit. Oh, that's fine. Uh, another thing. I'd rather you didn't mention this to Mary. I want to be sure Henry no, doesn't find I, out, and I, I don't think... know. Oh, don't let me disturb you, Mr. Aldrich. Homer, what are you doing? Wait, I tell you, I just thought I'd straighten this plant a little. Go right on with what you were saying, Mr. Aldrich. Uh, Homer, I don't want to seem rude, but can't you please run along? Sure, Mr. Aldrich. Uh, just as soon as I tie my shoelace. You just forget I'm in the room. How can I do that? Well, I'll tie it real quietly. Well, you just... Homer, will you please leave? Oh, gee whiz, I'd be glad to. And now then, Mr. Oh, uh, wait a minute, Joe. Oh, boy. Did you find out, Homer? Did you find out what they were talking about? Boy, Henry, is your father unreasonable? You mean he's mad? I'll say. And all I could find out is he's asking Joe to do something for him. He is? Oh, boy, that means he's really mad. Homer, you stay here. I'll get Mary to help me. Mary! I'm in the dining room, Henry, and please don't bother me. I'm trying to get these dishes cleared away. Mary, you... You've got more influence with Joe Graham than I have. Won't you please ask him a simple question for me? What question? Just call him in here and ask him what father's been talking to him about. My goodness, is father talking about me? About you? Henry, he hasn't been showing Joe that photograph album, has he? Why, you... Oh, my goodness, Joe! I'll wait out here in the hall. Did you call me, Mary? Yes, I... Uh... I thought you might like to keep me company while I wash the dishes. Well, I guess I could. Uh, the only thing is, your father and I were... were... What, Joe? Nothing. Joe, you started to say something. What were you and father talking about? I'm sorry, Mary. I'd like to tell you, but I can't. You mean it's a surprise? No, that's what it is. But Joe, isn't that sweet? I just love surprises. What's that? Oh, uh, Joe. Uh, yes, Mr. Aldrich. Uh, one more thing about that ring, about getting the size. Oh, Mary. Father, did you say... Did you say... Mary, just forget what I said. Of course, Father, I didn't hear a thing. <laughs> Joe, could you come back into the living room a minute? Yes, Joe, you just go on. And my goodness, you talk as long as you want about... About... Thanks, Mary. Uh, what were you going to say, Mr. Alder? Wait until I close the door. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness, an engagement ring. Mother! Yes, dear? Mother, come here. You have all the plates set. Mother, I'm so happy I could die. I can hardly believe it. Believe what? My goodness, after all these years, I thought it was never going to happen. Dear, what on earth are you talking... Mary, no. Mother, yes. What? To Joe Graham. He's in there right now talking to Father. Mary. Mary, my little girl. <laughs> Mary, <laughs> of course not, dear. Mary, I want you to know how happy I am for you. Now I think I'd like to go and get something out of my eye. Come right back, Mother. We'll have to start planning everything. I don't know how I'll be able to stand this house without you. Mother, it isn't that I don't appreciate your help. It's no trouble at all, dear. But don't you think we're rushing things a little? He hasn't even asked me yet. I know, dear, but since you'll be buying a house eventually, you should get an idea of the market so Joe will know what you're talking about. Well, I guess it can't do any harm to look. Here we are, dear. Go ahead. Thank you, Mother. Oh, my, look at the lovely picture. Oh, I like that stone house up there. Uh, yes, lady. May I help you? Uh, this is the Crawford Real Estate Office, isn't it? Yes, indeed. I'm Mr. Crawford. How do you do? We were wondering what you had in the way of houses. Well, now... Just a small house for two people. Oh, about five rooms? Well, let's see. Uh, may I have your name, please? Mrs. Uh, that is Miss... Mother, what do I tell him? Uh, I'm Mrs. Samuel Aldrich, and this is my daughter, Mary. Aldrich. Very well. Oh, say, I think I have just the thing for you. It's a little Cape Cod, stone and clabbered, and it's a beauty. Oh, goodness, it sounds perfectly wonderful. Uh, just a moment, Mary. I'll do the talking. Uh, Mr. Crawford, it sounds as though it might be satisfactory. Uh, how about the price? Oh, it's dirt cheap, Mrs. Aldrich. They're giving it away for seventeen thousand. Seventeen thousand dollars, Mr. Crawford? That's ridiculous. Come along, Mary. Mrs. Aldrich, you haven't even seen the house. Thank you very much for your trouble, but please forget the whole thing. But wait, we were really just looking anyway, Mr. Crawford. He hasn't even asked me yet. <laughs> Oh, 
I'm glad you dropped into the office, Will. I can't seem to keep my mind on work somehow. I can understand that. It'll take a while to get used to it. Mary seems so young, I just can't picture her getting married. Boy, that wedding will set you back something. Well, I don't mind that so much. I've been watching the pennies for a while, Will. I've managed to build up a nice little bank account. Yeah? Besides, I'm sure Mary will be sensible about it. I wouldn't count on it. They all want a big splash. Oh, I don't know, Will. Well, that's one consolation about Homer. When he gets married, someone else can worry about the bills. Uh, excuse me. Hello. Hello, is that Mr. Samuel Aldrich? Yes. Uh, this is Mr. Crawford. Who? Mr. Crawford from the real estate office. Yes. I thought perhaps I'd better talk this thing over with you. What thing? About the house. Your wife apparently isn't aware that prices have gone up, and if you want a house... I don't want a house. I've got a house. But, Mr. Aldrich, your wife was in my office only yesterday. She was definitely interested in looking at a small house with about five rooms. What? And I found a little jewel for only 12000 Uh, Look, Mr. Crawford, suppose I get in touch with you. You'll do that? Yes, one way or the other. All right, sir. Well, Sam, what's happened? Is it bad news? Alice is out looking at houses. What for? Well, she's been saying she didn't think she could stand our old house without Mary, but I didn't think she meant it literally. Well, you just said you have a nice bank account. Not that nice. Famous favorites for years. And no wonder, because you never tasted anything better. That's Jell-O puddings. Jell-O chocolate, butterscotch, and vanilla pudding with that old-fashioned homemade goodness. Yes, a trio of treats. Smooth as cream, rich and distinctive, with a full-bodied flavor that's luscious and satisfying. Treat the folks to Jell-O vanilla pudding tomorrow. Dress it up with sparkling maraschino cherries, a combination to tempt both the eye and the appetite. Jell-O vanilla pudding, with its enticing, rich vanilla delicacy, always calls for second helpings. And there's Jell-O butterscotch pudding. How the kids go for that smacking good buttery brown sugar taste. Or Jell-O chocolate pudding with that exciting true chocolatey flavor. All three Jell-O puddings are nourishing, made with milk, and they cook to creamy perfection in just about five minutes. So ask for Jell-O puddings, chocolate, butterscotch, and vanilla. You'll never taste it anything better. <laughs> getting back to the troubles of Henry Aldrich. Hoping to get a school ring, Henry is desperately trying to remember something his father asked him to do. Mr. Aldrich, however, has already sent Joe Graham down to the school to get the ring as a Christmas present for Henry. And Mary believes Joe is buying her an engagement ring. It's the next day, and the scene opens in the Aldrich backyard. Henry. Hey, Henry, where are you? I'm in the backyard, Homer. Where'd you disappear to? I've been around in front, resting on the porch. Resting? Sure. Don't you think I get tired watching you do all this work? <laughs> well, then you better go away again, Homer, because I'm going to finish beating these rugs. If you ask me, Henry, you're going to kill yourself doing all this work. But don't you get it, Homer? If I do all the things my parents usually ask me to do, I'm sure to do it. Do what? She was the thing I can't remember to do. Stand back. But, Henry, I've got some news for you. Something I just found out from Willie. What? Well, you know how Willie's in charge of selling school rings? Yeah. Well, your father just bought one for Joe Graham. Homer, you're crazy. I am not. Joe went down to the school today and got a ring, and he gave Willie a check from your father. He did? Well, well, gee, what's wrong with that? Joe used to go to Central High, didn't he? Well, sure. Well, gee, that, that's only natural. Joe's going to be a part of the family. My father has a perfect right to buy him a school ring. Instead of buying one for you? Sure. It isn't every day a family gets a new son. Gee, do you suppose Joe will be moving into your room? You think so? Well, he's certainly welcome to it. Well, look, Ken, there's lots of room over at my house. No, thank you, Homer. I wouldn't think of forcing myself on anybody. Henry, where are you going? Don't worry about me, Homer. I'll, I'll be all right. Boy... Boy, am I mad. Where's that carpet beater? Yes, sir. May I show you something in snow shovel? Uh, no, thank you. I was wondering if you carried pear trees. Oh, yes, indeed. The Emporium carries everything. And if we don't... We can get it for you. Oh, well, that's fine. Now, can you send six pear trees up to my home right away? Right away? Uh, yes, my wife's been wanting some for years. Oh, but this is December. Well, I thought this was as good a time as any to get them in. They'll keep until spring if I cover them over with earth. They will? Oh, of course they will. 
Although you know that pear trees are quite expensive. They cost considerably less than $12,000. Oh, yes, uh, considerably. Oh, and do you have paint in this department? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, how much would you like? Uh, enough to paint a house. Uh, what kind of a house? Well, it's quite a large one and very comfortable. As a matter of fact, I'm very attached to it. Oh, is that so? Oh, say, I just thought of something else she's been wanting. Yes? I'll be back in a minute. Oh, first, could you direct me to the rug department? <laughs> And as soon as I can, Homer, I'm going to send back this suitcase to my father. Will you hand me that pile of socks on the dresser, please? Oh, I have Never them. mind, I'll get them. Never mind. Here they are. Thank you. One of them needs mending. Huh? I'll just throw in a needle and some thread. Might as well get used to doing my own mending. Henry, why run away now? Why not at least wait till after Christmas? No, Homer, my mind's made up. I'm leaving just as soon as I have dinner. Henry, have you any idea how tough it is on the road? I won't be begging, Homer. I'll be working my way. Working? What at? I'll find something. At least I have an education. Yeah, but... And I'm not a child, you know. Your suitcase is getting pretty full. That's what I was thinking. I guess I'll have to throw out my rock collection. <laughs> You're throwing your rocks away? Hope you don't think I'm going to leave them around for Joe Graham. Henry... Did I tell you I'm pretty interested in rocks? You are? Well, that is, if you're running away. In that case, Homer, here. They're yours. Gee, Henry, you're giving them to me? Gee, you shouldn't. Nothing of it. Can you reach up on the wall there, please, Homer, and hand me Kathleen's picture? Look at her, Henry. Look at her smiling at you. Just hand it to me, Homer. Look what she's written on it. To Henry, yours truly, Kathleen Anderson. <laughs> Just think of how she's going to feel. Think of the spring prom, Henry. Now listen, Homer. Is that our doorbell? Sure. Why should you worry about it? I guess I'll answer it, though. It's the least I can do for my family on my last night. Can I start taking my rocks out of your suitcase? Sure. Help yourself. Oh, hi, Henry. Gee whiz, Joe, I haven't even left yet. I beg your pardon? Well, come on in. Thanks. And I just want to say, Joe, no hard feelings. About what? You know, everything. Oh. Well, no hard feelings here either. Naturally. Is your father around? I think I heard him come in a little while ago. Joe Graham? That you? Hello, Mr. Aldrich. Well, well, it's nice to see you. I'll just go on back upstairs. Here, let me take your coat, Joe. Thank you, sir. Mr. Aldrich, I, uh, I thought I'd drop over with Henry's ring. Oh, good. Thank you. I guess you'll be buying one or two more before long, eh? What's that? I suppose we go into the living room and have a little chat. All right. Well, well, sit down, son. Thank you, sir. Well, well, <laughs> well, Joe. <laughs> yes, Mr. Aldrich? Oh, just call me... Well, no, there's no point in rushing things, I guess. No. No, there isn't. Rushing what, sir? Let me put it this way. Mary's a fine girl, Joe. A fine girl. Oh, yes, I like her very much. Naturally. Well, I guess I'll be running along now. Oh, nonsense, Joe. We'll be having dinner in a few minutes. You're just in time. But I was here for dinner two nights ago. Oh, well, things are a little different now. Aren't they, son? They are? <laughs> Now, let me give you a word of advice, Joe. You and Mary will get along fine as long as you remember a few simple rules. We get along all right. Yes, but wait until you see how she irons your shirts. What's that? It runs in the family, Joe. They just can't iron shirts. Now, you take my advice and send them out to the laundry. But my mother irons my shirts. Oh, and that's another thing. Don't ever mention your mother. No? Your mother can't do a thing. Remember that. She can't cook. She can't mend. And above all, she can't keep house. Mr. Aldrich, my mother's a fine woman. Why, yes, Joe, and so is mine. But you'll have to choose between them. I will? Uh huh. <laughs> and that about covers it. Oh. But I'd just like to say, Joe, I'm not losing a daughter. Mother! Oh, uh, yes, Mary? Mother says dinner is almost. Oh. Hello, Mary. Why. Why, Joe. Hello, Joe. My goodness. Yes, Mary? Joe, I want you to know that I'm starting cooking school on Monday. And I'm also very good at darning socks. You are? Yes, indeed. You'll never have to worry about your socks in the future. You mean Mary's going to darn them? Of course, Joe. But my goodness, 
here I am doing all the talking. Oh, before you forget, Joe, uh, where's the ring? Huh? Oh, here it is, Mr. Oldham. Oh, thank you, Joe. I really didn't want you to know about it, Mary, but now that you and Joe... Well, it's a Christmas present for Henry. Don't you think you'll like it? A school ring? Joe, is that what you and Father were talking about the other night? Why, sure. Oh. Oh, my goodness. Is something wrong, Mary? No, oh, I thought I heard you in here. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Aldrich. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And isn't it nice having... Joe, come on. Where? Anywhere. Just come on. Mary, have you been saying anything about my mother? <laughs> Alice, did it strike you Mary's acting very strangely? Yeah, I hadn't noticed. What I'm wondering about is that phone call. What phone call? From the Emporium. A man phoned a while ago and asked if I wanted the rugs delivered tomorrow. Oh, uh, Alice, I've been meaning to speak to you about that. I ordered those new rugs you've been wanting for the living room in front hall. You what? Also six pear trees and enough paint to do the whole house inside and out. Sam. And I thought we might redecorate the upstairs the way you wanted. Sam, you darling. You're pleased, Alice. Pleased? I've never been so surprised and happy in my whole life. You mean you'll reconsider about the new house? What new house? By the one you've been looking at. Dear, I never wanted a new house. What? Well, now, look. And excuse me, I want to call the Emporium and tell them to send those rugs. Alice, wait. Oh, I'm sorry, Henry. Did I knock you over? Not entirely. Listen, Father, I, I started thinking about the spring prom and a few things, and then I smelled the stew Mother's cooking for supper, and I'd like to make you a proposition, Father. A proposition? Yes, sir. From today on, I'll polish the car twice a week, and I'll get up at 6 o'clock every morning to stoke the furnace. You'll what? And besides, I'll shovel all the walks and carry out the ashes. What would you think of that? I think I was dreaming. Well, it's a deal, Father. Shake. Shake? Shake. And, uh... Uh, Henry, while this was supposed to be a Christmas present, under the circumstances, I think I'd like you to have it now. Father, my school ring. You like it, son? Like it? Boy! And, Father, I finally remembered what you wanted me to do, I think. I wanted you to do something? Sure, you wanted me to burn that pile of bushes in the backyard. What? And it's all taken care of. Henry, my pear tree! <laughs> Mr. Weast, Mr. Weast, uh, you want to know something? Well, sure. What? Well, uh, I'd like to tell you about my favorite brunette. Ah, one of those true glamour girls, I'll bet, with rich dark tresses and glorious dark eyes. No, no. I'm talking about my favorite brunette dessert, that rich dark jello chocolate pudding. Why, of course, jello chocolate pudding. You never tasted anything better with that marvelous true chocolate flavor, especially made by the famous Walter Baker chocolate people. All three Jell-O puddings, chocolate, vanilla, and butterscotch, are rich and distinctive, with real old-fashioned homemade goodness. Jell-O vanilla pudding, smooth as cream, with that tempting vanilla delicacy. Jell-O butterscotch pudding, with that buttery brown sugar taste. And say, all three Jell-O puddings cook to perfection in just about five minutes. And they're nourishing, made with milk. So when you go to your grocer's, ask for Jell-O pudding. You never tasted anything better. Does anybody know where Mary is? Father, are you in the living room? Yes, Henry, I'm writing out checks. I've got the car polished, Father. Boy, does, does my back ache. There, that's the last one. Now, could you tell me where Mary is? I don't know where she is. Why? Well, Joe Graham just dropped off this bundle of old socks. What's that? He said Mary would take care of them. Just a taste of jello puddings, and believe me, you will know. They are made by famous J-E-L-L-O. And now, Jell-O Puddings present... Henry! Henry Aldrich! Coming, Mother. The Aldrich family, based on characters originated by Clifford Goldsmith, and starring Ezra Stone as Henry with Jackie Kelk as Homer. And here they are. Just a taste of Jell-O Puddings, and believe me, you will know, they are made by famous... J-E-L-L-O. Yes, and more people eat Jell-O puddings than any other prepared puddings in the world because you never tasted anything better. Jell-O chocolate, butterscotch, and vanilla puddings, a trio of treats. 
chock full of old-fashioned homemade goodness. Try it. See if you don't say that Jell-O puddings are richer, creamier, more all-round delicious. They're made with milk and nourishing, and they cook to perfection in just about five minutes. But the great thing about Jell-O puddings is you never tasted anything better. And now for the Aldrich family. As summer arrives, everybody makes plans for a change of scenery. But a teenage boy needs no such change. For every new activity his impulsive mind touches on opens up new avenues toward trouble and excitement. It's Saturday morning, and the scene opens in the Aldrich front hall, where Henry is on the telephone. Is everything all set, Homer? Sure. I hope you like mustard sandwiches. I love them. With a little chili sauce. Yeah? Are you bringing something to wash them down? Sure. His water. Well, anyway, once we get out to McCorkle's Rocks, we won't care if we eat or not. We won't? I'll get my bike and come right over. Well, look, why don't I come over there? I want to get out of the house. Why? My mother's on the war path. Boy, wouldn't you know she'd pick the first decent day this year to decide the garage had to be painted? Gee whiz, does she expect you to paint it? Well, she's working on my father right now. But something tells me she'll be after me in a minute. You mean your father's putting up an argument? With my mother? Don't be crazy. He's pretending he's asleep. Well, in that case, in that case, you better get out quick. Well, that's what I say. If I can just get past the breakfast dishes. Gee whiz, Homer. I don't know why it is every time I plan something with you, some member of your family tries to throw a monkey wrench into things. I'll get out, Henry. Don't worry. I'll be over there in five minutes. Well, okay. What's that, Mother? Hello, Henry. Yeah? I'll be right over, just as soon as I bring in the washing. Listen, Homer, why do you let your family walk all over you like that? Gee, I don't know. Why don't you stick up for your rights? Sure. Okay. Sure. I'll be there as soon as I bring in the washing. Homer, I'm counting on you. Sure. So long. Goodbye. Henry! Yes, Mother? What are you doing, dear? Oh, uh, gee, I'm not doing anything. Well, then please come out here and do the breakfast dishes. Well... Mother, when I said I wasn't doing anything, I didn't mean I wasn't doing anything. I mean... Henry, don't stand out there and yell. I know, but... Henry! Father, is that you? It is. And, Henry, do you see this package? Sure, only I thought you went to the office, Father. I started to, but... Henry, wait until you step outside. What's outside? Summer, my boy, summer. The sun's shining, the birds are singing. It's no day to sit in an office. Look here. Let me show you what I bought. Gee, Father, why? You'll see. You'll see. Oh, uh, seeds. Yes, sir. Vegetables, flowers, enough for a whole late planting. And I've got another surprise for you. You have? I'm going to turn this entire day over to the garden and to you. To me? Well, I've been pretty busy this winter, son. <laughs> I haven't been able to see as much of you as I would have liked. I know, but You're I... You're going to remedy that. You and I are going to spend one grand day working in our garden. Today? Yes, sir. We'll putter around in the sunshine and catch up on each other's news. Maybe top the whole thing off with a soda at the Haven's drugstore. How's that sound? That sounds swell, Father. Only... Only what? Well, Homer and I... Well, gee, if I had any idea you were planning on... Oh, you made some plans with Homer? Well, that's all right, son. I don't mind if Homer joined there. Well, the only thing is... Yeah? Well, it's just that Homer was kind of looking forward to... To, to these other plans we've made. Oh, I see. Father, I... That's perfectly all right, Henry. Naturally, I wouldn't force you to spend the day with me. Father, I don't want you to think... Please don't give it another thought. Just forget the whole thing. Gee. Gee, what kind of seeds have you got there anyway? Nothing at all, just the same old thing. And please excuse me. But, Father, I'd be very interested in seeing them. Henry, oh... I've never been so ashamed of you in my life. I just feel as though I've failed somewhere along the line as a mother. You mean you've been listening? Henry, do you realize that you spend practically 365 days a year with Homer Brown? That's right. And all that time your father is out working his fingers to the bone so he can feed and clothe you and give you a good education. Gee, Mother, I didn't mean to hurt his feelings. Well, you did, dear. Gee, what do you think I should do? I'm sure I don't know. The whole thing is entirely in your own lap. Mother, where are you going? I'm going to leave you alone so you can think things over. Why, Sam, what are you doing out there? 
I'm sitting, Alice. Can't you find any place more comfortable than the stairs? I don't want to be comfortable. Now, Sam. Alice, please go on with your housework. But what are you going to do, dear? I'll either go to the office or get a haircut. I haven't decided which. Oh, I'll answer the phone. Thank you, Sam. Hello? Hello, Sam. This is Will Brown. Yes, Will. Look, I only have a minute while Elizabeth's talking to the milkman. You doing anything today? Not a thing. What do you say we run out to Fletcher's Pond and get in some fishing? Well, I had planned on working in the garden, but... On a hot day like this? Break your back over a hole and shovel? Well... When you could stretch out in the grass and watch the clouds roll by? Well, you're 100% right. I don't know what I was thinking of. I'll be right over. No, I'll come over there. Huh? Elizabeth's got a garage on her mind, and if I... Do... Uh-oh, here she comes. What's that? Yes, sir. Yes, indeed, Mr. Uh, by all means, I'll drop in at your... What? I'll drop in right away, and we'll sign the contracts on that, uh, that deal. What? Uh, goodbye. Well, Will, what are you talking about? Father. Well, yes, Henry? Father, I've been thinking it over in G. Let's go. Let's go where? Out to the garden. Uh, Henry, uh, why don't we just leave the garden for some other day? Gee, Father, you don't have to pretend with me. Huh? Uh, well, look at it this way. The sun's boiling hot. And the first thing you know, you're breaking your back over a hole. Well, of course, if you'd rather not. Oh, no, don't feel that... Well, I mean, naturally, what I want to do is work in the garden with you, of course. Well, then I... Guess it's all settled. I guess. Yes, yeah, I guess it is. Listen, Henry, why don't you come right out and tell your father? And break his heart, Homer? She was. Are we going to have to spend the whole day playing in your garden? Listen, Homer, can you casually look down at the other end of the garden without my father seeing you? Sure. What's he doing? He seems to be having an argument of some kind with my father. Yeah? Listen, Henry, just tell me one thing. What? Do you really want to go out to McCorkle's Rocks with me? Because if you don't, just say so. I'll understand. Sure I do, Homer. Sure I do. But first I have to think of some way to get my father occupied. Here, you be planting this row. Well, if I'm going to spend the day working, I might just as well be home painting our garage. Painting your... Painting your... Homer. What? Homer, you're a genius. Who, me? Listen. Listen, I know how I... How I can get my father to kick me out. Yeah, gee whiz, how? Look at our garage, Homer. Isn't it a mess? Now that you mention it, sure. Well, all I have to do is get my father interested in painting it, and I'll be free. I don't follow you, Ham. Whenever he gets painting the garage, he always throws me out. That's one thing he'll never let me touch. Why would you want to? Why do you think? Because he won't let me. But, Henry, where are you going? To start the ball rolling. Sam, all you have to do is come right out and tell Henry. Tell me what, Father? Uh, well, uh, nothing, Henry, not a thing. Uh, how's the garden coming along? Mm, just fine. How's your end? We're getting there. Well, look... Father, have you happened to notice our garage recently? Isn't it a sight? Why, uh... Don't you think it could use a coat of paint? Why, yes, Henry, that's an excellent idea. Look at it, Will. Isn't it a sight? It looks all right to me. Will. What? You stay right here, Father. I'll go and get the paint. You do that, son. Sam, have you gone crazy? Look, Will, this is our chance to get away and go fishing. Yeah? For as long as I can remember, Henry's wanted to paint the garage, and I've never let him touch it. Is that right? But today, Will, I'm going to let him paint the whole thing himself. Busy, Elizabeth. I'm glad you phoned. But I won't keep you, dear. I just wanted if you had any large paint brushes. How large? For painting a garage. Oh, you're having your garage painted? No, Alice. I'm painting it myself. Really? And I might even fall off the ladder and break my neck. What's that? And then perhaps they'll be sorry. Who, Elizabeth? Will and Homer. Honestly, Alice, those two would go to the ends of the earth to avoid a little work. Well, are you sure they wouldn't do it for you, Elizabeth, if you asked them nicely? Alice, dear, I've asked them nicely in every other way. Oh, well, men are all the same, I guess. Well, I guess I'm pretty lucky. Are you, dear? Yes, it's quite a coincidence, but Sam and Henry are getting ready to paint our garage right now. They are? Well, how long did you have to work on them? As a matter of fact, I didn't say a word about it. They always seem to know what I want done without my even having to say. Really? Well, well, of course, Homer and Will think a lot of me, too. Oh, certainly. I don't believe in judging a man by how much work he does around the house, do you? Oh, of course not. And, Elizabeth, if you want to come and pick it up, I'd be glad to lend you a paintbrush. All right. 
And Alice... Do you think people will talk if I come over in my overalls? Father? We're around right behind the garage, son. Uh, well, Henry, have you got all the paint out? Yes, sir, and here, Father, I thought you might like to start with this big brush. Henry, I have a big surprise for you. You have? He sure has, Henry. Yes, sir, you may keep it. Keep what? That brush. Father, what for? Well, I've been pretty unfair in the past, Henry, when you wanted to paint the garage. I realize that now, so you have my permission to go to it. But, but, but... but... Can't quite believe it, eh, son? Well, it's a fact. But, Father, I can't be trusted with a paintbrush. Why, who said so? You said so. I was wrong, Henry. You go ahead and enjoy yourself. I know, but gee whiz. I'm getting right out of your way and leaving you a clear field. Hey, Henry. And Homer can help you. Yeah, well, listen, Homer, I have something to tell you. <laughs> Did you see his face, Will? <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen anybody so surprised. I have to hand it to you, Sam. It worked like a charm. Now, I'll just dash in the house and grab my fishing tackle. Okay. I'll only be five minutes. Say, these are pretty nice brushes. While I'm waiting, do you mind if I daub a little red trim around the door here? Well, I don't mind if Henry doesn't. Just a few inches here. I can't resist red paint. Help yourself, Will. Is that you, Sam? Yes, Alice. Oh, oh, I didn't know we had company. Good morning, sir. What's that? Why, Elizabeth. In those, with your back hurt, I thought... Elizabeth came over to borrow a paintbrush, Sam. Oh, well, they're all out in the backyard. <laughs> Excuse me. How are you, Elizabeth? Oh, not too bad, Sam. I've been having a little trouble, though, with my, uh, with, with my... Well, I guess he's gone. We might as well go out and get that brush. Oh, yes, and I do appreciate your... Elizabeth, what are you staring at? My goodness, what do you see out in the backyard? Unless my eyes deceive me, I see my husband, Will, and my son, Homer. Yes? Painting your garage. <laughs> my goodness. Excuse me. Elizabeth, where are you going? Will Brown. Hello, Elizabeth. Homer. Gee whiz, Mother, what are you doing over here? Is anything wrong, Elizabeth? Will, put down that paintbrush. Put it down? No. On second thought, keep it. You too, Homer. Now march, both of you. March? In which direction? In the direction of our garage. Listen, Mother, I'll come quietly. Only G was like all my ear. Now march. Right, left, right, left. <laughs> They're a miracle of goodness, a marvel of speed. Those sensational new Jell-O tapioca puddings. Newest members of the famous Jell-O pudding family. Try these delicious new desserts, and you'll find here's another reason why more people eat Jell-O puddings than any other prepared puddings in the world. There's luscious light and delicate Jell-O vanilla tapioca. There's rich, candy-good Jell-O chocolate tapioca. And newest of all, there's Jell-O orange coconut tapioca. Tempting orange flavor with coconut added. A creamy, smooth treat of tropical goodness. All three Jell-O puddings are ready prepared. Quick as a flash to fix and nothing to go wrong. All you do is add the milk, then cook in an ordinary saucepan. And Jell-O puddings cook to perfection in just about five minutes. So remember, now you can get Jell-O vanilla tapioca, Jell-O chocolate tapioca, and newest of all, Jell-O orange coconut tapioca. Ask for Jell-O tapioca puddings. A miracle of goodness, a marvel of speed. And now, getting back to the troubles of Henry Aldridge. After having made plans to go on a picnic with Homer, Henry was led to believe that his father wanted to share his company today. But actually, Mr. Aldridge is anxious to get away fishing with Will Brown. As a result of their efforts to get away from each other, each has lost his partner. It's just after lunch, and the scene opens in the Aldridge living room. Henry? Yes, Father? Do you think you should be whittling in the living room? I'm being careful, Father. Besides, what else is there to do? <sighs> you have a point there. It isn't that I'm not enjoying your company, Father. Oh, of course. It's grand having this day together. Sure. How, um, how's business? I had any interesting cases lately? Yes, but uh, they're rather complicated. You wouldn't understand. Oh. Uh, how's school? It's fine. It's all over. <laughs> Did you know the baseball team tied Abbott City last week? Yes, that's too bad. Too bad? I guess you didn't hear me, Father. They tied. Yes, it's but... It's the closest we've come to winning in two years. 
Oh, oh, well, that's fine. Gee, do I feel sorry for Mr. Brown and Homer painting their garage. They don't have any rights at all. Apparently not. Wouldn't you think on a nice day like this, Mr. Brown would let Homer go out in the woods if he wanted to? You certainly would. What was that you said about going out in the woods? That's what Homer and I planned on doing today. But I thought you wanted to stay around home. Well, it was you who wanted to do that. No, I want to go fishing. You do? Well, gee whiz, Father, why didn't you say so? I love fishing. Well, say, what are we sitting around here for? Let's go. Sure, boy, I'll go and get my pole. I'll dig some worms and then... Oh, Sam! Uh, Henry and I are going fishing, Alice. Today? Sure. sure. And are we going to have fun? Sam, you must be joking. What do you mean? Well, my goodness, you certainly can't walk out and leave our backyard in the state it's in. What's the matter with it? With a garden half dug up, packages of seeds all over the place, and what's more important, the garage half painted. Alice, we'll paint the garage tomorrow. Why can't you go fishing tomorrow? Because the paper says it's going to rain. Well, dear, how can you paint the garage in the rain? We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I'll answer the phone. You two stay right there. Father, why don't we stick up for our run? Hello? Alice, this is Elizabeth. Oh, hello, Elizabeth. I just called to tell you how nicely things are going. <laughs> Honestly, I'm so pleased. Really? I wish you could see what a good time Homer and Will are having. Well, what are they doing? They're painting the garage. I've been watching them from the window. Will's painting one side and Homer's painting the other, and I've never seen them so engrossed in anything. Well, isn't that nice? Sam and Henry painting your garage must have set a good example. Sam and Henry? Yes. How did you ever train them to be so helpful, Alice? What? Well, I believe in taking the bull by the horn. Yes. And and when I have a problem to face, I feel the only thing to do is, well, face it. Oh, that's so true, Alice. Oh, would you excuse me now, dear? Of course. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. <coughs> Sam! What is it, Alice? Please come here. Father, just take the bull by the horn. Yes, Father. <laughs> yes, I will. Now listen, Alice. Now listen, Sam. You listen to me. <laughs> Coming along, dear. Why, uh, fine, Mother. Don't bother coming over. I just wanted to thought I'd come and see how you were getting along. Well, listen, Mother, you wouldn't. Homer Brown. I'm going to paint over. Do you mean to say you spent an entire hour playing tic-tac-toe with perfectly good paint? Not entirely. I painted the strip along the bottom. And what's this over here? What's what? This heart with Agnes Love's Homer printed inside. Oh, you should be ashamed of yourself, smearing a thing like that all over the garage. But, Mother, she said she didn't care if the whole world knew it. Where's your father? He's around the other side. Wait till he sees this. Will! But, Mother, I'm going to paint over it. Will! What do you want, Elizabeth? I want to tell you what your son's been doing. Look, Elizabeth, why don't you run along in the house? Since you apparently weren't interested enough to... Will Brown! Now, look, Elizabeth. May I ask whose artwork this is? Mine. Oh, but don't get excited. I'm going to paint over them. What are they? Smallmouth bass. <laughs> this one here's a guppy. Oh, honestly, Will, I don't know what to say to you. Now, look. Do I tell you how to do your housework? But but these horrible fish, what will the neighbors think? I'll have them filled in before the neighbors even see them. Besides, it's nobody's business but my own. But, Will... If a man has to work, there's no law that says he can't enjoy himself, is there? All right, Will. Go ahead and do it your way. But don't expect another meal in this house until that garage is painted properly. Don't worry, Elizabeth. Father. Yes, Homer. Father, can I have another can of paint? What happened to all the paint we had in the garage? We used it. You mean to say we haven't any more? I guess not. Say, those are pretty good submarines. Well, come on. We'd better get down to the paint store and get some. I'll say. Uh, what do you mean, submarine? <laughs> Henry, hold still. How can I? Well, lean back against the garage. But the turpentine's running down my face and it stings. Well, that's unfortunate, but I either have to scrub your head or cut your hair off. <laughs> now, take your choice. Scrub. All right. Hold still. Gee, what time is it? It's 2.30. It's no use, Henry. No matter how fast we paint, we won't get any fishing done today. Unless there was some way to speed things up. For example? Well... Look, did I tell you about that swell gadget I saw in Springer's Hardware? 
Oh, what is it? It's a paint sprayer. You take the fan belt off of your car, see, and attach the sprayer, and boy, you can paint a whole house in four hours. You can? Sure. What are you doing, Father? Taking the fan belt off. And we'll walk down to Springer's and look at one of those things. Do you mean it, Father? Just hand me that wrench, please. Sure. And then I can go hunt up my fishing pole. Will! Homer! There's no use hiding. I'll find you. Oh, my goodness. Hello? Elizabeth, this is Alice. Yes, Alice. This is a little embarrassing, Elizabeth, but... Are Henry and Sam over there? No, they aren't. And neither are Will and Homer. You mean they've disappeared too? Well, that settles it. Settles what? I know very well where they've gone, Elizabeth. The whole four of them. Where? Fishing. Out at Fletcher's Pond. Alice, they wouldn't dare. They've been talking about it all day, and if I know anything about men, that's where they are. I can't believe it. What sort of condition is your garage in? You wouldn't believe it if I told you. Well, ours is the same. And do you know how I feel, Elizabeth? How? If we let them get away with this, we'll never be able to do another thing with them. I'll do whatever you say, Alice. You're so good at managing them. All right, I'll be right over with the car to pick you up. But where are we going? Out to Fletcher's Pond and take the bull by the horn. <laughs> Come on in the house, Will. The only thing is, I should be getting home. Only I don't dare. Oh, come on in for a few minutes. You can explain to Elizabeth how we ran into each other down at the hardware store. Yeah, but how am I going to explain that I can't find any of the right color paint? Well, just... Just stand up for your rights, Will. Tell her you'll finish painting the garage next week. Yes, but you haven't seen what I painted on the... Oh, well, I never liked our neighbors anyway. <laughs> Father, I've been all through the house and Mother seems to be out. She is? Sit down, Will. Why don't I make some lemonade and we'll all relax for a while? That'd be great. Henry, go make some lemonade. <laughs> oh, me? Father, you mean we don't have to go home? Not right away. Did Mother say so? I said so. You, Father? Gee, I sure wish they'd had one of those paint sprayers left. Henry, let's not talk about paint. Let's enjoy ourselves while we can. Say, Father. What? Didn't you leave your car in the driveway when we went down to the hardware store? Yes, of course. Well, look out the window. It's gone. Good heavens, you don't suppose your mother took it, do you? Sure, that's probably it. But I took the fan belt out. She won't get ten miles with it. Is that the phone? I'll answer it. How about that lemonade? Hello? And let me speak to Matt. Uh, Wait a minute. Who is that? Alice, is that you? Sam, aren't you at... Did you go... Are you at home? Of course I'm at home. Oh, my goodness. Where are you? I'm calling from a roadside stand out near Fletcher's Pond. You're where? And, dear, I don't know quite how to tell you, but there seems to be something wrong with the car. Oh, is that so? Alice, what did you do to it? I didn't do anything. Elizabeth and I were just driving along, and it got very hot inside, and then the whole thing started smoking. Now, look, Alice. Before you get angry, Sam, I give you my word, I didn't race the motor. And I know I put the emergency brake off before I started. I see. Well, we'll discuss that later. Yes, Sam, and... And do you think you and Will could come out and get us? Yes, I suppose we'll have to. But on our own terms, you understand. Yes, sir. All right, goodbye. Goodbye, dear, and thank you. Will, boys! Yes, Sam? Yes, Father? Electric tackle, everyone. We're going fishing. <laughs> gratitude, Henry. That's gratitude for you. Now, listen, Homer. If you don't want to go over to Agnes's for dinner tomorrow, okay. Well, gee, Homer. Only I happen to know they're having jello butterscotch pudding for dessert. And I guess they'll be glad to have me eat your dish of it, too. Now, wait a minute, Homer. Yes, better change your mind in a hurry about that invitation, Henry. Because you never tasted anything better than jello puddings. Jello chocolate, butterscotch, and vanilla puddings. A trio of treats. And that's why more people eat Jell-O puddings than any other prepared puddings in the world. Sure, Jell-O puddings are nourishing. Sure, they're luscious to look at. And sure, they're easy to fix. But first and foremost, Jell-O puddings taste so grand. Smooth as cream, chock full of old-fashioned homemade goodness. Jell-O puddings made with milk cook in just about five minutes. But above all, they're a treat to eat. 
That's Jell-O puddings. You never tasted anything better. Here's hoping you'll be in your living room and ours when we get back from our vacation on September 30th. Until then, a happy summer to all of you from all of us. Goodbye, folks, until September 30th. The music by Jack Miller, Mr. and Mrs. Aldrich, or House Jameson, and Catherine Ross. And this is Dwight Weiss in New York saying, The Aldrich Family was brought to you by Jell-O Pudding. Just a taste of Jell-O Puddings, and believe me, you will know. They are made by famous J-E-L-L-O. Listen again Thursday, September 30th. Same time, same station, to another sparkling half hour with the Aldrich family. Remember the date, September 30th, and goodbye till then. Starting next week at the same time, listen to the Armed Services Review, starring Burgess Meredith, with Irving Berlin, Marlena Dietrich, and Herb Schreiner as guest stars. <laughs> Thank heaven, American boys eventually grow up. But no matter how important or how old they become, they always like to grow down to boyhood again, to recapture their teenage and the adventures of Henry Aldrich. The scene opens in the Aldrich front hall. It is Saturday morning. Well, I guess I'm just about all set, Homer. Gee, Henry. Gee, how'd you ever talk your folks into it? I didn't have to, Homer. After all, it's the most natural thing in the world to do. Boy, I bet this is the biggest day in your life since your first pair of long pants. <laughs> Homer, gee whiz. My mother and father just suddenly realized that I've reached the age of manhood. Gee, I wish I would. Henry! Yes, Mother? Have you got your money? Sure, Mother. Well, here, I want you to tie it up in this handkerchief. Mother! Oh, Alice, stop worrying. You won't lose it. Sure. Gee whiz, didn't we all agree I wasn't a kin anymore? That's right, son. Now run along and use your own judgment about the whole thing. Thanks, Dad. And, Homer, when we get down there, I don't want you saying anything. Nothing at all. Only if I ask for your opinion. And even if he asks you, Homer, please don't interfere. We want Henry to make his decision entirely on his own. Sure. Come on, Homer. Let's go. Only, Henry, if you really can't decide, be sure and phone me. I'll be okay, Mother. Good luck, Henry. Dear, have you got the handkerchief? Yes, Mother. Come on. But please be careful. And, Henry... Alice, let him go. Sam, we should never have let him do it. No, Alice, Henry's perfectly capable of handling a thing like this by himself. Well, maybe he is. But just the same... Why are you putting your coat on? Sam, I'm going to stay a good hundred yards behind him. Alice, you're going to do no such thing. Well, here I am, everybody. How do you like me? Henry! Henry Aldrich! Henry Aldrich, of all things! Oh, gee whiz, what's so terrible? Sam, speak to him! I refuse to say a word to him until he takes that thing off his head. You... You mean you don't like the hat, Father? Why, well, after you told me I could choose my own? All he needs now is spats and a cane. Henry, I hardly know what to say to you. But, Mother... My goodness, a straw hat. Dear, what on earth possessed you to buy a thing like that? Look, Mother, it's a genuine West Indian straw worth fourteen fifty, And on account of winter coming on, I got it for only three dollars. Have you suppose any of my friends saw him walking along under that? Mary, Mother said I could pick it out myself. Oh, no, I didn't. 
Sam, you were the one who decided your son could choose his own clothes from now on. Alice, he's your son as much as he is mine. Look, 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 let me sort of walk away from you, Mother, so you can get a better perspective. What's that? The whole trouble is everybody's just looking at it too closely. Pretend I'm walking down the street, see? Yes? Doesn't the hat begin to look better? Keep on walking, Henry. (laughs) Sure, you see my point? There. Now it looks fine. Precisely. Henry, will you please stop this foolishness and come back here? Mother, won't you please try to look at the overall effect? You always have to make an adjustment when you see a man you're not used to in a hat. Oh, I mean... Henry, let's not waste any more time talking. You'll just have to march straight down to the Emporium and return that hat. Return it? Mother, you don't mean... (laughs) You're just kidding, aren't you? I've never been more serious in my life. But gee whiz, Mother, I can't. Father, you see my side, don't you? Sam, will you please explain to Henry that you were wrong about the whole thing? Uh, As a matter of fact, Alice, I just remember some work I have to do. Sam! Mother, look, I can't go back. I can't. Henry, it's a perfectly simple matter to walk into a store and say, I've changed my mind about this and I'd like my money back, please. Of course it is, Henry. Oh, boy. My goodness, I do it all the time. But, Mother, the clerk will think think that I don't know my own mind. Just tell him your mother refuses to let you wear it. After him calling me, sir? Oh, gee. Gee, was I... I can't walk into a store and start talking about my mother as if... As if I was a little boy. Dear, even big boys have mothers. Now, please start. (laughs) Gee whiz, mother, I can't. I just can't. Very well. Mary, will you please take Henry by the hand and... Mary, don't you touch me. Mary, are you ready to go by yourself? Mother, listen, won't you please try to look at it this way? Yes, sir, is there something I can do for you? Why, yes, as a matter of fact, I... Homer, how would you like to sort of step over there and look at those coats a minute? Well, Henry, I'm interested. Oh, you interested in buying a coat, young man? Me? She was no. I've got a coat. Homer. Well, I guess it wouldn't do any harm to investigate. Look, uh, mister, uh, look, uh, about this hat, it isn't that I don't like it. I knew you'd like it, sir. Why, in all my years in hats, I've never seen a face that fitted a hat the way yours fits that one. (laughs) Yeah. Sure. Only, that's exactly what worries me, the fit. The fit? Well, we can certainly remedy that. You can? Well, I don't mean the fit so much as, well, as my doctor. What's that? I I don't know how it slipped my mind, but according to my doctor, I shouldn't wear a hat, I think. Why not? Well, I'm sort of... Losing my hair. And, and... Oh, is that so? Well, if you're really losing your hair, you don't ever want to be seen without a hat. I don't? No, sir. Now, just let me set it back on your head. But, mister, what I... Always remember to give it a pat, like this. There you are. Well, sure, only... You... Henry, how do I look in this? Homer, where are you? Right here, inside this coat, isn't it? <laughs> Young man, are you interested in buying that raccoon coat? I'm interested, sure. How much is it? Three hundred dollars. Yeah. Well, frankly, I've suddenly lost interest. <laughs> Mr. Look, look, about this hat, I've I've decided to return it. Return it? Sure, and I'd like my money back, please, if you don't mind. Well, well that is... What's the matter? Didn't your mother like the hat? My mother? Well, <laughs> gee, she has nothing to do with it. Well, that is... Well, I'm sorry, sir, but I'm afraid we can't take it back. Why not? Well, what about your initials? Oh, I forgot about the initials. There they are, right on the sweatband, H.A., as large as life. We never take a hat back once it's been initialed. But couldn't you remove them? Remove them? Yeah. Well, how could we remove initials? They're perforated. Look, H-A. Oh. Well, couldn't you just add a T to the H-A? And then you'd have H-A-T. You know. Now, just a minute, son. Hello? Hello? Hello. Is this Mr. Harold... Acorn? Alcorn, Henry. What's that? And I mean Alcorn. Yeah? Who's this? Well, you don't know me, see? I just found your name in the phone book. You did? Sure. I'm phoning everybody I can find who has the initials H.A. <laughs> and look, how would you feel about a swell new hat? Yeah? What program is this? 
What program? Sure. Didn't you say you were giving away a hat? No, gee whiz, I'm selling it. Selling it? Look, just let me ask you this. What size is your head? Eight and a half. What's it to you? Eight and a half? Wow. Now, just forget the whole thing. Goodbye. <laughs> Quick, let's see the phone book, Homer. Are there any more H.A.s? Sure, only I think all this phoning is hopeless. Homer, there just has to be one H.A. in Centerville with a six and a half head size who needs a hat. What's the next number? Uh, Elm 669. Number, please. Elm 669. Elm 669. How'd you make out on Mr. Alcorn, him? Boy, he was the biggest sore head I ever heard of. Yeah, eight and a half. But I, I've got a feeling this is my lucky customer coming up. Gee, Hen, I sure hope so. Hello. Uh, hello. May I speak to H. Andrews, please? Well, this is Hildegard Andrews. Hildegard? <laughs> yes? Who's this? Well, gee, 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 I don't think you'd be interested. Well, I might be. Come on. Who is it? Well, no. No, no, no I'm sure you wouldn't be. Goodbye. Homer, we're just not getting any place. Hey, Henry, I just got a swell idea. Why don't you phone the police department? The police? Sure. After all, they keep fingerprints. Maybe they keep head sizes, too. <laughs> Homer, you're crazy. Henry! Oh, boy. Henry, haven't you left yet? Left, Mother? For where? Dear, didn't we decide you were to take your hat down to the Emporium and get your money back? Well, how... Oh. Tell you, Mother, I did go down, see? Oh, you did? Fine. Sure, and I had a long talk with the clerk, see? Only... Oh, and he gave you your three dollars back? Why, not exactly. You mean he gave you credit? Credit? That's just as good, Henry. You and I'll go down later this afternoon and pick out another hat for you. The mother, wait, you don't understand. Yes, I do understand how you feel, but until you're a few years older, you need help in selecting your clothes. But, but Mother, if you'd only let me explain... Let's not you... talk about it now, dear. I have to start lunch. <laughs> Gee whiz, Homer, my mother thinks I returned the hat. Why didn't you set her straight? I tried to, Homer. What's she going to do when she finds out I've hidden it up in my room? Boy, you're in a spot, Hen. Wait a minute. Who are you going to phone? The Centerville Times. I've got the whole thing figured out. Number, please. L-909. L-909. Who's down at the Times, Hen? Mary's boyfriend, Kermit. And he always said if there's anything he can do for me, he'd be glad to do it. Yeah? Sure, and I know he'll be just crazy about my hat, even if his initials are an H.A. Centerville Times, Editor Blake's man. I'd like to speak to one of your reporters, please. Kermit Hannigan. Hannigan isn't there. Sorry. He isn't? Oh, just a minute. Homer, he isn't there. He isn't? Well, why not leave a message? Sure. Hello? Yes? Look, could I leave a message, please? A very important message. Who is this? Why, you, you wouldn't know me, but, but I'm a member of the general public who reads your paper, and uh, I'm trying to locate somebody with the initials H.A. You mean he's lost? Lost? Uh, no, gee whiz, I just have to find them. Why not call the police department? The police? Would they fool around with a thing like this? I told you, Henry. Well, that all depends. What's this fellow done? Who? Uh, the fellow that wouldn't give me my money back? He wouldn't? Well, how much was involved? Well, gee, every cent I had. Is that so? All right, let's have all the information. Initials, A.J. Sure. With a six and a half head size. Are they going to help you, Hen? Homer, will you please beat it? Hello? Hello? Okay, Henry, I can take a hint. Mrs. Aldridge. The important thing is, he has to like straw hats. Are you in the living room, Mrs. Aldridge? Yes, Homer. Mr. Aldridge and I happen to be having a private discussion. Well... Did I hear you say it was almost lunchtime? Not quite, Homer. You have plenty of time to get home. <laughs> yes, dear. Well, are you sure I can't help you in any way, Mrs. Aldrich? Set the table or anything? <laughs> no, thank you. Oh. Well, I guess I'll be running along then. Goodbye, Homer. Where were we, Alice? I was saying, Sam, that you should take a lesson from what happened this morning and put your foot down. That was unfortunate, Alice, but I still maintain we should give Henry one more chance to choose his own hat. Sure, I agree with Mr. Aldrich. Homer, I thought you'd gone home. Alice, try to look at this whole thing from a boy's viewpoint. I was a boy once myself. Sure, so was I. <laughs> if you lead him down to the Emporium by the hand, you'll destroy every shred of his self-respect. Dear, I don't intend to take his hand. Psychologically, you'd be taking his hand. Sam, the important thing is Henry has to have a new hat. And since he isn't capable of choosing one himself, then someone has to do it for him. But Mrs. Aldrich... Homer, will you please go home? Sam, listen to me. Someone has to help Henry. Very well, Alice. Have it your own way. Oh, I'm glad you're being reasonable, Sam. And when you get down there... Down where? To the Emporium with Henry. Alice, I'm not going with him. Yes, you are, Sam. I've changed my mind. 
You're a man. You're definitely the one to help Henry select the new hat. Now, wait a minute, Alice. I think so, too. Hold on, will you please go home? <laughs> You'll never be in the predicament when it comes to making a choice if you choose gay, shimmering jello for dessert. Tomorrow night, try raspberry pear whip. Just prepare a package of raspberry jello as usual, then whip it up. Fold in a cup of luscious pear pulp and chill until firm. All six jello flavors, strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime, have that wonderful locked in goodness that reminds you of the real ripe fruit itself. Ask for jello. America's favorite gelatin dessert. And now, getting back to the troubles of Henry Alders. Having been told by his parents that he could choose his new hat himself, Henry came home this morning proudly exhibiting a genuine West Indian straw. And then, ordered to return the hat immediately, he ran into difficulties. Now, Henry is searching for someone to whom he can sell the hat. The scene opens in the Centerville Police Station. It is that afternoon. But, Sergeant, what's this fellow done? I don't know what he's done. All I found out is the Centerville Times is on his trail, and they'd sure like a chance to show us up. You're right. Now, here's all I know about him. His initials are H.A., and his head size is six and a half. His head size? That's a new one. Yes, and from what I can gather, the main clue is a straw hat. Now, if you find that, we'll be on the right track. Okay, I'll start checking hat stores and cleaners. Yes, and if you run into anyone from the newspapers... Yeah. Don't let on. We don't know anything, but try to find out who it is we're looking for. Mary, please. Henry, let go. I have to get ready for the beauty parlor. Mary, listen. If you had a brother and he was going to die any minute now, wouldn't you make a move to help him? Of course I would. Well, okay. I've got to have three dollars. Henry, do you think I'm made of money? But don't you realize Mother thinks I've got a credit of $3 at the Emporium, and I haven't. And don't you realize that Kermit is coming here for dinner tonight, and I'm a sight? Look, Mary, why waste your money in beauty parlors? What? If you're going to marry Kermit someday, don't you think the only fair thing to do is let him see you in your natural condition? <laughs> Henry Aldrich! Mary, wait, before you get mad... When is Kermit's birthday? In June. Why? How'd you like to buy him a swell present? It's worth fourteen fifty, and you can have it for three dollars. No. Two ninety five. No. And goodbye. I have to fix my hair. You mean you're not going to the beauty parlor? Of course I am, but I can't go there looking like this. Okay, Mary. Just wait until you want me to be best man at your wedding. Henry. Mother, are you sure there hasn't been a phone call for me? No, dear. Oh, gee whiz, a reporter that won't even answer a phone call. Henry, I have to run over to your Aunt Harriet first, but I want. I want you to meet me down at the Emporium in 45 minutes. At the Emporium? Yes, it seems your father has suddenly disappeared. Uh, well, look, Mother, don't you think a new hat is just a waste of money? Certainly not. But, yes. gee, you know how I always lose everything, especially a hat. Why, I won't have it a half an hour. Now, gee, hey, wait, Mother, I'd lose my head if it wasn't fastened on. Now, dear, you really need a hat, and you have a credit of three dollars down at the Emporium. Mother, listen, there's something I've got to tell you. Tell me down at the Emporium in 45 minutes. But it'll be too late then. Oh, so much. Excuse me, Mrs. Aldrich, did I knock you over? Not quite. And please don't be late, Henry. Hey, Henry, where's your hat? It's hidden up in my room. Well, listen, I found this pilot, see, who wants a straw hat. He does? Sure. He flies planes from Miami to Chicago, and he wants a straw to wear while he's in Miami. Homer, you don't mean that. Sure, and his head size is six and a half, and he doesn't care a darn about the initials. Oh, boy, Homer, let me shake your hand. Sure, shake. Shake. Ow. Oh, I'm sorry, Homer. It's just that I'm so grateful. Well, stop twisting my arm, and I'll give you his address. Sure, and then let's go upstairs and get the hat. You know what happened to me on the way over? What? A cop stopped me on the street and asked me my initials. He did? Sure. And when I told him H.B., he said I was just one letter out. <laughs> Funny. Do you suppose I nearly won a prize of some kind? I'll answer the phone, Henry. Okay, Mary. Only if it's Kermit, tell him he's missed his chance. Hello? Hello, Mary, dear. Why, Kermit. How are you, Kermit? Fine. As a matter of fact, Mary, I'm on top of the world. You are? I just wanted to prepare you. Uh, by the time I come over for dinner tonight, I might be out of obituaries. Really? My goodness, what's happened? Well, I haven't time to explain, Mary, but I'm working on a big story. 
I'm going to scoop the police department. No. Yes. So, uh, it, it won't be long now, Mary, before you and I can talk over a breakfast table instead of a telephone. Oh, my. Oh, my goodness. Well, I've got to be getting along. And do we call, Mary? Of course. Goodbye, Kermit, and good luck. Mary! Yes, Henry? Listen, Mary, I give you my word, I didn't mean it. You didn't mean what? Anything, anything I've ever said to you, except when I paid you compliments. Henry, get to the point. That's what I said. Mary, whatever I've done to you, let's both be good sports and give me back my hat. What hat? My West Indian straw that was up in my room. I haven't been anywhere near you. Mary, I haven't time to joke. Now hand it over. But, Henry, I haven't got it. Listen, Mary, I'll have Father sue you. Go ahead, I'll sue you for both of us. Henry, I don't think she's got it. But somebody's got it. I can't have lost it. Why not? You'd lose your head if it wasn't fastened on. <laughs> oh, boy. Homer, get out of my way. Maybe I put it in here. Henry, are you going to throw everything out of your whole closet? Hey, cut it out. You nearly hit me with that coat hanger. Henry, put down that rubber boat. <laughs> Sir, we clean and block hats. Well, what I want to know is, do you stretch them? Why, sure. Well, you see this straw hat? It's a six and a half. It belongs to my son. And if it's possible, I'd like it stretched so it would fit me. Well, uh, may I see the hat, please? Yes, certainly. Oh, it's a very fine hat. Yes, genuine West Indian straw. My, my, your son has good taste. You think so? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. To tell you the truth, I agree with you. I'm surprised he'd want to part with it. Well, he isn't anxious to, but his mother... So that is. I understand what you mean. I'm a married man myself. It isn't that mothers mean to be unreasonable. It's just that through no fault of their own, they're, well, they're women. That's quite true. <laughs> so I'd like to help my son out and buy this hat from him. Mm, initials H.A., huh? Now, do you think you could stretch it? I'm pretty sure I can, sir. It'll only take about ten minutes. Good, that's fine. Just make yourself comfortable while I step into the back room. And don't go away. <laughs> Hello? Hello, is that you, Mary? Yes, Mother, I just got back from the beauty parlor. Where are you? Down at the Emporium. I've been waiting for nearly two hours. Have you any idea where Henry is? He isn't here. And, Mother, do you realize it's almost dinner time and Kermit will be here any minute? Oh, my goodness, I've forgotten. Mary, you better start peeling potatoes and let your father entertain Kermit. But Father isn't here either. He isn't? Well, dear, I'll get a taxi and be home in five minutes. All right, Mother, goodbye. Goodbye, dear. Father, where did you come from? Good evening, Mary. My goodness, that straw hat you have... That's Henry. Mary, I don't want to hear this hat mentioned again in this house. Do you understand? Father, you look upset. Is anything wrong? Mary, let me ask you something. Do I look to you like a common criminal? <laughs> of course not, Father. You don't look the least bit common. <laughs> Mary... I've just come from the police station. The police station? What'd you go down there for? I was taken down there. In a police car. You were, Father? I was arrested. Really, Father? Really and truly? One minute I was sitting quietly in the cleaners thumbing through the hat fires monthly. And the next minute I was sitting under a bright light answering questions. <laughs> it seems the cleaner telephoned some eager beaver newspaper reporter and he sent the police down. But why did they arrest you? How should I know? They didn't even know themselves. Excuse me, Father, I've got a phone Kermit. My goodness, when a prominent lawyer gets arrested, that's news. Mary, put down that phone. But, Father... Put it down. Do you really mean you'd sell your own father down the river just to get Kermit out of obituary? But, Father, our whole future is involved. So is mine. Yours, Father? Aged as I am, Mary, I have a few good years left. Please answer the phone. Hello? Hello, Mary. This is Kermit. Oh, my goodness, speak it. Hello, Kermit. Mary, I I'm afraid I won't be able to come up for dinner tonight after all. You won't? Why not? No, I'd rather not go into details, Mary, but a case I was working on more or less blew up right in my face. Oh, Kermit, that's a shame. Yeah. Oh, well. Never mind, Kermit. I've got a scoop for you. Only you'll have to promise not to print it. What is it? Guess what happened to my father. Uh, Mary, I really have to go now. Kermit, aren't you interested? He was arrested. Oh? Uh, arrested? Well... Well, I'm certainly surprised. Arrested? Why, that's terrible. Well, goodbye, Mary. You're hanging up right in the middle of our conversation. And, Kermit, why can't you come to dinner tonight? I've got to cover an obituary. Hello, everybody. I'm home. Look, look, Mary, could you meet me on the corner? On the corner? Mary, I... 
Gee whiz, here it is, my straw hat. Wait a minute, Kermit. Henry Aldrich, what on earth have you got on your head? What does it look like, Mary? Mother! Hello, Kermit, listen. Mother, are you in the living room? No, that's right. She isn't home yet. She isn't? Oh, boy. Well, once she gets here, Father, will you help me explain how I got tied up? Hey, wait a minute, Henry. What's that thing on your head? An aviator's helmet, Father. <laughs> well, yes, but... See, it has ear flaps and everything. Don't you think it's the most practical type hat for me? Where did you get it? From a pilot friend of Homer's. He sort of traded it to me on trust, see? And now that I've found my straw hat, all I have to do is take it over to him. Henry, uh, about that straw hat... Boy, am I lucky he takes six and a half. Yes? Well, the hat is now size seven and a half. What? (laughs) Why can that be? Uh, Never mind, it is. You just have to return that helmet to your pilot. Return it? Oh, no, Father. Henry, let me have a look at you. You, Mary! In the living room, Alice. Oh, boy. Listen, Mother, I can explain everything. Henry, you can explain later. First, I have something to show you all. What is it, Mother? Well, while I was waiting for Henry down at the Emporium, I bought... Here I am, everybody. How do you like me? Mother! Alice! Mother, gee whiz, what is it? Why, dear, it's a hat. A hat? I don't believe it. Mother! A brace of pheasants? Certainly, Mary. Alice, you will march down to the Emporium first thing in the morning and return that fat hat, Father. Return it? But Sam! I'm coming to dinner tomorrow night. Do you suppose we should tell your mother I'm on a very special diet? She whiz, you are? Sure, because I'm anemic. You are? Gee, Homer, that's tough. Sure. To build up my strength, I have to have second helpings of everything. Well, second helpings is what everybody asks for when there's Jell-O tapioca puddings for dessert. Yes, Jell-O tapioca puddings. Newest members of the famous Jell-O pudding family. And they're a miracle of goodness, a marvel of speed. There's Jell-O vanilla tapioca, Jell-O chocolate tapioca, and Jell-O orange coconut tapioca. All three are luscious, light, and delicate, gloriously rich and creamy. And you know that name Jell-O is a trademark. It's the property of General Foods, and it tells you that you're getting a genuine Jell-O product. Ask your grocer for Jell-O tapioca puddings. And while you're about it, better get three packages so you'll have plenty for the weekend. That's Jell-O tapioca pudding. Here's hoping you'll be in your living room and ours next week at the same time. Good night, folks. And this is Dan Seymour in New York saying the Aldrich family is brought to you by the Jell-O family. Boy, desserts that are delicious. Boy, believe me, you should know. They are made by famous... J-E-L-L-O Listen again next Thursday, same time, same station, to another sparkling half hour with the Aldrich family. Now the Jell-O family presents... Henry! Henry Aldrich! Coming, Mother! Yes, it's the Aldrich family based on characters originated by Clifford Goldsmith and starring Ezra Stone as Henry with Jackie Kelk as Homer. And yes, it's the Jell-O family with its three famous desserts. Jell-O in those six delicious flavors, Jell-O puddings with that old-fashioned homemade flavor, and Jell-O tapioca puddings. A miracle of goodness, a marvel of speed. Everyone's a Jell-O good fellow, a very good Jell-O good fellow, so rich, so tempting and mellow, J-E-L-L-O. And now for the Aldrich family. It's difficult to imagine, and even more difficult to remember, either a neighborhood or a home without a typical teenage boy somewhere in it. Henry Aldrich, for instance, is always right in the center of everything. 
The scene opens in the Aldrich front hall. It is mid-morning. I'm coming. Well, Willie Marshall. Hi, Mr. Aldrich. Did you know it's snowing cats and dogs outside? It's also snowing cats and dogs inside. Come in so I can shut the door. Sure. I've got special rates for shoveling the last snow of the year, Mr. Aldridge. A dollar an hour. A dollar? That shocks you? It does. Well, uh, did I mention I have an easy payment plan? Willie, no plan could make paying a dollar an hour easy. But for snow, that's dirt cheap. No, thank you. Besides, it isn't necessary to hire anyone. Henry's already out there shoveling our driveway. He is? Yes, he started nearly an hour ago. Well, gee, I guess the snow's coming down so fast I couldn't see him. So, thank you just the same. Well, that's okay. Would uh, Would you like some firewood holes? No, thanks. Lamps rewired? No, thanks. How about having your house repainted? What? I have a tie-in with an uncle. No, thank you, Willie. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm helping Mr. Brown make out his income tax return. Okay, I'll move along. Uh, here, Mr. Aldridge. What's this? My card. So long. <laughs> Goodbye. Say, Sam. I'm coming, Will. I've been looking over these exemptions. There must be a typographical error. That's impossible. But, Sam, according to this form, all I'm allowed to deduct for Homer is $600. That's right. After all I go through, Sam, it isn't fair. Hi. Yes, Alice? Don't you think he's been out there long enough? Who? Henry, he'll be simply worn to nothing, shoveling all that heavy snow. I'll get the Thank you, Mary. Alice, don't worry about Henry. Boys have been shoveling ever since the first snowfall. But when we had his tonsils out, Dr. Bennington warned us not to let Henry overexert. Henry was three years old then. Dear, it's the easiest thing in the world to have a relax. Mr. Brown, that phone call for you. Me? And here's your pot of hot chocolate, Mother. Thanks, Mary. Here's that. I'll be right back. You know I don't care for hot chocolate. Dear, I want you to take it out to Henry. Alice. Sam, it's energy food. Hello? Will, this is Elizabeth. Who? Elizabeth Brown, your wife. Oh, yes, Elizabeth. Is Homer over there at the Aldrich's? Of course not. He's shoveling snow off our driveway. Well, I did see a dark object out there. But I thought it was a trash can. Elizabeth, it's about time you began to recognize the difference between your own son and a trash can. Yes, dear. And, Will, you know how the poor boy suffers from sinus. Only when there's work to be done. But, dear... Elizabeth, let's not coddle Homer. Will, is that Elizabeth on the phone? Now, hold on a second, Elizabeth. Tell her to tell Henry to come right home and to be quick about it. Is Henry at our house? Well, he's not here and our driveway hasn't been touched. Elizabeth, how many trash cans did you see outside? (laughs) One. And excuse me, Will, I've got a pot of hot chocolate on the sofa. What? Henry isn't at our house, Sam. That's a fine thing. Alice, where's Henry? Were you calling I, Father? Henry Aldrich, where did you come from? The basement. And, Father, did you know our aluminum snow shovel has disappeared? Henry, we gave that to the government in 1942. We did? Gee whiz, what for? We were fighting a war. With our snow shovel? <laughs> Henry. But, Father, the one I'm using weighs a ton. No alibis, Henry. If Homer's clearing away the brown snow, the least you can do is clear ours. Homer is? That's right, Henry. Homer? Did someone call me? Homer. Father. So, you were the trash can after all. Why? Why aren't you at home shoveling snow? Because I'm going to help Henry, then he's coming over to help me. Oh, don't say. Sure. Boy, if there's one thing two people can do faster, it's driveway. Very well, then. Suppose you start. Yeah. Now? Now. Before we find the lighter shovel. Homer, start shoveling. Yes, Father. But gee wish you've never seen the snow that weighed so much. Come on, Will. Let's get back to your income tax. Father? Father, did I mention the weather report I heard on the radio? What about it? They predicted we're practically sure to have sun tomorrow. Yes? Or by Saturday at the latest. Good hot sun. Well? Nothing. I just thought I'd mention it. You know what our trouble is, Sam? Our wives coddle those boys too much. Not this time, Will. This time, Henry's going to finish that job. Right, Sam. Homer, too. Father, Mother just put on her boots and shawl, and your old Mackinac went out to the driveway. What for? That's what I was wondering. She was carrying the coal shovel. What? Alice! Alice, come back in here! <laughs> Listen, Henry, be careful. What I do now? What'd you do? What'd you do? Look at the space I cleared in your driveway. What space? That's just it. You threw a shovel full of snow over here, and there goes 15 minutes of work. Homer, with this shovel, that's as far as I can throw it. I've been thinking, Henry. 
how much snow do we take up with each shovel for? Six inches at the most. So what? So if we take one shovel every ten seconds, do you know how long we'll be? How long? I don't know. But I have a date with Agnes tonight, and by the time we're through, I won't be in shape for anything. Homer, what can we do? Use our brain. You think that's practical? I mean like Tom Sawyer. Who? Remember, he got this kid to think whitewashing was so much fun, he did the fence for him and gave Tom an apple besides. Homer, those things only happen in books. Who'd be dumb enough to fall for a thing like that? Hiya, fellas. Oh, boy. Here's somebody who's dumb enough. Charlie Clark. Start enjoying yourself, Henry. Start enjoying yourself. Homer, it won't work. We can at least try. Boy, Henry, did you ever have so much fun? We. Henry. What? We. Oh. We. We. What's up, fellas? Charlie, don't stop us. Boy, are we having fun. Fun? Homer, have you got sunstroke or something? Gee whiz, no. We. 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 Oh, boy. Homer, what happened? Oh, boy. Homer, why are you bent over? It's nothing, Charlie. Didn't you ever laugh so hard you couldn't straighten up? Henry, does he mean he's really enjoying shoveling snow? Uh, sure. You know what I think? What? You guys sure have sunstroke, all right. So long. Charlie, wait. Imagine thinking a thing like shoveling snow is fun. But it is, Charlie. Look. <clears throat> we. Homer, he's gone. We. <laughs> I told you it only worked in books, Homer. Well, all I can say is that's a good example of our entire school system. What is? Tom Sawyer. They give you a book like that to read, and when you put it to work, what happens? No wonder I flunked French. French? What's that got to do with Tom Sawyer? It's all tied together, Henry. It's all tied together. Come on, we'd better get back to shoveling, or we'll never get done. Okay. Oh, we. Homer, never mind we. Oh, I forgot. <sighs> Boy, did you ever shovel heavier snow? Hiya, fellas. Who's that? Willie Marshall. Keep shoveling. Hiya, fellas. What you doing? <sighs> yes. Okay. Shoveling snow? You win, Willie. Now, would you like to do me a favor? What? Jump in the lake. I can't. It's frozen. Oh, boy. I can crack a joke as well as the next guy. <laughs> Willie, for the last time, beat it and let us finish. So you guys wouldn't consider... Consider what? Gee, no, I guess you wouldn't. Wouldn't what? Well, you guys look like you're having so much fun. I, I was wondering if you'd let me try for a while. What? You mean you want a shovel? Well, I guess you wouldn't consider it, huh? Sure we would. Well, here, Willie, try mine. Well, gee, thanks. Here, hold this package. Whee! Henry, do you suppose he's got sunstroke? <laughs> Whee! Well, well, thanks for letting me try, fellas. Here, here's your shovel. You're quitting? When you've just started to enjoy yourself? Gee, I really don't want to quit. Only, only I have to deliver this package to my Aunt Mildred, see? And I... Willie, you mean you're going to let a little thing like your Aunt Mildred stand between you and the most fun you've ever had in your life? Well, gee, what can I do? Willie, uh, uh, look, Willie, suppose Homer and I deliver the package for you. You would, fellas? You'd really do that for me? Gee, it'd be a pleasure, Willie. Here's your shovel back. Well, gee, thanks. Her name's Mrs. Hopkins on Maple Street. Sure, we know. Come on, Homer. Well, thanks again, fellas. You're welcome, Willie. Boy, Henry, it just shows how you can misjudge people. Here I've been going through life thinking Willie was one of the smartest guys around. I'll say. And you know what I'm going to do when I get home? What? Read Tom Sawyer again. Maybe there's something in there that can help my French. <laughs> You were my nephew, Willie. I've been expecting him all morning. Well, that's the whole thing, Mrs. Hopkins. What is? Uh, Willie got sort of tied up in a little deal and sent us over instead. You're taking his place? Oh, sure. Here's your package, Mrs. Hopkins. Package? Oh, that must be... Oh, well, wait here. I'll be right back. Wait, Mrs. Hopkins? She was. Why does she want us to wait? She probably wants to give us a little something for delivering the package. Oh, boy. You mean we're getting paid to boot? Homer, if she gives us money, naturally, we won't keep it. 
Why not? Because if anyone really deserves it, it's good old Willie. With all the fun he's having. <laughs> here you are, boys. Uh, the brushes are here in the package. And... But, 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 Mrs. Hopkins, what's in this can? Whitewash. Whitewash? Whitewash. But didn't you say you were taking Willie's place? Well, sure, only... Well, that's why he was coming over, to whitewash my basement. Why? Oh, boy. Henry, we've been swindled. Hey, Sam, what are you doing over there by the window? Just checking on the boys, Will. Oh, Homer doesn't look as though he's wheezing, does he? I can only see one of them from here. Which one? It's hard to tell, but he seems to be shoveling right along. You know, Sam, it sure makes you feel good knowing your son has learned to really stick on the job. That's right, Will. Yes, sir, it just goes to show you, Sam, that a mother's a mother, but a father... Well, Sam, every boy really needs a father. After all, who else can teach him how to finish whatever he starts? Uh, Will, speaking of finishing what you start, let's get back to your tax return. Ah, uh, my return. Well, where were we? On Schedule D, page 2. Have you got it? Yeah. Sam, why don't I just tell him how much money I've got left over and let the government take what it needs? Sam, can you answer the front door? Very well, Alice. We'll start totaling your deduction. Oh, but Sam, that's where I really go to pieces. Hi, Mr. Aldrich. Willie, you have already asked me. We don't need our plumbing fix. Our furnace is fine. Well, gee was Mr. Aldrich. I'm not here for that. No? Come in. I've got a path cleared from the sidewalk to your back door, Mr. Aldridge. What? Uh, naturally, that's for free, but if I make it wide enough to get your car out, don't you think I'm entitled to a little something extra? Willie, may I ask why you are doing our driveway? I, I made sort of a deal with Henry and Homer. You don't say. Yes, sir. You, you look upset, Mr. Aldridge. Upset? If you are, naturally, considering the circumstances, I wouldn't think of charging you full price. Well, it won't be necessary for you to clear our driveway. But, Mr. Aldrich, I made a bargain with the boys. The boys were in no position to make such a bargain. You may go home, Willie. Well, gee, if you say so, Mr. Aldrich. I say so. Well, if you say so, goodbye. Goodbye. If you ever need your pipe thought out or anything Yes, like Willie, that. I have your card. <laughs> goodbye. Uh, Sam. Yes, Will. I'm coming. I can figure out what... Sam, you look awful. Did you fall down the front steps? That would have been a pleasure. What? Well, the night Henry was born and I found out he was a boy, I had to pinch myself to make sure it was true. But I never realized I'd go through life pinching myself for the same reason. What's Henry done now? And it isn't only Henry. Well, you might as well sit down and start pinching yourself, too. <laughs> And now, while Mr. Aldrich and Mr. Brown are pinching themselves, let's listen to Meredith Wilson and his talking people. Oh, intermission, intermission. Meredith, we just love intermission. Oh, you do? Well, why, may I ask? Because it's so short. I see. In less than a minute, we'll be back with Henry and Homer. Shall we dance? Of course. The Jell-O family's famous tapioca polka. Jell-O, vanilla tapioca. Jell-O chocolate tapioca. Jell-O orange. Fat beans, orange. Coconut. Jell-O vanilla tapioca. Rich, luscious vanilla. Jell-O chocolate tapioca. Candy good chocolate. And Jell-O orange coconut tapioca. Tangy, refreshing orange combined with tropical coconut. But, um, I don't think you'll like them. Oh, yes, yes we, we will. will. No, no, you won't. Oh, yes, we will. No, oh, no, you won't. Oh! Okay, I guess you will, then. Everybody loves Jell-O tapioca puddings. Put them on tomorrow's shopping list today. And remember, the big red letters stand for the whole Jell-O family of desserts. J-E-L-L. Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. That's Jell-O. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O pudding. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O tapioca pudding. Yes, sir. And now back to the Aldrich family. Yes, getting back to the troubles of Henry Aldridge. Sam Aldridge and Will Brown have been shocked to learn that their sons have passed their snow shoveling on to Willie. 
and Henry and Homer have been tricked into whitewashing his cellar for Willie's aunt. The scene opens in her cellar. It is that afternoon. Henry, quit. Oh, gee whiz, did I get you again with the whitewash, Homer? Sure you did, darn you. Is it my fault the brush splatters? Well, look at my sweater. It's practically polka dotted. Oh, boy, it's even in my hair. Homer, gray hair is very becoming on you. Where do I lay my hands on Willie? Look, Homer, we're practically through. Just a couple more feet of this ceiling and we're free men. Boys, how are you coming along? Coming along, Mrs. Hopkins? Well, you might say we're there. You don't say. Homer, you're as white as a sheet. Are you ill? No, ma'am. Just whitewashed. So if you don't mind, Mrs. Hopkins, now that we've finished the whitewashing... Don't you think you ought to take a little rest first? Rest? First? Yes. Before you start removing these ashes. What? What ashes? Well, that pile right over there. Just shovel them into those barrels. But, but, but... And remember, when you've done with that, come upstairs. I got something for you. Henry, did she say ashes? Yeah. That whole pile? Yeah. Into those six barrels? Uh-huh. I'm going home. Homer, wait. Henry, I'm not going to kill myself at this stage in my life. But don't you realize Mrs. Hopkins might give us something? Henry, money isn't everything. Besides, we made a bargain with Willie. He'll sue us. Let him. I'll sue him right back. Out of my way. Homer, look out for the whitewash. Oh, boy. Homer. She was Look at my shoes. Now, I've got one black one and one white one. <laughs> Homer, why don't you put your other shoe in the bucket? You think I want to look ridiculous? <laughs> oh, boy. Why, yes, Mrs. Hopkins. I forgot to ask. Can either of you change a $20 bill? 20? 20? Yes, I, I need 550. Oh, boy. Gee whiz. No, we can't, Mrs. Hopkins. Oh, well, I'll get it somewhere. Thanks anyway. Henry, did you hear that? She's giving us 550. Did it sound like that to you, too? Oh, boy. Let me at those ashes. Then you're not quitting? Henry, are you crazy? That a boy, Homer. Besides, Henry, it's nice inside work. <laughs> You know, Sam, snow was never this heavy when I was a boy. Careful, Will, you're spilling it down my galoshes. <sighs> Wouldn't it be better for their characters if we got into your car and tracked them down and put them back on the job? No, Will. This way we'll show them how easily the job could have been done. They'd only applied themselves. Yes, but... And naturally, I don't propose to let them all scot-free. We'll charge them for doing their work for them and... Take it out of their allowances. Say, that's a good idea, Sam. How much do we charge? Oh, I'd say about 30 cents an hour would be a sharp lesson to them. 30? I can't work for that kind of money. Let's make it 50 and really teach them a lesson. We'll start shoveling. Oh. <clears throat> Sam, now what? You think Henry's right. Right? What about? The sun coming out tomorrow. <laughs> now, Will. But the sun does such a nice, clean job. Will, you're as bad as the boy. Now, keep shoveling. Uh, oh! Uh, Sam. <laughs> Will, stand back until I figure out how to straighten up. <laughs> Homer, keep working. But, Henry, my back's breaking. Listen, Mrs. Hopkins is going to pay us five fifty, right? Yeah. Just as soon as we get these barrels of ashes out to the curb, right? Yeah. Well, how else can we get them out there? Well, Henry, do you realize Mrs. Hopkins' driveway is twice as long as yours? Sure, I realize it. Now, start shoveling this snow or we'll never get done. <laughs> Are we moving, Will? No use, Sam. Your car wheels just keep spinning. At the high peg. Here we are, stuck in a ditch miles from nowhere. Will, you shouldn't have told me to take that shortcut. Now, Sam, don't go blaming everything on me. And besides, things aren't hopeless. Once we get moving and get our hands on that flamethrower, those driveways will be a cinch. Hey, Will. Look. It's a snowplow, Sam. Hey! Hello there! Stop! Stop! 
Hey, Miss Hillary. Scott. Well, it's Scott. A junk man? Hey, Gus, what are you doing on that plow? Driving it. In the junk business? Not anymore. Sheila decided to retire. Sheila? Yeah, my horse. She's been pulling that junk wagon, man and boy, for 15 years. Then, one day last month, she told me she was going to up and retire. She told you? Yeah. Me and Sheila was pretty close, you know. After 15 years in the junk business, she just couldn't take it anymore. The bells was giving her a headache. Uh, look, Gus. Had a mite trouble here? Uh, yes, and could you haul us out of this ditch? Haul you out? Well, I might be able to. Fine. Only thing is, I'm just the driver of this plow, not the proprietor. Uh, Gus, we'd be very glad to pay you. You would? Yes. How much? Well, now, first, I'd like to point out that this ain't no ordinary plow that you're hiring. Yes, I know. It's the widest one in the state. Well, that's fine, only... There's two lanes in one fell swoop, as you might say. Gus, uh, how does five dollars sound? Five dollars, Sam? Why, it has a nice ring... How does ten dollars sound to you? Ten dollars? Now, just a minute, Gus. Sam, is that you? No, Mother, it's I, Henry. Well, please march straight in here. I want a word with you. Yes, Mother, and boy, am I worn out. Henry, I haven't the least bit of sympathy for you. Mary? Yes, Mother? Will you bring Henry a nice warm glass of milk? Is he back? Mother, don't start on him until I get there. Mother, Mother, why didn't Willie do our driveway? Because, dear, your father sent him away. What? And, Henry, why you couldn't do a simple, ordinary job that your father can do in ten minutes is beyond me. Father's going to clean the driveway? Yes, dear, just as soon as he gets back from wherever he disappeared to. Oh, boy. And when he finds out that you were clearing Mrs. Hopkins' driveway, he's going to be simply furious. You heard about that? Yes, dear, your Aunt Harriet saw you. Mother, let me explain why I did it. Dear, I know why. And someday you'll learn that money isn't everything. But that's just it. We didn't get any money. What? Mrs. Hopkins wanted the five fifty for the laundry man. Henry, I don't understand a word of this. Gee whiz, all we got out of it were two Cokes and a glass of ginger ale. Black. Here's your milk, Henry. Gee, I don't know whether I've even got enough strength to swallow. Mother, did you hear a crash outside a few minutes ago? A crash? No, dear. Well, I'm positive I heard something. <laughs> Oh, dear, that must be your father. Sam? Yes, Alice? Henry, now are you going to get it? Mary, your father sounds as though he could use a glass of hot milk, too. But, Mother, just when he's going to... Mary, please get it. My goodness, I might as well be an outsider in this family. I see you're home, Henry. Yes, Father. And, Father, as soon as my mittens thaw out, I'm going to get started on the driveway. Don't bother. Sam, before you fly off the handle, why don't you... Sam, are you taking off your jacket? Father, if it'll make you any happier, I won't even wait for my mittens to thaw. I'll start right now. Henry, the driveway is cleared. It is? Sam, are you rolling up your sleeve? I am. Father, if you're worried that I haven't learned my lesson, gee was I give you my word. Father, you're rolling up both your sleeves. I am. And now, Sam? Alice, uh, would you please go up to our bathroom and get something for me? You mean your razor strap? <laughs> I mean the liniment. Sam. No, I never remembered snow being that heavy. Oh, gee, Father, then you're not... Henry, suppose you run upstairs and get the liniment. Yes, Father, and I give you my word, from now on, I'm going to pitch into everything. Yes, well, now, let's not overdo it. Sam, I thought you controlled yourself beautifully. Alice, I couldn't very well blame Henry when... when... Yes, Sam? Alice, suppose we just forget it. Yes, dear. Did you do the whole driveway yourself? I, uh... Had it done, Alice, by Gus. Gus? At a slight additional cost. But how did he do it so quickly? He had the widest snowplow in the state. What? Never mind, Alice. But, uh, you know that fence between our driveway and Kilmer's? Yes. What would you think if we removed it and widened our driveway three feet? <laughs> Boy, 
Why, Willie, boy, are you a swindler tricking us into doing all that work at your Aunt Mildred's? I'll say, Willie, boy. Who's a swindler? Who's a swindler? I got that idea right out of a school book, so that makes it perfectly legal. What? Why? Sure, that one about a guy whitewashing a fence. Only, of course, I had to spruce up the idea some. Well, ladies, when it comes to Jell-O, whether you spruce it up with extra fixings or serve it just as is, that rich fruit-like Jell-O is always tops and treats. Yes, those luscious, shimmering Jell-O desserts are lovely to look at and grand to eat in all six flavors. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. Every Jell-O flavor has that famous locked-in goodness. Flavor sealed right in by a special process so it can't get out till your first delectable spoonful. No wonder Jell-O tastes so good it makes you think of the real ripe fruit. No wonder Jell-O is America's favorite gelatin dessert. Look for those big red letters on the box. Those big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. For 39 years now, the Boy Scouts of America has carried on a program of character building and citizenship training. So this coming week, we salute 2,200,000 Boy Scouts as they go forward with their crusade to strengthen the arm of liberty. The more scouts we have today, the better citizens we'll have tomorrow. The Aldrich Family, starring Ezra Stone as Henry with Jackie Kelk as Homer, is written by Norman Tokar and Ed Jurist, with music by Jack Miller. Mr. and Mrs. Aldrich are House Jameson and Catherine Roth. And this is Dan Seymour in New York saying, The Aldrich Family is brought to you by the Jell-O Family. Everyone's a Jell-O good fellow, a very good Jell-O good fellow, so rich, so tempting and mellow, J-E-L-L-O. of these things. And now the Jell-O family presents... Henry! Henry Aldrich! Coming, Mother! Yes, it's the Aldrich family, based on characters originated by Clifford Goldsmith and starring Ezra Stone as Henry with Jackie Kelk as Homer. And yes, it's the Jell-O family. Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. That's Jell-O. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O puddings. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O tap. And now for the Aldrich family. When you take a typical American family, plus some friends and neighbors, and then add one teenage boy, you needn't bother to stir things up. The boy, if he's like Henry Aldrich, will somehow attend to that. The scene opens in the Aldrich living room. The time is late afternoon. No, Homer, I think you don't have to. You do? I don't? Definitely not. Boy, Hen, I hope you're right. I've been saving for two months to get a new band for my wristwatch. And now if I had to... Suppose she expects me to. She couldn't. How do you know? I'll bet Agnes doesn't even know it's the anniversary of your first date with her. Do you really think so, Hen? Sure. Who remembers things like that? My father never does. I'm surprised you even thought of it. Boy, I'll never forget it. Well, okay, Homer. You have a special reason for remembering your anniversary, but Agnes doesn't, does she? Gee, maybe you're right, Hen. And boy, is that a load off my mind. Sure. Sure. Now I can concentrate on my wristwatch. Sure. 
Do you think I ought to get a brown leather band hen or a black one? I thought I heard voices in here. Hi, Mother. Hi, Mrs. Aldrich. Hello, boys, and congratulations, Homer. Thank you, Mrs. Aldrich. What for? Isn't Saturday an anniversary of some kind? Oh. Your very first date with Agnes, isn't it? Hen. She was, Mother. How did you know? I was out shopping this morning, and I ran into Agnes. Oh. So my heartiest congratulations to the both of you, Homer, and many happy returns. Thank you, Mrs. Aldrich. <laughs> Thank you, Mother. You're welcome, boys. If you want some fruit, it's in the icebox. <clears throat> Who could eat fruit now? See, Henry? So what? So my mother knows. What does that prove? It proves Agnes knows. All right, supposing Agnes does know. What does that prove? It proves there goes my watch band. Not necessarily. Alice, do you know where... Hello, boys. Hi, Father. Hi, Father. I mean, Mr. Aldrich. Oh, by the way, Homer, I ran into a friend of yours down at the Emporium today. You did, Mr. Aldrich? Whom? Agnes. Oh. May I ask in what department... I believe it was in Ladies Unmentionables. <laughs> Is your mother in the kitchen, Henry? I think so, Father. See you later, boy. Well, that does it. Homer, why do you keep jumping at conclusions? I'm not jumping at them, Hen. They're jumping at me. I still don't see it. Then what was Agnes doing in Ladies Unmentionables? I don't know. Maybe she was just looking around. Sure, and I know why. Why? To see what she could exchange what I'm going to give her for. Hello? Hello, Henry. Is Homer there? Yeah, he is, Agnes. Agnes? Oh. Let me talk to him. Okay. Here, Homer. Hello, Agnes. Hello, Homer, honey. Oh, boy. Agnes, is there any special reason you asked me to come over to your house? No, Homer. I was just lonely. Oh, isn't it wonderful, Homer? Another wonderful, thrilling year. Sure. And, Homer, I just want you to know that I don't expect a thing as an anniversary present. You don't? Of course not. I have you. What more could I ask for? Nothing, Agnes. Another year, and we're still together. That's all any girl needs to make her happy, her man. Sure. Don't you think a brown band would go better with my wristwatch than a black? And anyway, I don't think it's fair for a girl to expect a boy to spend all his money on her. Sure. That's what I like about you, Agnes. You're so fair. Sure. Four or five dollars ought to be plenty. Oh. Homer. What? Give me a hint. Oh, I can. Why? Because. Because what? Just because. Homer Brown, haven't you decided yet what you're going to get me? Well... Sort of. Sort of? What does that mean? Henry's supposed to be thinking of something. Oh. Homer? What? Get Henry on the phone and find out what you're going to give me. But, Agnes... Here, start talking. Yes, ma'am. Hello, operator. Give me Elm 431. Now, remember, Homer, I don't want you to spend a cent over four or five dollars. Yes, Agnes. Unless you promise you'll get me something cheaper for my birthday. Oh. Hello, Hen. This is Homer. Did you think of anything yet? Uh-huh. What? But, Hen. We, well, yeah, I know, but... Uh-huh. I suppose so, Hen. Yeah. Bye, Hen. Well? We... Oh, we want it to be a surprise, Agnes. A surprise? Homer, that's wonderful. I just love surprises. What is it? Well, you'll see. Is it something I can wear? Maybe. I'll bet it's something I can eat. Is it, Homer? Maybe. No, it's something I can wear. I'm sure of it. Is it? Maybe. Homer, give me your hand. I can't. Why? Henry said you'd try to force it out of me so he wouldn't even tell me. Henry, couldn't you think of something that would still leave Homer enough for the watch band? I tried to, Mother, but a watch band would only leave Agnes 45 cents. You can't get much for that. No, I imagine not. Besides, I think the dozen roses will be very appropriate. Poor Homer. Yeah, he sure wanted that watch band. <laughs> well, maybe this will teach him to change girls at least once a year. Boy, if I only had a little more money, I'd buy him that watch band myself. I'll tell you what I'll do, Henry. Since it's Homer's anniversary, I'll match whatever you put up. How much do you have in your dime bank? A dime. <laughs> 
up? Well, that gives us 20 cents. I'll match what both of you put up. There, 40 cents. How much more do we need? About 60. 60, eh? The milk bottles. Henry, there are five empty ones on the back porch. That's another quarter. Only 35 cents more. Maybe if we looked under the sofa pillow. Sure. Henry, my pillow. A dime. I found a dime. Look in the corner there, Henry. There's something shiny. Another dime. Father, did you lose a suspender button? There's a nickel, Henry, and two pennies. Here's another nickel. That's ten, seventeen, twenty-two. Thirteen cents short. Wait, I know what. What? I'll only buy Agnes eleven roses. Fine, we've made it. I'll go right down to the jewelers now and get Homer his watch band. Good. You think I ought to have something engraved on it? Something like, success? Henry, this is the anniversary of Homer's winning Agnes, not the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> try to force it out of Homer, so he's going to pick out the gift. Oh, no wonder. No wonder what? So that's what Henry was doing down there. There? Where? Where's there? I saw Henry in a jewelry store. A jewelry store? Oh, boy! What was he buying? Maybe I shouldn't have brought it up. Listen, Kathleen, what did Homer ever do for you? I'm not saying another word. All right. How about if I make some guesses and you just shake your head yes or no? Hello? Thank you, Homer. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. You're welcome. Who is this? Homer, it's your best girl. Really? Gee, it doesn't sound at all like you, Mother. It's me, Agnes. Oh. Oh. Hello, Agnes. Boy, Homer, the minute I heard, I had to call you and thank you. Heard what, Agnes? What you're getting me for our anniversary present. You know? Uh-huh. Gee whiz, everybody knows what I'm getting you but me. <laughs> what am I getting you? I don't think I ought to tell you. It'll spoil a surprise. <laughs> Listen, Agnes, when I give you a present, you're supposed to be surprised, not me. Oh. Well, I'll tell you what, Homer. You come on over. I want to see your face when I tell you. Henry, Henry. Upstairs, Homer, in my room. I've got to talk to you, Henry, right now. What's the matter? What's the matter? What's the matter? You have the nerve to ask me that? What happened? What happened? What happened? Homer, we'll never get anywhere if you just keep repeating what I say. What you say? Do you deny you were down at the jewelers this afternoon? Huh? Well, don't. Kathleen saw you. Oh, is that all? Aha. Uh-huh. So you admit it. You've ruined me, Henry. I have. How? Did you ever buy a ring for Kathleen on your anniversary? All right. Homer, don't be silly. Then why did you buy one for me for Agnes on our anniversary? A ring? I bought a ring. Kathleen saw you. Kathleen saw me buy a ring? Well, not exactly buy it, but she saw you looking at them. Rings? I didn't buy... Oh, sure, I remember now. Uh Uh-huh. Sure, while I was waiting my turn, I just looked around. Maybe I did glance at some rings. Glance? Then you didn't buy... But Kathleen told Agnes she saw... See, Homer, you got all excited over nothing. No, I didn't, Hen. But, Homer, I didn't buy a ring. Yes, but Agnes thinks she... I... Henry. Yeah? I'm engaged. Agnes, how did Homer ask you? Well, he didn't exactly ask me, Kathleen. Yes, but how did you know? Well, I figured Henry wouldn't be buying a ring unless Homer had said something to him about wanting to be engaged, see? Yes. So I sort of helped him along. Men are always a little afraid to say the actual word. But what did he say then? Nothing. But I could tell from the look on his face that that's what was on his mind. But how did you know? Well, he didn't object when I suggested it, did he? No. So there you are. My goodness. Do you think I ought to send Henry a thank you card? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> what does being engaged feel like? Oh, sort of relaxing. Relaxing? Uh-huh. You know, you don't have to worry about are you going to have a date Saturday night and things like that. All of a sudden, all your problems are ended because you've got your man to lean on. Oh, it sounds just wonderful. It is, Kathleen. It's wonderful. Just wonderful. 
It's terrible, Henry. Just terrible. <laughs> Why not look at it this way, Homer? Engagements have their advantages, too. Yeah, name one. Well, they... Well, you... There must be some advantages. <laughs> Otherwise, why would so many people do it? Name one. Just one. Well, for instance, when you're engaged, you don't have to spend so much money on the girl. Oh, yeah? What about the engagement ring? That alone will keep me broke for the next two years. <laughs> sure, Homer, but... The funny part is, I never even thought of Agnes as something you'd get engaged to. <laughs> and what am I going to do? You can always leave town. Sure, sure, that's what I'll do. Leave town right now. Right now? Where'll you go? I don't know. What's the difference? So long, Henry. Homer. Don't try to stop me. It's the only way. Homer, please. Tell my folks I said you could have my new bike. All you have to do is tighten my new bike. I hardly even rode it. Homer, if I didn't want to be engaged to a girl that badly, I'd just call her up and tell her so. Sure. Why didn't I think of that? I'll tell her straight out. Operator, give me Elm 891, please. Uh, uh, what should I say to her, Hen? Just say, uh, look, Agnes, there's nothing personal in this, but I think we're both too young to know our own minds. Sure, that's good. And furthermore, Agnes, the whole thing... Hen. Just be firm, Hen. I will, Hen. Hello? Agnes, this is Homer. Agnes, I... What? Oh. Miss Lawson? Oh. Madam? Agnes, I don't know what you mean. Agnes Henry's here. But Agnes... What's the matter? She thinks I ought to call her dear. Oh. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Uh-huh, dear. Yes, dear. Homer? Yes, dear. I mean... <laughs> Why didn't you tell her? Because she... she... Henry. Why? What's a fella supposed to get his fiancée for her shower? What? A shower. Agnes said Kathleen insisted on giving her one. Gee, I don't know, Homer. I think you're supposed to give her tablecloths and old pillowcases and things like that. Yeah, I suppose so. Homer, why didn't you tell her about being too young to know your own mind? Well, she sounded so positive about the whole thing. Boy, I got the feeling maybe it was illegal or something to call it off. Gee whiz, maybe it is. You know what, Homer? Maybe you just ought to stick it out. Forever, if necessary. She's bound to get tired of you sooner or later. Isn't an engagement sort of like a contract? I guess so. What can they do to you if you don't go through with your end of it? I don't know. Did you write her any letters she could use against you? Letters? I don't think... Oh, boy. You mean you did? No, she did. Oh. Right after the first time she kissed me. It was sort of a thank you letter. <laughs> well, you better get home and burn it. I did, as soon as I got it. But what if she kept a carbon copy? Oh, boy. I mean, I don't think my father's going to let... My father? Boy, wait till he finds out. Henry, why did you have to glance at rings in the first place? I didn't know Kathleen was going to be snooping around. Kathleen, that's the trouble with girls. They talk too much. Next thing you know, it'll be all over school. Henry. Why? Mr. Bradley will throw me out of school. See, I told you there were advantages to being engaged. <laughs> Big red letters stand for the Jello family. Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jello family. That's Jello, yum yum yum. Jello puddings, yum yum yum. Jello tap, fiocca pudding, yes sirree. And tonight, the Jello family of yum yum desserts wants to give a special salute to National Restaurant Week, May second to May eighth. You know, our neighborhood restaurants are an American institution. Famous all over the world for their traditionally high standards of fine food, fine services, fine friendly atmosphere. So take the family often to your favorite restaurant. It means a treat for everybody. And another treat you can be sure of finding at any good restaurant is America's favorite gelatin dessert. Yes, Jell-O. Jell-O in those six delicious flavors. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. So next time you're at your favorite restaurant, have your favorite treat for dessert. Ask for Jell-O. J-E-L-L-O. And now getting back to the troubles of Henry Aldridge. 
Henry's visit to a jewelry store has been misinterpreted by both Homer and Agnes. She thinks she's getting, and he thinks he's giving her an engagement ring. The scene opens in the Aldrich living room. It is the next day. <laughs> uh, hello. What is it, dear? <laughs> Listen to this letter that came in the mail today. Dear Mr. Aldrich, I am a young high school student who suddenly finds himself engaged to another young high school student, female, of course. My goodness. As a lawyer, I would appreciate your advice on whether I can escape. Escape? Yeah, but that's crossed out and changed to whether I can disentangle myself, and if so, how. Sam, who's it from? Yours truly, desperate. Oh. <laughs> well, what about the handwriting? It's printed. Then there's a P.S. Kindly attach your answer to the lowest branch of the big maple tree in the empty lot on Olive and Fifth Street. <laughs> then there's a P.P.S. Kindly enclose a bill for your fee. Well, who do you uh, think? Just a minute, Alice. There is also a P.P.P.S. <laughs> When naming fee, kindly bear in mind that the writer is a poor, underline, young high school student. Alice, you don't suppose... Oh, uh, I've been giving it a lot of thought, Agnes, dear. So have I, dear. You have, dear? Yes, dear. Well... What do you think, dear? I agree with you completely, dear. You do, dear? Of course, dear. Sure. Everybody agrees that long engagements aren't good. That's absolutely true, dear. They're terrible. And so I think we ought to reconsider the whole thing. Don't you, dear? Well... Did you tell her? Yes, Henry. What did she say? She agreed with me. She didn't think long engagements were good either. No kidding. See, Homer, I told you talking to her person to person would get your results. It certainly did. Henry, are you busy June 1st? No, why? I thought you might like to be my best man. <laughs> Letter, Will. Yeah. Oh, Homer, stop staring into your soup and stop, start eating it. Yeah, that's what Sam told me, Elizabeth. Imagine a high school kid doing a thing like that. And Sam didn't know who it was. Oh. Homer, stop that. All he said was the note was signed desperate. A high school boy. You know, Will, if it didn't sound too ridiculous even for him, I'd guess it was Sam's own son, Henry. Oh. Homer, stop fishing around in your soup with your fingers. Take another spoon. Well, whoever he is, he's an idiot. What about his parents? They're idiots, too. <laughs> do you suppose he's figuring on moving her in with his folks? What else can he do? You know what I'd do if I were that kid's father? I'd take him and his idiot bride and ship them right over to her idiot parents' house. Homer, if you're having that much trouble holding onto your spoon, tie it to your wrist or something. Here's another spoon, dear. Fish out the other two. It'd serve him right to have to live with the girl's parents. Let him use their pots and pans and utilities. Let him eat their food. Oh, boy. Homer. Homer, come back here and clean up this mess. Homer. I wonder what's got into that boy. Pots and pans, Henry. Utilities. Take it easy. I'm Homer. too young, Hen. I'm just a kid. Homer, you're, you're getting hysterical again. Take another drink of water. <laughs> Thanks. Henry, what am I going to do? I don't want to live with the Lawsons. Easy, Homer. Easy, boy. There was a letter from my father on the tree today. There was? What did he say? He said if Desperate wanted advice to drop in in person. We can't do that, Henry. Then he'd know. Look, I've got it all figured out. We can tell him we're friends of Desperate, and he asked us to represent him. Sure, sure. That's what we can do. Come on, Henry. Hello, Father. Hello, boy. Hi, Mr. Aldrich. Father, do you recall a communication you had from a party who prefers to remain nameless? Oh, yes. Desperate, wasn't it? That's right, Mr. Aldrich. Well, he's sort of asked us to represent him. Oh? Sort of the party of the third party, you might say. I see. You mean you have his power of attorney? Well, no, Father. We, well, he, he, he didn't know it was necessary. Mr. Aldrich, couldn't we discuss it purely hypotheoretically? <laughs> Why, yes, I suppose so. Uh, now, what exactly is Desperate's problem? 
Well, he sort of found himself engaged. Against his will, Mr. Aldrich, against his will. I see. So what can he do to get disentangled? Before he gets all mixed up with pots and pans and utilities. <laughs> I see. Mm, now, let's see. This same point came up in the case of Schneiderkoff versus Schneiderkoff. Who won, Father? Schneiderkoff. <laughs> oh, is that good or bad for the third party? Uh, well, in a divided opinion, the Supreme Court decided that in the event of a reversal of sentiment on the part of one of the contractees to an engagement, the dissenting party was obligated to so inform the said partner to said contract. Really, Father? <laughs> the exact wording of the decision. That's very interesting, Mr. Aldrich. Did he get any time off for good behavior? <laughs> I'm afraid you don't understand, Homer. He was no longer engaged. What? But how did he get out of it? He called the girl and told her it was off. That's all? That's all. And Agnes couldn't do anything to him? I'll say. Oh, boy. Thank you, Mr. Aldrich. Thank you. Homer, stop kissing my hand. <laughs> You should have been here, Alice. It was a riot. <laughs> I can imagine. What did Homer say after you? Well, in the first me? place, he looked 30 years younger. <laughs> then he and Henry began to discuss how to break it to Agnes. It seems Homer didn't relish the idea of breaking it to her face to face. So we so thought Henry should do it. Inasmuch as Henry was responsible for his predicament, having been seen in the fatal jewelry store at the fatal time. Poor Henry. <laughs> oh, he's not doing it. Henry was as reluctant to face Agnes as Homer was. Then how? It was finally decided that Henry would break the news to Kathleen, who in turn would break it to Agnes. My goodness. When is all this going to happen? Well, Henry left for Kathleen's about an hour ago. Homer kept saying, hurry, Henry, before my father finds out. Hurry, Henry, my father will kill me. Uh, is that you, Henry? Yes, Mother. Yeah, did you see Kathleen? Sure, I just came from there. Well, how did everything go? Well, I said, Kathleen, I said, don't you think Homer and Agnes are a little too young to be engaged? After all, I said... She may find someone she likes more than Homer. That's not bad. What did she say to that? Well, she said, what if she doesn't? My goodness. And then I said, still, Kathleen, a, a young girl can have much more fun going out with lots of boys. Then what happened? Well, then we talked a little more about boys and girls and the advantages and disadvantages of being engaged and things like that, see? I see. And how did it come out? I think I'm a little bit engaged myself. <laughs> Congratulations. And I've got a business proposition for you if you're still engaged. Who said I was, Willie? Who said I was? Gee, is it a secret? Okay, I won't say a word. Now listen, Willie. Not a word. Only if you're going to wear striped pants and a top hat at your wedding, I can rent you my father's at a discount. Well, that should be a sight to see. But for a mighty pretty sight any day in the week, it's, yes, you guessed it, Jell-O. Gay, shimmering Jell-O in those six delicious flavors. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. For a special treat tomorrow, try raspberry ginger dessert, made with rich red raspberry jello. Just dissolve a package of raspberry jello in one cup of hot water, then add a cup of ginger ale. Turn into individual molds and chill until firm. It's swell. Tempting fruit like raspberry jello with tangy ginger ale. All six delicious jello flavors are rich with locked in goodness. Flavor sealed right in so it can't get out till your first delectable spoonful. And that's why Jell-O is America's favorite gelatin dessert. And now here's Mrs. Norman Vincent Peale, wife of the renowned minister, with some important news. Good evening, Henry Aldrich, or I should say Ezra Stone. I'm happy to be here tonight in behalf of National Family Week to present to the Aldrich family our annual radio citation for high quality in content and excellence of production. This is the third consecutive year that the Aldrich family has won this award, and you are all to be congratulated. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Peel. Thank you very much for this very high honor and for your kind appearance here tonight. <laughs> Family starring Ezra Stone as Henry with Jackie Kelk as Homer is written by Frank Tarloff with music by Jack Miller. 
Mr. and Mrs. Aldrich are House Jameson and Catherine Roth. And this is Dan Seymour in New York saying, The Aldrich Family is brought to you by the Jell-O Family. Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O Family. Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O Family. That's Jell-O. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O puddings. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O tapioca puddings. Yes, sir. New, as new as an orchid in the Arctic. Amazing, the only one of its kind. That's Minute Rice. Minute Rice for magically quick, quick meals. You've never tasted such delicious rice. Rice that comes out light, white, and fluffy every time. And without washing, rinsing, draining, steaming. Just drop Minute Rice in water and bring to a boil. It's quicker to fix than potatoes. Wonderful with stews, cream chicken, or seafood. And so quick, quick. Remember the name Minute. Minute Rice in the red, white, and blue box. <laughs> 